Well, we're live, and I'm always uh, always uh, on time for me, uh -huh. which is late for everybody. Sorry, that's a uh, that's a my bad. Mea culpa, mea culpa. So, uh, I think, hey, Ian, how you doing? I'm tired. I've still not been sleeping right, so I might be um, extra spicy. Oh, good, because we're not <laughs> talking about anything that might cause you to be spicy. Not at all. No, no. Everything is just chill. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, for those of you who are here, who are near, welcome welcome to Friday Night Frenzy. Friday Night Frenzy is a show that I run every Friday night kind of going on. What happened in the law for that given week? Some fun stories, some fun cases we cover. And, you know, this one's a little bit unique because the channel hit a milestone not too long ago. A 200,000 subscriber milestone. Which, one, for someone who started a YouTube channel April of 20, You know you're going to pass me, right? No. No way. You, you definitely but, will. That is a prediction. For someone who started a YouTube channel in April of 2019, or not 2019, 2020, what was it? 2022? 21? 21. 21. What year is it now? It's 24. Uh, 22. Oh my and gosh, you my had brain. that breakout video breaking a bed. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. I still get still get junk for that. But for someone who started a stream April of 2022, just two years ago, uh, it has been a wild ride. I never thought I would ever be on YouTube. I have come to find a community of people and individuals that like reading and learning about the law more than I would have ever imagined possible, which is great because I love talking about the law more than a lot of people uh, kind of deem appropriate or necessary. So who I'm very happy to be that? here. What? Who does what? Who decides what like is appropriate or necessary for talking about the law? All discussion know. is appropriate and necessary. All of it. Not if you look at any of the, of the uh, big box media. Oh well, we, we, they we can can't talk about these things. They can Contrary go to opinions. the land of, you know, I'm not going to finish that because we're not two hours in. We're not two hours in. <laughs> um. So as Ian kind of pointed out to the chat, I am finishing up some last minute redactions because what I thought was fully redacted ended up being auto redacted, and the auto and uh. Well, it missed a lot of names, and I don't really want the names out there because, as I kind of previewed, in celebration of this milestone, the channel anniversary of two years, the fact that I hit 200,000 subscribers, thanks to all of you, and the fact that I am on the eve of my 40th birthday, I am feeling, one, old, but... Happy birthday? Well, it's old not quite man. here yet. I'm not old yet. I mean, you're coming from an elf? Come on, man. <laughs> Like, like at 40 compared to a couple thousand is a little bit different. That was teasing and good fun. <laughs> is the chat getting upset about that? Oh, my God. No, I don't think chat would be upset about that <laughs> at all. I mean, do we want to talk about Google Maps? Chat, then the chat can have something to go about. Oh, but um, honestly, this has most been Most of the chat quite say the, you're still a baby. <laughs> I don't mind that. I actually think that like 40 years young and learning and practicing law for more than a decade is, you know, it. you can always learn about the law and continue to learn. And honestly, I hope to never reach a place where I know all of it. And I don't think I ever will. And I'm glad I never will because there's just too much here to learn and talk about. And yeah. The good so. news is that if you do ever learn all of it, you can start again and start learning it wrong. Oh, well, uh, you know, a lot of people learn it wrong in the first place. So, you know, there were some hot takes on, uh, should, should we pull that up first? Some of the hot takes on Twitter this week. Oh, God. I was uh, making a little bit of shade towards um, the, uh, the non-party Mr. Ratliff in uh, the Daybell trial. Who oh. appears to have learned it wrong. Well, he did learn it wrong. But what I was talking about was a, a lovely back and forth exchange that someone pointed me to. I think it was Alita that pointed it to me in the first Oh, place. that one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That yeah. one. That one. 
where let's see let me see where was it it's like you know uh we know uh we know Koberger is guilty because he's gonna plead the fifth and the no fifth. it wasn't Koberger. it was about it was oh, about it's... Karen Reed oh it right was still, yeah it it was honestly I mean, one it's... of the worst takes I've ever seen on the fifth amendment from so, somebody who claims to be like an a law professor here's so here's the original tweet I'm just gonna say if I'm ever running a law school I'm gonna like if I see something dumb, like it'll be in the contract of if you say something incredibly dumb on Twitter, um, we can we can oust you. <laughs> oh, and, even and if you ostensibly have tenure. Because we're early on, what happened to the jury box? It's being the, moved. <laughs> the jury is packed. They they are packed into a little box because this studio is only going to be the studio temporarily until I get a new studio established in a new home in July. So Rob I had to pack up a bunch of the jury members and the jury box. isn't packed. It's sequestered. It's sequestered. That's a perfect <laughs> way of saying it. The jury has been sequestered. The jury has been sequestered because today's topic is, is, is a bench trial bench trial. We appear when they've got a verdict. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the jury the jury has been sequestered until such time as I can uh, give them a new jury box. Um, it, it yeah yeah. Uh, Kristen's asking, is it a little box? Or they have room to move. they have room to move. They have room to move. So we'll, it's it's pretty good. The jury's on vacation. So getting back to what I was talking about before. In hot takes in the law this week. So Boston News reports the judge presiding over the Karen Reed murder trial said Tuesday that she'll allow an argument from the defense that someone else killed John O'Keefe on a snowy night wasn't me. in Canton in January of 2022. Shouldn't have been it you. It wasn't me. Uh, then you have this individual basically says, Wendy Murphy Law says, not exactly. She said the defense could try to develop evidence by asking questions of witnesses, but they cannot say anything about a third party culprit in the opening statement. That's correct. And that's the proper ruling is you have to actually lay a foundation to allow you to introduce the sod it or some other dude did it defense because uh, they have not yet produced any evidence of a third party culprit. Now, most important witness, Karen Reed, will all caps never take the stand. The only living eyewitness is Karen Reed, and she's the only one who will refuse to testify by asserting her Fifth Amendment rights, which means she agrees her testimony would incriminate her and help prove her guilt. Duh. So I mean, any testimony can do that. So that that doesn't tell us anything. Well, well that, that, kind of, that, kind of, that kind of that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. It, it kind of bothered me to read something like that, especially well, for someone because it's dumb. It should bother. It should rub you the wrong way because it's dumb. Well, yeah. So I, I went on and I said, "This is perhaps the worst take on the Fifth Amendment I've ever seen." The Fifth Amendment supported the founders' stance that the government. Only the government must prove its own case and cannot compel a defendant to testify in support of the state's prosecution. You can't shift the burden. You cannot put them up and say, I can't prove this thing, therefore you have to prove it. That was a big yeah. problem that we had with the British system and why we actually developed that. So now speaking in common language and lay, per lay people, lay people just being the ordinary average public, does the common person currently view the defendant's exercise of that right in a manner that by exercise alone incriminates them? Yeah, they do. Is that how it's supposed to be? Nope, not at all. The state brings charges seeking to deprive an individual of life and liberty, and thus they bear the burden of proving every single element of their case beyond any reasonable doubt. And a little caveat here, they have to do that without assistance from the defendant. For a lawyer, much less a professor of law, to hop on a bandwagon that fundamentally misses the true purpose of the Fifth Amendment is candidly appalling. Respectfully seek to understand the law before you teach it, and very least, don't use your credentials to support a bastardized version of understanding of what the amendment stands for. The state prosecutes and thus carries the burden of proof for the totality of their prosecution. So that person didn't like the res didn't like my take on it. I don't really care. I was pretty appalled that that was even out there in the first place. Oh. Yeah, that that one bothered me. That that uh, uh, that bothered me a lot. A whole lot. So, 
that was my uh, little bit of adventure into the world of I shouldn't be here this week. How about you? <laughs> ah, well, I um, I have been dealing with some BS that I can't entirely talk about at this stage, but it is what it is. Um, that is going to be its own thing later. Um, that said, I... Um, what is it? I also ha was covering... I haven't been watching the Daybell trial, but I was cover. I people said you have to watch this thing that happened in the Daybell trial, and I was like, "Ah, okay, I'm going to watch it, but I'm not going to understand it because I haven't been watching Daybell, so it's going to be you don't have to have watched Daybell to see it." And you don't need it, to know any of the facts. None, none of the facts are necessary um, at all, and um, we can. Uh, you can see a little bit of just how dumb it is. Um, we can run the video at some point. I'll let you decide when that should go. But this is the um, this is the court's order um, on order on Narn Party motion to intervene. And the reason why I bring this up is because of the wonderful um, bits that you'll see here. So on March 29th, a non party presented for filing its motion with an E and you see the court doing the sick for like, we are quoting this exactly as it is, which is mm -hmm. often used to throw shade to intervene and to continue without no, an con end. continue, continue the continue. trial in these precedents because I think there's that, that, just one E that first word is, I think it's pronounced motion. <laughs> motion to, to intervene and to continue trial in these proceed pro, pro settings settings pro settings um so both the state and the defense said what the heck and they have requested that the document be sealed or struck um it was, it was filed on easter eve it was on easter eve and the court had some opinions about that yeah they did um they very so much did it's put under temporary seal finding that protecting the fundamental right to a fair trial predominates over public disclosure at this time and that sufficient privacy interests are invoked by this filing huh that makes me wonder if there is um um that makes me wonder if there's some specific um details there because the, the lawyer who tried to file this does indicate that he'd been in contact with the um, with the defense lawyer. So, like, was he breaching privilege with this filing? Hmm. I don't know. It's that gonna neither, be. And that's neither Potter nor Zora in the background. That is uh, that's the other one. That's Leo. Oh, we can hear Leo. Yeah. Um. But I'm wondering, like, I was wondering if it was sovereign citizen stuff or what. But yeah. There we go. I turned the gain down. So hopefully we can't hear Leo. Can you hear him? We can still hear him. My client has a mighty bark. He is asserting yeah. his First Amendment rights. Can you still hear him? Yes, but he's not super loud. Okay. He's not super loud. Leo is speaking. He is he has opinions on all of this stuff. So I'll pull the mic closer to me. Uh he he was causing some chaos this afternoon, so he's we're, we're, he he's, he's going to bed. He's going he's going <laughs> to bed. Um so how did the channel start? How did the channel start? Channel started well, and and someone had pointed out that the first video that I ever posted was in fact the shop stream because it was oh. so the video that started the whole channel was this video that was released almost two years ago where it kind of discussed oh no oh, be right back yeah it was a shop stream the first video was a shop stream so yeah and that video, by the way, was filmed at like one o'clock in the morning. So I take very little accountability for that. Oh my. 
All right, let me catch up on some of these super chats real quick. Um, because there were some relevant things, and I do want to start getting to the topic that I wanted to talk about before, kind of how I started the practice of law. Because I wanted to get into this. Oh, there was one more thing I want to talk about. Um, the one other thing I wanted to talk about was something where I had a very proud son moment, and the proud son moment was uh the fact that my mother, my mom, Mama Morton was inducted into the University of Arizona College of Engineering Hall of Fame. Um, let's see if I can't grab that. So for those of you guys might remember, I was in Arizona not too long ago. And I was doing this. And one year ago, my dad got inducted into the University of Arizona College of Engineering Hall of Fame. And he was inducted April 22nd, 2023. And there was his, his credentials. It's a lovely evening. And then one year later, there goes mom. Now, the reason they were one year apart is because they graduated one year apart. They would have both been inducted in the same year had they graduated the same year. So the proud son moment was seeing mom get her induction to the University of Arizona College of Engineering Hall of Fame. And, you know, I don't know how... Too That's a pragmatic. huge thing. Oh, I know. Two pragmatic, logical looking, logical like engineers created someone with a neurodivergent brain that was as spicy as mine and ended up becoming Everyone a makes lawyer. Everyone makes mistakes sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> uh, uh, proud son moment. Mom was, uh, mom and dad were both uh, badasses in their field. And, you know, what was really cool about it was they graduated college together they wanted to get married while before mom had graduated and mom's parents kind of put the kibosh on that and said no 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 you're gonna graduate and uh they were together they found i think sophomore year of college they found each other my dad was a c student a soccer <laughs> player mom saw him on a soccer field playing um at the university of arizona and it was like hi he's a handsome young man uh <laughs> and they they did end up getting married the year she graduated and they continued um in that lovely life and that blissful marriage and i say blissful in uh, with a little bit of sarcasm because every marriage is going to go up down all over all over the place and when kids come into the mix especially kids as chaotic as me it creates some consternation so uh, she went watching the soccer games just to to do some shopping is that um I don't know. what you're suggesting Back then, this was this was in the early 70s so the soccer like the the shorts that the gents wore back then they they were uh, I, I, you wouldn't catch me dead wearing those things um <laughs> well so see, when you're dead you won't have a choice so um, that's true uh please don't bury me in those please just <laughs> have, some, have some dignity um all right fine if you're going to follow uh, my uh, you know last request for burial then I can, uh, I can, you know, try you to uh, your that last one. request where I have to install a bat battery operated fan with a trigger switch on a box that, that spreads ashes Correct. places. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Just make sure I don't get buried in some short shorts, but no, they were, they, uh, remain married for, uh, 40 years, uh, until my dad passed in 2019. So, uh, quite an accomplishment and accomplishments in their career. They both achieved some pretty significant things. It was pretty cool to watch. We have a guest who is way past their bedtime. <laughs> way, way past their bedtime. Rick, how you doing, this is buddy? true. He's not lying. How you been? I am okay. I'm happy to be here celebrating you. Well, Special day. You on. And I am, I am excited to converse with you all. And yes... As of late, 8.30 p.m. Eastern on a Friday night is a little bit late for me, which makes me sad. But I am also in my 40s and have recently gone through a medical event. So I'm trying to be nice about it. But yes, thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. Would that medical event happen to have been something that would be otherwise life-changing to an, every single human being and in some cases life-ending, but that you took an opportunity to use it as an education on your platform to teach people how to text said life-changing event and instead uh, get medical treatment when they need to and reassess and how they're living their life to avoid said event? 
I mean, that's a very nice way to frame it. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Rob. No, it it is, of course, my stroke at the end of 2022. Uh, But yes, it's still life changing for me, even though I try to hide it to some extent. But yeah, thank you for inviting me. I'm glad that you're here, my friend. And I know that we've got some uh, Stroke Hero Awards to announce on May 1st. And hopefully um, you have beaten out the the cute, uh, adorable, lovely uh, young um, uh, enemy. Are they an enemy? Uh, They are not enemies. Nobody on that nomination list is an enemy. They all deserve an award. And I think when they turned off the voting tallies, when they turned off the voting tallies, we were... Um, neck and neck with a Puerto Rican clinic. So we'll see how that turned out. But yeah, th- that'll be announced on May 1st. I am hopeful that it'll be a good announcement for me and that I can have some friends on a stream like this one and celebrate that. But I we'll see well, on May 1st. We will, we will, uh, we will be there. So segueing into the topic. Oh, wait, hang on. I've got to catch up some of these super chats. Amber, thank you for the remarkably generous super chat um happy early birthday and congrats on 200k subs my mama wants me to ask both you and runkle and now hogue if you've watched unlocked on netflix and your thoughts i have not i've never heard it i've never heard of it yeah i don't know rick i have not i don't know what it's about i can look it up uh but no i don't watch netflix as often the last thing i've been watching is fallout on amazon is that that got interesting reviews, right? Uh, I think it's pretty positive. I mean, it's a video game adaptation, so it's always going to be your mileage may vary with those. Uh, but I think it does a good job of capturing what the Fallout video game series is, at least in 2024. So I like it. Okay. I, well. I haven't watched it yet, but I want to watch it because I do like Fallout. Also, um, what's his name? The the guy who plays the ghoul is an excellent actor. Walter Goggins. Yeah, yes, he is. He's fantastic in this. He's fantastic in The Shield. He's fantastic in Justified. He's fantastic in everything. Mm-hmm. I just saw some of the uh, the costuming the... in the Fallout movie, and I was I was like, okay, this is something. Yeah, the props, the sets, the costumes are perfect. The storyline's a bit meandering and is a little weird, but honestly, that's Fallout. Meandering and weird, <laughs> Rick. You mean like, like me and Ian? <laughs> maybe like you and Ian. Maybe like Lawyers and Dragons. Maybe like Bethesda's Fallout. Maybe like the original Fallouts. But I, I think it's a fun time. I think you will enjoy it. I recommend it to everyone. Awesome. Well, I'll have to check out Unlocked now because Amber recommended it. Crazy Cat Queen, happy early birthday, Rob. Thanks for the very generous super chat. Welcome to your fifth decade of life. Yes, I know you're 40, but even my lawyer math, it's the fifth decade. May you have many more. I do I, that too. I, I tell my wife that she's in the next year after the number and she she really doesn't love that. I know. It's not a fun thing to realize. It really isn't. Uh, <laughs> Misty Harris, thank you for the generous super chat. Happy channel anniversary, 200K. Happy birthday and two years of your and Ian's and Rick's friendship. A um, lot of cool friends that I've met throughout this process that I think has been the best part. Now, oddly enough, both of the individuals on screen with me have stayed at my house. Um, That's true. Law and lumber is, and lodging, right? Law, lumber, mm-hmm. lodging, and uh, uh, festivities, and 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 fun and conversation. I yeah. So when I get the new house, you'll just have to you'll have to do it again. Um, weird to think that Johnny Depp brought us all together. You guys are great. Thanks to the mods. Thank you to the mods. Indeed, wonderful community. It has been, and um, that was something that one of our other friends taught me very early on was. Uh, focus very much on the community that you build around you because that's going to be the thing that's going to make it worthwhile. Now, segueing into the topic of the evening, Rick, I know that we've talked about Ian's start in the law several times on this channel and on his, but I don't know that we've talked about yours very much. How did you Ah, start it? Well, one of the things that I tell people, which is true, is that I became interested in law and to some extent the creation of law which is politics but not on that side of things uh when there were senate hearings discussing how mortal Kombat and night trap two video games from the 90s should otherwise be dealt with by the u.s government 
Uh, and that got me interested in exactly what was happening with lawmaking, because these hearings, if you were involved in the video game industry at all, if you liked video games and you were watching them at the same time, were complete tire fires, right? They were ridiculous on their face. And I was looking at this saying, these people are deciding whether or not to regulate some of the things I love out of existence. And I need to know more about that process and wanted to get involved from that perspective. It didn't hurt that my father was a lawyer. And besides saying, are you really sure you want to do that, uh, was otherwise very <laughs> encouraging to the whole process. Uh, and so I got involved with that as my starting point. And then I knew I wanted to do business transactions. I knew I wanted to be a transactional attorney more than a litigator because I'd always viewed that as more bringing people together than tearing them apart. Even though, if you're familiar at all with the contract process, you know that that is as it, perhaps it, adversarial as to anything that you see in the law. Although yeah. Rob, your family lawyer, may have a differing opinion on that as well. I don't know because contract disputes, like you, you thought you were getting into an area of law that was nice and, and friendly and once you were there for a few years, I think you kind of realize pretty quickly it's pretty nasty. Yep. When, when there's when there's millions of dollars on the line, you can get pretty angry phone calls. And I, I do tell a story on my channel that I have unfortunately made people cry unintentionally, uh, representing some acquirers of a founder company and trying to tell them what contract terms we needed in order to get the risk profile to match what our clients were willing to do. And the founders cried and said, you know, I can't believe you're doing this to me and these kinds of things. And, and you have to take that as a lawyer from time to time because you're a representative of other people's interests. But that was the idea when I started out was to do business stuff, to have closing dinners, to, to, to bring people together. Uh, and and that cool. ultimately led to me being a venture capital attorney to start out with, then really focusing on entrepreneurship and mergers and acquisitions as well. Now, I don't mean to age you, but you graduated law school when and entered the legal field when? You can age me however you like. I graduated from Michigan Law in 2005. Okay, so at 2005, there was still quite a bit of, like the, the legal market was still expanding and had not yet contracted after the 2008 recession, right? That's right. 2008, 2009 was when even the firm I was at at the time was reducing practice groups and reducing overhead. Well, I love this segue because I always wanted to do what you do. I always wanted to be what we called in law school, swivel chair lawyer, where you sit in the nice cushy swivel chair and you don't have to, there's, there are swivel chair lawyers and stand up lawyers. And I wanted to be a swivel chair lawyer. I did not want to be a stand up lawyer. I wanted to be the swivel chair lawyer that was helping to advise uh, a company on how to navigate the complexity of legal structures. I well, wanted to do criminal defense or video games and to get into anything video game related at the time required you start off with a big firm. And I can tell you my law school grades were not the big firm grades. So computer defense well, or criminal defense. And that brings up the added added benefit of the ADHD and what it did to our grades before you find something you love. <laughs> <laughs> not good. <laughs> no, if you're forced to study something with ADHD, sometimes you just don't do as well because you haven't found a way to make yourself love it yet or yeah. how to navigate the ADHD and how that does with uh, mandatory topics that you just have zero interest in. I don't know, like mathematics. Um, <laughs> for what? That makes sense. So I graduated law school. Well, one, again, with the ADHD, I went to school to play lacrosse. And I went to an engineering school thinking that, hey, parents were engineers, I can do this even though I don't really love it, why not? And I played lacrosse at Stevens Tech uh, until I had my knee blown out and I realized a uh, combination of knee being blown out and the, the grades not doing so well once we hit uh, Calc 4, uh, I think I did, yeah, that was terrible. Um, I realized, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and transition. So I went to NC State after that. Went from engineering to forestry. Okay, bit of a transition. Natural Resources Policy Administration. And then, I then after making that transfer, I was diagnosed with ADHD. Got prescribed medication, and all of a sudden, I saw a GPA that was in the twos um, go, I think, the last 
four semesters of college, I did 21 or 21 and a half credit hours per semester and was averaging 3.89 or 3.91. That's a heck of a course load. <laughs> it And that GPA maintaining that, that was the ADHD. So that was what the diagnosis did and figuring out that what I was struggling with was that focus. So that brought law school back into the purview. And I had always wanted to be a lawyer. My chemistry teacher in high school said, uh, you'll be a lawyer one day. And oddly enough, when I met him at a bar um, after I graduated law school, he first question he asked me was, did you ever end up becoming a lawyer? But out of the blue, before anything, he just goes, did you ever, be, ever become a lawyer? Nice. It was pretty cool. Um, so not having any lawyers in the family, I didn't know what law school was. So rather than take the uh, take the admission to George Washington University where I got accepted, I went to a tier four law school in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I didn't know any better. It's funny. My other school was George Washington. It was George Washington in Michigan. No, I'm sorry. It was George Mason in Michigan. I, I get my Mason's Georges in, in that area confused. Mason is a damn good law school and they turn out a ton of litigators like those are trial dogs like they i that's a great law school um my law my current law firm we re recruit from there as much as we can but yeah we could so, have been uh, colleagues we could have been but then you would have had a bit trial attorney i don't know i don't the know. road not taken always a fun journey is it uh, but uh, yeah, that sounds fantastic. I am so glad you found something that worked with what you were interested in. It was. So I went to this tier four law school um, and I started law school in what? Tail end of 20, 2007. So after you had been practicing. You started after I graduated. After you graduated. So you were a practicing lawyer for two Happy years. Happy birthday so I started to me. Law school. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> um, I graduated law school in 2010 after certain crashes occurred and when the legal market had completely seized up yeah did you have to go through any furloughs i'm talking about finding a job rick i couldn't find a job there I just, were no jobs I, even the, the friends that i had that were behind me at uh, at michigan were all being furloughed by these various places that they had tried to get jobs mm. Oh well, yeah, there there just were no jobs to have. So moved back in with the folks while I studied for the bar, took the bar, uh, passed the bar, kept looking, kept looking, and finally ended up turning to because there, there were no other. We didn't have a lot of the headhunters that we have these days. We didn't have a lot of places where people could go and find jobs. We had Craigslist. <laughs> Because that was where people were advertising jobs and the legal market had completely seized up and there was no one hiring. So I turned to Craigslist and started answering people that were looking for lawyers, associate attorneys. Interviewed with a couple of different firms. They were all criminal defense and traffic people that I didn't really want to do. Hated the first several interviews. And um, finally end up getting an interview with a solo practitioner in Woodbridge, Virginia. I was living in Darnstown, Maryland. So the drive was an hour and 35 minutes each way. And my first, my starting salary as an associate attorney was 36,000 per year. That's not great. No. And driving both ways. Now I was living with my parents. I hope so you're making more than 36,000 a year now. Well, we're doing fine now. <laughs> Didn't start that way. So it was a solo practitioner. It was my very first job opportunity. And I worked at a little laptop cart. And let me see if I can't find the picture. Because I think <laughs> I still have it. It was actually, hang on. I'm going to find this damn thing. Um, it was unique. But a job was a job. And at that point in time, I just needed to start practicing law. It was really uncomfortable because it was general practice, which included my biggest fear, litigation. The very first week that I was working for this individual, I was in court. 
on what was relayed to me as being um, a simple first appearance on a uh, an assault <laughs> assault charge. The litigator's laughing. That doesn't sound good. It's not good. It's not good, Rick. It's it is so much worse than bad. Um, it was not a first appearance. It was the trial day for a simple assault charge. Now, as I later in my years learned, most criminal charges that the person you're defending is very likely not innocent of their their accused offense. And I guess looking back on it, luckily for me, um, that was likewise the case here. But my very first week as a lawyer, here I was in court standing up and a judge was saying, okay, we're going to go to trial. Mr. Morton, uh, do you, do you, uh, the prosecutor says we want to rule on witnesses. And the, I've told the story before. And the judge looks at me and says, Mr. Morton. And I said, uh, and the judge goes, would you like a rule excluding all potential witnesses who could testify in this matter from the courtroom so that they can not speak to one another while the testimony is ongoing? Yes, judge. I want that. Sounds good. <laughs> Please do it. Send them out. <laughs> and honestly, that judge about two years later pulled me up to the bench um, and told me that he remembered my first case in front of him. And oh, how, nice. How it was, how it was it really special for him to see how the progress had been and how proud he was of the bar and the state of the bar that it would advance young attorneys rather than, you know, crush them or, or bleed them out. Like one of the things that people don't talk about a lot, well, we used to talk about it, but um, law firms do this thing with young associates where they just completely destroy them. They just break their soul. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I spent years writing disclosure schedules for big deals. Uh, and I used to, I used to joke with my wife that I would just pull the handle and say disclosure. Um, certainly later on now, I look at that as pretty educational and informative, but yeah, wanting to stab your eyes out with ice picks is pretty normal for early days in a law firm. <laughs> uh, that was a Rick Hogue statement that I've never heard before. Um, it was rather aggressive, so we need to keep you up past 8.30 more times. <laughs> I told you, I have reduced inhibition now. I know. I I Can I tell this story? I'm going to tell the story anyways. You can yell at me later. Um, I had the, the opportunity to speak with uh, an individual, a hatted individual, um, while he was in the hospital. One of his few conversations on the phone outside of his family and I was warned that before speaking to said individual, that being Rick Hogue, that there would be, well, that the filter was gone. Funniest damn conversation I think I've ever had. It was. I have no amazing. idea what I said, Rob. I have it no was idea. amazing. There were references to bedpans. There were references to therapists. There were references to just, it was, it was I cannot remember laughing that hard in a circumstance that I should have been worried. It, it, I died laughing. So I had decided uh, in the hospital that humor was the right way to handle all of that. So I'm glad it was funny. I'm glad it made any sense at all because I was doped up pretty good. And Mrs. Hoglaw was telling me that you were, you were giving the, you were challenging the logic of the questions that were being posed to you to try and test your mental faculties. So as a part of your recovery, they're asking you these questions, these logic questions to see if your brain synapses are, are refiring again and to see how you're doing. And here's Rick, who's not just answering the questions, but going, there's a fallacy in that logical argument that you're making. Would you like well, me to, to be explain fair, it? There were actual mistakes, right? You know, if you've ever looked at logic puzzles or any of these things in a games magazine or on a newspaper, but sometimes they make mistakes into how the logic works. And so there were assumptions that were underlying some of the logic problems that were not stated in the problem itself. And so I would say, okay, so I have to assume these people are dating different people, right? Because you're putting couples together, whatever you're doing in that logic puzzle. And the therapist would say, oh yes, they have to all have different dating partners or things like that. And it's like, yeah, well, we need to be very specific 
if you're going to test my cognition and we're going to do these puzzles. He was. You were L setting the cognition test. He was. He was. He was L setting the cognition test. <laughs> doctors were pissed at, and the doctors were like, "Come on, man! Like, just, just answer the question." I'm just teasing you. <laughs> my doctors were not pissed at me, Mr. Morton, uh, and I suspect clear, that they were really happy to see that I you do. had the function yeah. to do that and to challenge the premise of the question. Yeah, they did like that, and and some of the some of the speech pathology tests uh, I remember. We're asking me to describe like what a cartoon, what's happening in a cartoon. Like all these tests are wild, right? But you have to describe what's happening in a cartoon. And there was like a, a kid uh, leaned up against a counter trying to reach a cookie jar and uh, the mom was getting mad and things like this. And I had written something snide about the family dysfunction. Uh, and the therapist uh, gets to the end of my caption. And one of the comments that they make is uh, appropriate levels of humor uh, for the situation and the task. And I was like, okay, well, good. Yeah. I'll take that any day. Um, so the appropriate levels is important because, um, some people post brain injury have entirely inappropriate sense of humor and just can't manage in society because of that. Well, they Correct. try to get you right. Like they, how many words can you think of that start with the letter F? Is like one of the cognition tests. I'm like, that's Come not on. fair. That's, that's not, not fair. fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd start with that. <laughs> I think I actually so said that. Fair. And the therapist said, Yeah, I understand. And, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, it's kind of going like, You mean, except for this one? I'm trying to be uh, in social mores. And eventually the therapist will be like, No, say whatever you think. Uh, and then later on, my problem was I was, I was saying things and I was trying to not sound like an asshole i was trying to not <laughs> use like super big words even if they matched the letter and i got to the end i told the therapist I was, i'm not trying to impress you these were just the words that popped into my head like fastidious for f or whatever right a and the therapist said fastidious? no no fastidious fastidious <laughs> you said fastidious yes. i believe i said fastidious yes uh and uh and the therapist said no no when people are trying to impress it's obvious and and you're clearly trying to avoid those words so it's okay but like, yeah, these tests for for seven weeks straight or whatever is is just crazy. Yeah. So at this law firm, there was a law clerk. That law clerk then uh, in two years, fast forward, ends up becoming my law partner because the law clerk was there having passed the Arizona bar, but studying for the Virginia bar because her husband had moved to Virginia. Um was there and, and she had the desk and I had the little laptop cart. And this solo practitioner went from, in the first year that I practiced there, went from, I remember looking at the books because one, he didn't have a trust account at all. So Ooh, that's a the, problem. Yeah, the, the, the law clerk and I said, no, you need to do this. And we set him up with a trust account and set up the accounting system and we, we put all these things in place, these mechanisms. Now, why a first year associate and a law clerk that has just passed the bar are putting in mechanisms in a law firm that should have them were red flags. But we practiced law the, the most well within the confines of the ethical rules. So we were very careful about that. Um, I learned the practice of bankruptcy law from this law clerk who was a clerk for uh, ch several judges in Arizona, and I taught her the practice of family law. So learning and going along the way ends up just becoming a trial attorney. I was in court all the time. Very little experience, but learning it quickly along the way. That brings us to, I think, Memorial Day weekend of 20, tw uh, 2012 where I basically had it with this attorney because um, he was Were using you thinking of a word that starts with F? Fastidious. <laughs> <laughs> and I had spoken with my uh, soon-to-be law partner about branching out and creating our own firm. We had a caseload, I think, of like 110 total between the well, technically the three of us, but he wasn't litigating any cases. We were we were the one handling it because she had passed the bar since and was a lawyer and associate at the time. 
So we were handling all the caseload and we were like, this, we're, we're done. I, there's too much here that's making us very uncomfortable. We're gone. And Memorial Day weekend, uh, I was supposed to fly up to Boston to watch the NCAA lacrosse tournament. Um, and my flight was leaving two hours from the time that, I mean, I was supposed to be out of that office by an hour and a half beforehand. And he wants to call a meeting. And the meeting he calls is talking about billables and numbers for a person who's not in court at all. And he just wants more money. And in this meeting, he refers to the funds and client trust as that's accounts receivable. It's money that's there. It's just we haven't earned it yet. It's not receivable, it's, Ben. Yeah, it's... Well, we're getting to how his career ends. Yeah. So I then put my hand on the desk and I said, that's it. I'm, I'm out. This is my two weeks. And he then proceeds to fire me. That, that says, is the, the touching client funds is one of the nuclear rules. Uh-huh. Uh, proceeds to fire me. And I just walked out of the office. I was too mad. That is hard to do that early on, man. It, it was it was a day. So then he then he proceeded to mobilize the entire staff to call every one of my clients. Uh, tell them not any of the truth, but very disparaging remarks. Um, and then pull all of their files to see what I had billed and not billed and what was still in trust. If the red flags are ringing or, or flying up, because that's they're there. Um, I sense the next move is to invoicing. It was. So I started the stream talking about Mama Morton. One of the things that I haven't mentioned yet is that Mama Morton had just retired around this time. And when you take someone who's been a corporate juggernaut and you you take away their when they retire. They're kind of stir crazy. So here she was. Not when I came back me. Memorial Day, the bar had issued kind of an instruction letter and said, no, you need to allow this attorney back in their office. They need to be able to have access to the files because they're the files he's working on. So he begrudgingly allowed that to happen. So here comes mom, my mom. I can't believe this ever happened. And she was like, no, I'm there. So she moves one of my bookshelves kind of in the way of the door, like accidentally, like it looks like I'm moving it and moving stuff around so he can't come in. <laughs> and I'm packing up files and typing and, and here she is putting files in a box. And that's a, when you talk about people that are in your corner, I think I was 26. I don't know. That's what I mean, right? Like I, this story is remarkable to me because like having the temerity to even know to take the steps on an ethical basis at like the very top of your career is so hard because these other people are doing things and there is a presumption that they're doing things that make sense for actually functioning in the profession. And you know how many young lawyers like there's a, a thing where young lawyers get started and get burned by joining a like a practice that is not providing proper ethical guidance and is not properly following the ethics themselves. And like they end up just barring the young lawyer too. On the That's what they tried to do to Tom Cruise folks. <laughs> yeah. So here's mom playing stalwart against this uh, person who's walking back and pacing back and forth in the office, uh, casting invectives into the office as I'm packing stuff up, accusing me of taking stuff. Mind you, I had bought all the things in my office. I never wanted anyone to buy me anything. I bought the chair, bought the like computer, all the, all the above. Um, pack up the files, drive them to the new place that we had rented, me and my new law partner, and, and put the files there. And then started sending out our version of the letter because the thing is, the bar says when you have a conflict, one, the bar says that you're supposed to try and work together to send out one letter 
between the two of you to the, all clients that are current and give them the option. They can choose to remain with the firm. They can go with the new attorney or they can decline and go with a third party, but they need to acknowledge so that we can manage their file and their trust account appropriately. And it's supposed to be where the lawyers come together and they say, we're going to be adults about this and send a letter. Let me give you a guess as to how that went. It didn't. So he sent out his emails and we had to kind of create letters and say, here, um, here, we're new firm. If you want me to take your file, please let me know. Uh, sign this. So we get our signed letters and we send the signed letters to said person. And we said, please, you know, make arrangements to transfer the trust funds so that we can continue representation. So we get the files in the interim. And then in starts coming the trust funds. 67 cents, $5, $126, $250. You start to get the, the understanding. <laughs> Did he go back and look at the billing and determine that some of the hours billed were as a supervising partner, fewer than what should have been? I can only speculate. So what my law partner and I did was we took all those clients on and we basically gave them a trust account credit. We said, we are going to treat your trust account as if it has this amount of money in it. We're not going to bill you until we bill these hours that will be on our dime. And once we've exceeded that, what we knew you had in your trust account, last time I touched your case, then we can we can start talking about new billing. So for the first eight months of practice, the law firm made zero dollars. Zero. I imagine less if you're paying rent. Mm hmm But we were on our own. And then he started collecting against one of our bankruptcy clients. So we respectfully asked that the bankruptcy court sanction him for doing that. He was very upset. Tried to explain to the bankruptcy judge, apologized, yada, yada. The judge says, we're not going to sanction you right now, but you can't do this anymore. So we get out from under him. And we continue practicing law. And by the way, for, uh, hang on, let me do this. Because there was a, a, a photo that I had shown or one that was on the thumbnail what did it look like when I first started the practice, my own practice? Well, it looked like that. Oh, God. Uh, I was never shave again. That oh. is everybody's firm desk right there. <laughs> <laughs> I still have that desk. I'm just saying that, that in my office. Oh yeah. Except for the printer. I, I didn't have my own printer. That no, that's a scanner. Of course. That's a scanner. Yeah. Now I just take pictures on my phone. Yeah. I look this photo was the photo that was kind of up on our firm website. I think until I um went to this new practice. I we never took new photos. And I I, I was wondering when I went to the, the new firm when I joined the new firm, I looked back at the old photos like, huh, you know what? wonder if we had gotten a few more clients in if I didn't look like a baby on all the photos that were out there. Um, but yeah, that's baby lawyer, Rob. That, that was fun. Photo day. <laughs> I was, it, for us, it was fun. It was the new firm. We owned the firm. It was our place. Yeah, you're marketing your own place. My, my photo days were you have to go and stand in like the snack room for four hours and then actually get directed by a photographer like you're at a high school photo shoot. And then I still look awful. So none of those work for me. But you look fine in that picture. You look different, but you look fine. Yeah, I was, I was, I was a youngin. Um, so that was in 2012. 2012, we continue practicing. We finally get the firm kind of up to a great place in 2015, and and we stopped fighting. Uh, this this time in my life was when I realized the phrase "Don't wrestle with a pig." Um, you both get dirty. The only difference is the pig loves it. And it was also that the best revenge is life well lived. So continued on practicing, ignored it entirely until about 2019 when something 
provoked me to look it up, look him up. And go figure, I found a certain report from the bar. And thus, that leads us to where we are today. Looking back, approaching year 41 of my life, as Rick has now appropriately reminded me, uh, I get to kind of revisit the shit storm that I left and realize how far it is that I've made it um, in the practice of law and in maturing in that practice of law with a whole lot more to go. But before we get there, I need to take a quick little break. Um, would you guys mind entertaining for a minute? Oh, God. Do you uh, want please? us to sing Let's All Go to the Lobby? Please do that. Um, Rick, have you played the new um, the new RimWorld expansion? I have not played the new RimWorld expansion. I have been playing the new Final Fantasy expansion because that's what I play. <laughs> Fair. Um, I just got the new RimWorld expansion, which is basically Cthulhu in space. Um, I've been enjoying it quite a bit. So no, I think that's good. I, I, I and I think I was watching. Was it you play RimWorld at some point? Was it on your charity stream? It might have been. Um, RimWorld is not great for the charity streams. I've discovered or I've decided because it's kind of boring to watch. Um, it's it's very and, mechanical. Yeah, and a lot of RimWorld is just you're sitting around waiting for the next disaster to happen. And so until it happens, it's like, all right, everybody's wandering around doing things. Things are working fine. And the worst thing to watch is things are working fine. <laughs> so, um, I mean, there's a reason why RimWorld has like the times three speed option. So I I'm having fun with it. Oh, I, I like it a lot, but um, it tends to be sort of periods of action. So I've got some games picked out for the next uh, charity stream. Um, I might play some of a game called Void Bastards. Yep, I like that one a lot. That's a roguelike. Yeah, and the sense of humor in it is just, it amused the heck out of me. So, Well, I'm a big Douglas Adams fan. Uh, Hitchhiker's Guide is one of my favorite books of all time, and it has that uh, some of that feel. Yeah, is the, the sort is of the, humorous cynicism. Is the movie adaptation of that any good? Because no. I love the movie adaptation. Come on, I love the movie adaptation of it. Uh, it's not a good adaptation of the source material. You're you're fully uh, within your rights to enjoy that film. The thing is, it, though, Douglas Adams intentionally made every adaptation a little bit different. Um, so they may get a pass on that. Well, and I think Hitchhiker's Guide, like the radio production, is pretty much okay. And I like Martin Freeman as much as the next guy. I just don't like that particular movie. Fair. Um, wasn't Adams involved in that, or was... I don't like, know, honestly. I think maybe. Um, did you ever play the text adventure? Uh, from Infocom? I did. Yeah. <laughs> I never beat it, but I played it. It's It was a tough one. Shouting out this uh, super chat, Rayman YBC, Stroke Hero, notwithstanding, Rick is my Stroke Hero. I think I will only accept that from Rain Man. Otherwise, it, it does make me feel a little awkward because I don't feel like a hero. Uh, I was just actually talking to my wife about this. Uh, but I really do appreciate everybody that voted for me, and hopefully you do, we won. You, mean, you do realize that you are Rain Man's Stroke Hero. Like I, I, Rain Man has told me his story. So yes, I accept that from him. Also, yeah. I've spoken to like three people now who rain man included who mentioned that like your story helped um help them recognize a stroke so that's pretty freaking heroic um most people don't like have an objective count of lives they helped save so yeah. um you may not agree with it but sorry dude we're sticking you with the label um you're stuck it's with it it's not about agreeing um, with it. It's just, it, it, it doesn't, you know, I, I watch a lot of movies. I, I read a lot of stories. I feel like I know how it would feel to be a hero or heroic. And I, I don't feel deserving of the moniker, but isn't that I what appreciate everybody that disagrees tonight? with me? The thing is, is that a lot of heroes out there don't know what it feels like. Um, you're driving along on the highway. You stop to pick up somebody because you just have a bad feeling about it. And you get them out of a, a bad situation. You get them somewhere where they're, you know, they're safe. 
Maybe you saved their life. Maybe you don't know it. Maybe they don't know it, but it can yeah. still be heroic. That's um, true. Sometimes uh, professor it's small of, gestures at the right time. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> there, mischief's chiming in in the background. Rick, because of you, I went to the ER because I was showing all the signs of a stroke. Thankfully, it wasn't, but better safe than sorry. Yeah. Uh, Professor of Logic chiming in on uh, in support of Ian's comment. I used a permanent marker to draw a beard on younger Rob, so it stops freaking me out. Was a new TV, so the wife was not happy. <laughs> Uh, Lindsay coming in saying the real question is, can you believe you've known Ian for only two years? I don't know. I can't possible. believe that we heard was two years ago. It's been a weird time. Well, you know what? Judging by how much people are still talking about that damn case, it's not surprising. I can't believe it was two years ago. It feels super recent and super far away at the same time. Yep, yeah. Different world. Yeah. Because it feels like ancient history and then I'll go on Twitter and there'll be somebody arguing about it and I'm like, Okay. Um. Actually, oddly enough, this is a weird segue because um, very rarely I will get asked about the channel in public or people will ask me about it. I had the really cool opportunity today, today to have an adoption order entered for a step parent adoption. The judge Ooh. was amazing. Judge Saylor in Fairfax County. Uh, Those there was kind of like a celebration, right? It was so cool that it, it, this got thrown on the motions docket. So this wasn't a private ceremony and my clients knew that, but I had filed a motion with the court prior to this being heard and asked for leave to, to take a photograph, um, et cetera. Cause you have to have, you're not allowed to use your camera in, in the courthouse. So I actually filed a motion and said, please let me take a photo of this um, and put all the cheesy language in there. And the judge looks over and says, Ms. Moore, did you file a motion? I said, yes, judge, I did. And looks around, sees the courtroom kind of empty. Bail, uh, bail, I'm going to step down. And came down around and posed for a photo with the family. Um, honestly, litigation is really kind of, it, it's a very challenging practice. Now, we help people in the worst of times and help them navigate them, them through the worst of times to hopefully a better future. But we very rarely see that better future. We get them through the worst of times, but we don't actually get to see them five years down the road when they've rebuilt their life. Um, my job as, the, as a domestic relations practitioner is dealing with people in this, in this area where their, their household is dividing. It's in the process of dividing, and I help navigate them through that division. So usually I'm involved in that division process. Very rarely do I get the opportunity to actually legally create a family. And today I got that chance to actually facilitate the creation on paper legally for all intents and purposes of family. And it was really cool to see. And the judge was amazing. But on the way out from that, they were asking me about Deb V. Heard. And I said, oddly enough, <laughs> yes, I remember that case. And they were like, well, how? And I said, you see that bit of pavement right there? I slept on that. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so oddly enough, that came up today. So it's kind of funny. It's weird how those things work. Yeah, um, when that Kristen, Netflix documentary released, I got texts from everybody. Everybody. Gosh, it is wild. It's so crazy. So Every once in a while, when I run into lawyers, they'll be like, I didn't I see, because I haven't seen a lot of these people in forever. And they'll be like, didn't I see you in depth be heard, like in the, in the background? I'm like, Yes. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, how, why? I'm like, well, um, craziness. Uh, so Kristen comes in saying happy early 40th birthday, happy 200 K and two year channel anniversary. Congrats to mama Morton. Congrats. Indeed. Baby steps. Congrats on the 200 K and happy early birthday. Been here since the beginning. Thank you. So many of you have, and it's been so amazing to have all of you along for the ride. Snow Maven. Tomorrow's my birthday. Excited to celebrate with you two tonight. Uh, yeah, for with the record, tonight. 200 000 in like less than two years is freaking amazing man you're a rocket to the moon it's been an adventure and a big learning curve along the way very big learning curve you are kind of a natural no i just i'm just me <laughs> Just Let's say you make that's it what look, being a natural is <laughs> say you make it look very easy rob and well, I know it's not. Ian knows it's not. 
uh, and you you bring a chill atmosphere to all of these things, and that's a very good thing. I've made the comment before that I think the trial attorney part is really good practice because we have to, when we're in court, if you're a trial lawyer and you don't get butterflies and feel stick to your stomach before you start an argument or before you start a trial, stop doing it. Like, just stop. You need that nervousness. If that goes away, it should always be there. What you get better at is you get better at masking it. So when chaos happens, you get better at putting the best foot forward and calming yourself and putting out into the world this calm perspective, even though there's chaos underneath. So I, I like that. And I, I think that live streaming is very much that because there's a whole lot of chaos that goes on. And you have to be able to manage it in the in the moment that it's happening, like when when things don't work the way they should. Um, Vez, glad to see you, Vez. Happy birthday, Rob! Congrats on 200k, and thank you for everything so far. I hope mischief spoiled you rotten. It's not technically the birthday yet. Um, my birthday is going to just be a, a dinner with mom, mischief, and the kiddos. So that Dawn sounds Burke, like a great. That sounds like a great birthday. Have you picked out Perfect. a location? You don't need to say where, but maybe Steaks. type of food. Steaks. Steak. Steak. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Steak. do not say where or else you're going to have some Just up. <laughs> Steak. Um, Don Burke, dude, I turned 56 years young. The ninth. What's up with the Maya case? The Maya case is interesting. The judge ordered them to mediation. Guess how that went? Um, I I'm guessing exactly as I predicted when I saw that order, which was this is going to be stupid and a, a gong show. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what we know from that is the mediation did not last long because, well, reasons. The judge can order you to attempt mediation. They can't order you to reach a settlement. Yep. Didn't they uh, fail Jackie, to bring one of the people that they were ordered to bring? You mean HH? Uh, because, yeah, they were ordered to bring people with authority to make decisions on all of the mm -hmm. relevant issues. So Yeah, they, and they didn't. Um, yeah. Yeah. I know. Yep. So Jackie DVD stitch art. Rob, congrats. Thank you, Jackie. Very much appreciated. I want to shout this out. Leandra, thanks for the 50 gifted memberships. Very much appreciated. Lady Drake, who's one of the mods. Thank you to the mods for being here. Please like the stream too and say hi to the mods and appreciate all that they do. Um, two year old for the channel anniversary, Law 2 Rocky Horror Picture Show casting. We all need this closure. I, that is me being called out for not responding to that. <laughs> I, get distracted really okay, is uh, there a name for that it's adhd uh yona w thank you for the very generous super chat happy birthday rob and congrats on two years and 200k subscribers thanks for all that you do thank you for you guys being here this channel would not and i don't mean that you know with any hyperbole it would not exist without you guys being here and watching and and encouraging along the way, not just me, but Ian and Rick and Emily and everybody else. We we are here because you have told us that you like hearing this information and we like talking about it, but we, we put it out in the ether because you've told us you like hearing it. So thank you, all of you. Patty Hoffman, happy early 40th birthday and 200K. Patty, that's remarkably generous of you and thank you so, so much. Professor of Logic coming in with another joke because I love these jokes. Now he makes 37K, so all good. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen the like the little chart of lawyer salaries? Um, because everybody thinks lawyers are, are, are rich and, and smoking cigars and leaning back on their leather chairs or whatever. Uh, but if you if you look at the income, it's like totally bipolar. It's like most lawyers are in that 30 to 50 range. And then there's like a, a, a huge gap where nobody makes any of the numbers. And then there's a bunch of lawyers that make 200,000 or what have you, because they're the big oh, yeah. lawyers. Yeah. It is, it, it is wild. To, and I wish that people, more people were out there dispelling that notion that, that lawyers, especially trial lawyers, people that are in court all the time, they all make this grand sum. No, they're a lot of them are there because they love doing it and it's important to them to do it. I well, got yelled at by, well, not really yelled at, but I got chided by my accountant uh, when I was doing my taxes the one time because he's like, <laughs> um, you are not making any money and you are doing all this free work. 
you've got to stop this. And I'm like, I don't know how. Like, I don't know how to not take on the the free work I shouldn't be taking on because it just is what it is. Somebody's got to help people. And yeah, so um, there have been years I didn't make a whole lot of money. Well, and the, the crazy thing is um, people ask me, because if, if I did turn to this channel and cre and use this channel as the sole source of income, one, it would become a more than full-time job, but I would have to give up the practice of law. And I've had a lot of colleagues say, you're ever going to hang it up and just do the YouTube thing. And I always say the same thing I say to all, all of you guys in the chat. No, I can't. I can't. You can't take Whatever. this away from me. Whereas what I want to do is do the YouTube thing primarily to, to, so I can do the free stuff and just have a law firm that, like, we don't have a trust account because we don't take money. Yeah. Like, there is Wouldn't no be... trust account because we don't accept money. Um, that's the dream. And then... Um, and then that also allows you to skip all of the trust accounting because trust accounting is, um, God, the meetings that I had at my bank to try to explain what an IOLTA account was and why, why I needed one were insane. It's like, are there oh, any other lawyers in this wait, state? Wait, 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 we get there. We get there. Trust me. Oh, we're, we're... I had to, I, I had an entire day ruined because the bank made an error for $400 in my favor. They yeah. put 400 extra dollars in my trust account and. But it's like you spend an entire day sitting there and it's like if you had a screw stuck in your head and you're just slowly tightening it. That's how much fun it is. And it's also costing you hundreds of dollars while you're doing it. So um, trust accounting sucks. But uh, yeah. yeah. Um, um, highlighting some of the chat. So uh, Julia, you'd be in chat with us if a bunch of lawyers didn't have issues with Judge A overruling their objections. That is 1000% right, as is <laughs> this one. Lindsay, also big thank you to Mischief for encouraging Rob to come online when he was frustrated that Judge A wasn't getting a fair shake. That is exactly how that transpired. Um, Mischief is the one where I said, they're wrong. And I'd sent a DM to Alita and others, and um, they said, would you like to come on? I was like, no, I don't want to be on screen, ever, ever. And and I said, who would want to hear me talk? And she said, well, I love hearing you talk about the law. You can talk about that all day. You love doing it. So she's the one that told me to go on. Jessica Hicks, the Leo Defense Fund. We could still hear him, LOL. Happy birthday in 200K, two-year anniversary. Remember, you and the bed video, yes. Uh, Leo is back and forth between like, I want to be asleep and then realizing he's asleep, but there's other stuff going on and I'm going to bark. So <laughs> he's, he's there. He's hanging out. Brian Allen. Uh, this to Rob already, but speaking of the bed video, uh, I was on doing what I do with video game folks. And one of the editors of one of the major <sighs> video game websites is in the middle of an interview with me uh, and stops for a second to ask about my wooden YouTube uh, play button that my friend Rob created for me and then says, is that, do you really know law and lumber? It's like, I kind of, I mean, yeah, I've slept in his house, you know, I know him. Uh, he's like, wow. He, he's the one that did that crazy bed video in depth. He heard, isn't he? It's like, yep, that's him. So everywhere I go, it's, you know, those guys. It is so wild. It's, it, and I make the same comment when it comes to Emily all the time or when Ian, when he go to the Gundy's it's, it, it is so crazy to be where we are. It's really a wild world. Um, Brian Allen says, uh, Rob, I joined the 40 Club two weeks ago. Welcome to the party. I will be there in a short time. Not tonight. A short time. Uh, I have a less okay. eventful fifth decade than me. <laughs> I, I will do my best. Not in a condescending. So, here, fast forward. This is where we are. So this is before the Virginia State Bar Disciplinary Board. Now, a lot of what you're going to see is going to be redacted because, well, I don't have an interest in having people's names going out there. I lived this. I don't want to live it. I have no desire of people going and looking out those names. So please, to the extent you can, refrain, just do. I will read it. You don't need to go further. 
the order of revocation. This matter came to be heard on October 23rd, 2015, upon the petition for expedited hearing before a duly convened panel of the Virginia State Bar Disciplinary Board, consisting of all of these people. The bar was represented by this person. The respondent appeared in person and represented himself initially at the hearing. Already red flags. On the second day to which the hearing was continued on October 29th, the respondent was represented by had found an attorney. The chair pulled <laughs> the members. All right. Uh, yeah. I'm so the, sure. the first I'm day went trouble. well. And you got to love expedited for something that's nine years ago. Right. It, it, it's, it's a slow process in the law, folks. No, no, this, no, 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 this, this 2015 thing, this happened in 2015. We are, this, oh, we are oh, I thought, back in time. I thought what you were talking about was a disbarment no, for, for right we, now. We are back in time. Okay. I am going back in time to the grand old year of 2015. So my practice has been open at this point in time for three and a half years. And 2015, I have, Rob, buy another house. We have moved on and have been happy and are not looking at any of this and, and very happy to be out of the situation and knowing, knowing as we left that this would end up, we knew this was coming. Like it, there was no way of walking away from that and going, he's going to completely correct the ship. No, the Some two people that, just can't correct. And the, the two people that were there that had, I mean, Rick, you pointed it out. Like there's not a whole lot of people that would just stand up to the, to the partner of a law firm and say no and walk out. I, I, honestly, reasons. it's it, it, it's one of those where you put yourself in those shoes at that age and say, I hope I would be able to do that. But that's hard. Yeah. The chair pulled the members of the board panel as to whether any of them was conscious of any personal or financial interest or bias. They weren't. All required notices with respect to the expedited hearing were sent by the clerk of the disparity system. Findings of fact. Board Exhibit 1 was admitted into evidence without objection. Joint Exhibit 28 was admitted to evidence. VSB Exhibits 1 through 4, blah, 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 all the above, were admitted into evidence without objection, and the others were admitted into evidence over respondents' objections. Exhibits 54 and 65 were objected to. Those objections were sustained by the board, and the admission of the exhibits was denied. Respondents' Exhibit A through B, E through H, and K were admitted without objection. Exhibits C through D, I, and J were admitted over objections by the bar. The board made the board makes the following findings of fact. So is VSB State Bar? Is it Virginia State Bar? Is that what correct. that stands for? Okay. VSB yeah. is Virginia State Bar. So a bar disciplinary proceeding is in front of a board of licensed attorneys that act as a board self-governing over the entire body of barred attorneys. So there is an ethics panel. And they sit as a board and they they pass judgment being duly um, elected by their colleagues to serve in this capacity. And they render opinions on whether someone should be reprimanded, disbarred, etc. Now, this person then has a right to appeal that to a court for further adjudication. But this is the first step. So the board convened a panel and said, no, what's happening here is emergence in emergent situations, so we need to expedite the proceeding, and that's what they did. So at all times relevant here too, the respondent has been an attorney licensed to practice law in Virginia, and his address of record was in, as I said before, Woodbridge. Facts relating to the first docket number, complainant doctor client. Dr. Client retained the law firm in March 2014 to enforce a judgment that had previously been obtained in the state of Maryland, the amount of the judgment being $5,970 plus $118 in costs. A Maryland licensed attorney who was then employed as a staff attorney at the law firm was assigned to the doctor's case. Doctor signed a retainer agreement with the law firm on March 27th of 2014. The agreement provided that the client has asked the firm to assist him in collecting on a Maryland judgment. The client has agreed to pay the firm $1,000 to assist in collecting the judgment. The client understands and agrees that if the client wants the firm to provide additional services beyond the services mentioned above, the client must discuss such requested services and, if deemed necessary, given the additional representation, pay an additional retainer fee before the additional services are rendered by the firm. If you're thinking that well, you know, Rick, as a contract lawyer, what would you say about this particular clause? 
Well, I don't like agreements to agree in the future. I like to set some parameters around those things, but it looks a lot like my engagement letter. So I can't complain too much. But it would you would say it's a flat fee, right? Thousand bucks? Mm. You mean the first part, like the initial retention yeah. is a is yeah. a flat fee, yes. Hundred percent. Yeah. So the retainer agreement did not include any provision for an hourly billing rate. In furtherance of the attempt to enforce the judgment, Mr. Blank propounded interrogatories to the judgment creditor standard process. The judgment creditor failed to respond to the interrogatories. At that time, the law firm requested an additional 500 for further services, including filing a motion to compel. Uh, so the law firm's unhappy with the number that it agreed to. I was going to yeah. mention that in terms of setting a retainer like that, I would probably have a, 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 a an hour ceiling that would be kept internally, uh, documented internally by the firm. And then if it goes above that, I would have an hourly rate that applied after that retained amount, but. Oh, Rick, you, you are going to be so disappointed as we go on. So disappointed. Um, it's hard to get those numbers right. So that's why you generally have floors and ceilings and safety valves for both sides. Well, there, there, there's no floor, there's no ceiling, there's no safety. Uh, so thereafter, Dr. Klein informed Mr. Blank that he did not want to invest additional funds to pursue the judgment. He further stated that he wanted to terminate his representation and request a refund of all money that had not been expended and a copy of his file. At that time, Dr. Client returned representation by the law firm. Mr. Blank advised Dr. Client that there was $452.50 of unexpended funds in the escrow account. I mean, how was okay. yeah, how was that even calculated? I don't know. On August 22, 2014, Dr. Client sent an email to the respondent stating he had previously requested. Mr. Blank processed a refund and further requested a final invoice and all documents associated with this file. So right now we have an initial request that was when? Oh, we don't have the date. Okay. Dr. Blank sent emails to respondent on 6 October, so two months later, and 9 October, again requesting the refund. On 10 October, respondent replied to Dr. Client repeating request for a refund of unspent funds with an email to Dr. Client with a copy of Mr. Blank stating that he did not believe a refund was warranted, but he would nevertheless looked over Dr. Blank's file and get back to him within a week. Well, as the name, Mr. Blank responded to the email with a copy of Dr. Uh, client advising respondent that he believed that Dr. Client was in fact entitled to the remainder of the funds in escrow account. Dr. Blank, Dr. Client rather, responded to Respondent's promise to, quote, look over his file by reminding respondent of his ethical obligation to process the refund request in a timely manner. We are two months later, by the way. He further advised respondent that we'd file a bar complaint if he were not provided with the refund and or a reasonable explanation for the denial of the refund. So now everyone's a little up in arms. We're now talking bar complaint. Respondent and Dr. Client exchanged several heated emails in which each accused the other of misconduct and threatened to sue the other. In his emails to Dr. Client, respondent attorney stated that, quote, any unfounded complaint will be slanderous and expose you to liability towards the firm, end quote. Respondent further stated, quote, I will file defam defamatory action against you and request one millions in damages. Huh. On December 22nd, respondent sent Dr. Client an email in which he definitively stated that he would not receive a refund since the matter was a flat fee case. But the thing is, it was about flat fee for collecting and he didn't do the thing that would have earned the flat fee. It does seem that the answer to how much money is in your account is either zero or a thousand, though. I mean, like there's no calculation in the middle there. Unless your agreement says that we reserve the right to bill hourly for the time until the entire flat fee is earned. Right, but that's yeah, different. I mean, that's this... essentially a kind of earned prepayment. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, I I typically have flat fee agreements, but they're flat fees with stages. Like, you know, because it's if we go to trial, then it's this. If we resolve with a guilty plea, then it'll be this. You know, that kind of stuff, as opposed to just like, yeah. you got to have some plan for like, you know, if the guy fires you on the day of, well, and the other thing is it's like, all trial fees are earned like two weeks before the trial. Because mm. if you fire me on the day of trial, I've still done all the trial work. I've got mm -hmm. all this time that I can't do anything else with. So 
you know, and that's very yeah. common, right? Where you'll yes, set we're, those we're, kind of. We're at, we're at the first of the allegations. This this is this is chapter one. Oh, it's going to keep going. Oh, okay. Oh, that's so. Well, I mean, it is important to get your engagement letters correct, folks. Lawyers in the audience that are watching. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Respondent lawyer, as the owner of the law firm, is the individual ultimately responsible and accountable for the fee arrangement, for billing matters, and for a denial of the refund to doctor client. Respondent lawyer further assumed such responsibility and accountability when he stated in his response that, quote, only the owner can make a final decision to refund a fee, end quote. Respondent lawyer's actions constitute a violation of Rule 1.5 of the Professional Conduct Rules, in that the retainer agreement provided to Dr. Client did not adequately explain how attorney's fees were to be assessed. There were unexpected the retainer funds at the time Dr. Client terminated the representation by the law firm. Respondent's failure to provide Dr. Client with a refund therefore constituted a violation of 116. That's what we talked about. thing I'm just going to say is that like for a lawyer, you're probably dealing with sums of money where a thousand bucks shouldn't make or break you. And... Like the whole thing of like, hey, I'm going to put all of this on the line for a thousand bucks. It's like, my dude, was this really worth your time? Um, okay, so here here I'm going to task the chat with every time I say violation of rule. You're going to keep a tally. Oh, good. I was, I was like, don't poison our audience, Rob. It sounds like yeah. there's going to be a few of these. So, respondent's action constitutes a violation of Rule 1.5. Okay. The failure to provide the doctor with a refund constitutes a violation of Rule 1.16. The spurious threats of legal action against Dr. Client constitute a violation of Rules 3.4 and 8.4. As a result of the action detail therein, Dr. Client filed a complaint with the bar and an investigation was opened. In the course of the investigation, it was determined that whereas the funds paid by Dr. Client in furtherance of representation were initially deposited into attorney trust account, they were not maintained in the manner provided by Rule 1.15. In that, here's where we go. On multiple occasions, Dr. Client's $1,000 check was deposited into a response trust account on April 9th of 2014. And before the date of the first claimed payment for work was performed on the case, funds in the trust account dropped below $1,000. Yeah. So Rob, have you, have you talked to everybody about like what a trust account is, how it's supposed to work? It's, it's, an, it's a completely separate account for money that you've taken in that you're in possession of as a law firm through your bank but you haven't earned it yet. You haven't done the job. You haven't otherwise gotten it in your contract. It's not yours. So you're not supposed to touch it before you've earned it. And it may in fact never be money that's intended to be yours because like if you practice in real estate or transactions, yeah, um, you might be like, hey, I've got $6 million in my account. It's not mine because it's immediately going to go to like buy this house for the client. Yeah, and whereas Hoglaw does not perform escrow services because the insurance is just ridiculous, uh, because they're worried about lawyers stealing the money. Yep. I talked so, to a lawyer who early in his career ended up with um, something like $60 million in his account and was like, well, if I'm not stealing it today, I'm just never going to be that guy. So I think I've made well, a decision about who I am. And because, um, yeah, $60 million is like, flee to uh you know another country and retire kind of uh kind of money yeah i mean and that's facilitating closings of all kinds real estate big big business deals uh, a lot of people use lawyers we use third parties that'll just take the money and it'll sit there until the closing actually happens but either way whether it's a client trust account for money that's early paid to you that's not earned yet you're not supposed to touch it for any reason like this is where you get into real trouble with the bar oh yeah you guys didn't. Yeah, read if this you before. really are tired of being a lawyer, that's the way to stop. Yeah, okay. there's two ways to really get in trouble with the bar. One is stealing money. The other is uh, more like late night Cinemax related. I want someone to screenshot like Ian and Rick's like somewhat normal faces right now because we are <laughs> at page five. 
we're 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 gonna we're gonna get a lot deeper into this discussion, and I think a lot of the nuance that we're discussing right now is, is, is gonna it take a gonna turn. Get the late night Cinemax. It, it's gonna get somewhere, and I know that there's guests backstage, but I want to read the next two paragraphs before I bring that guest on. On multiple occasions, I think that's after a mistake, but <laughs> after Doctor Client was advised that his escrow balance was four hundred and fifty two fifty, the funds in the respondent's trust account dropped below four hundred and fifty two fifty. After the communications, they still dipped into the till. Well, it gets better. On multiple occasions during the course of the representation, respondent's trust account had a negative balance, with funds <laughs> being deposited into the account through an overdraft protection plan maintained by the respondent. Right, and I feel out like the IOLTA, huh? Is the appropriate juncture to bring in Ms. Emily Baker. I hear you all lying that messing with money will get you disbarred because uh, Tom Girardi begs to differ. <laughs> so does Alec Murdoch. Well, <laughs> for most, yeah. it will get you disbarred. I feel like Murdoch's got other problems these days, though. I would say so. I mean, his name is now synonymous with murder. You know, you just use them interchangeably. Well, mm. Emily, you're not wrong. Even stealing and other proclivities doesn't always get you disbarred, but they are the two that are most likely to get you the spotlight. You are absolutely correct. Soon chat GPT is going to run up there with it. Like citing fake cases from chat GPT is going to have to, is going to have to come I, up with us. Guys, I don't, I don't give legal advice on my channel or other people's channel, but if you're going yet? to use an AI to write your legal brief, at least shepherd the cases you're citing at least at a yeah. bare minimum. I think it's actually like copy the case text and put it in there and it'll yeah at least it would spell motion right though <laughs> that, no, you saw that Emily, too did you Emily, that's motion. Also spelling. it's motion it is motion <laughs> I, to come to you, come to I, you. Did, I did put up my stream today with alibi spelt wrong because i couldn't tell where the letters were going and my my producer was like girl and i was like i can't i can't see that it's spelled wrong like i actually lobby don't see it. l's and i's are hard for everybody I can't. It can be, it can be complicated. My bad. <laughs> um, a question asked by Susanna uh, Rabbi: Where's the jury? The jury, the jury has been sequestered. The jury is in a in a box. They are sequestered, and it's comfort, comfortable box, comfortable box, and they've been compensated. Um, they are sequestered until the new house and the new jury box is set up. So they are in a jury box, sequestered away from the stream. Yes, that. I just like this warboard behind you. Like I, I'm wondering if that's like detailing all of the. It uh, various YouTube comments, no. or it's just it's just Which a fantastic no, 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 no. background. No, it's, this is this is uh, this is my inner this is true this true. is my inner child that saw on Amazon Prime Day that there was such a thing as a um, an LED. Uh, also, curtain. pro pro tip for YouTubers: there are many things that you can get out there that will um, um, that will automatically put comments up, like either on your screen or in your background. Do not do it. Do no. not do it. Um, it's a great way to get your channel nuked and then have to apologize. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna put on a calming fire. Calming fire. So there Wait, we go. There's calming, calming fire. What? Those two things no, don't you know go what? together. I, I figure that when we're discussing about the burning down of a client trust account and a law firm, that calming fire is calming. So okay, okay. you got it. It would make sense. I think so. All right. Hang on. There we go. So client trust account is uh Funds were being deposited through the overdraft protection plan. So we're here. We are on page five and we are here. I hate so facts relating, that, facts relating to complaint number two. So Ms. Client retained the law firm on or about 30th of September 2013 to represent her in a dispute against Insiders Auto of Manassas, the dealership regarding the purchase of a used vehicle. Okay, lemon lawsuit, we got it. Initially, and in accordance with the retainer agreement, Ms. Client paid $2,250 via installments for a prepayment of services in furtherance of the representation with legal services to be charged at a rate of $200 per hour. The retainer agreement provided that attorney's fees were to be charged at $225 per hour, but in response to client's request, they were reduced to $200, with that amount being interlineated in the retainer agreement. I have judgment. So, interlineated, eh? Yeah, so we're we're at least we're at least we're at least formalizing the 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 modification with interlineation. Ms. Client made it sound like it's written like better. It does sound like it's a response to the the problems that have happened in the prior retainer agreement. 
we're gonna see that that's not the case. Well, I love I the rock narrator voice comes in. Unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, <laughs> not <the> yeah. <laughs> uh, Ms. Klein initially met with respondent attorney regarding the representation in her matter. Thereafter, she was provided with a succession of attorneys who worked in her case. In addition to respondent attorneys assigned to her case, included A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. That seems like a lot, but okay. It, yeah. That's is something. She OJ or like, oh, what was she doing with the car? That seems like that's maybe as many attorneys as Alec Baldwin has at this point. <laughs> yeah. No, these 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 were in succession, not contemporaneous. Oh, so it, all right. It was My bad. File a file okay. passed from one to another to another. That is that's a lot of people. That is a lot. Uh, Ms. Client's dispute with the dealership related to her attempt to purchase a used auto from the car or from the dealership with the transaction to include $1,500 down and a trade-in of her prior vehicle. When the transaction fell through, the dealership refused to return the down payment and her prior vehicle. The goal of the representation was to gain the return of the vehicle and the $1,500 down payment, as well as reimbursement for wages lost by the client as a result of the actions that were alleged to be improper. Oh, that's a That's a tough one. The lawsuit, the law firm prepared a lawsuit and filed it in GDC of Prince William County. A non-suit voluntary dismissal was taken when the dealership requested arbitration in accordance with, well, there's an arbitration clause, the provisions of the retail installment contract. Okay. Well, why file? I mean, I don't know. Why I don't file, know. If there's, if there's arbitration, why, why file? Request arbitration first and then file if you had to? Like, why waste the money? Over $1,500 well, in returning the car. Why waste the money? I, mean, I don't know. This might have been it because the arbitration was provided through the McCammon Group, and they're they're pretty expensive. That's going to cost a, a bit a bit of money. Uh, in accordance with the process, on August twenty first, a representative of the McCammon Group forwarded to Blank Esquire, the attorney for the law firm who was assigned to the case, uh, a confirmation memorandum that provided that a pre arbitration conference call was scheduled for nine a.m. on Friday, September twenty sixth. The confirmation I've got memo. A bad feeling about this. You, you're. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it great when like the bar is foreshadowing already <laughs> once they list the date and time of the call you just yeah. know and it's 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 the time part that you're going okay i, I to Tom, me it was the scheduled for scheduled for yes. suggests things true true uh the confirmation memo further provided the retainer in the amount of 2850 see that's what i said the 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 arbitration is going to cost more Need to be paid to the McCammon Group by or on behalf of the client on or before September 23rd. Prior to September 23rd, Ms. Client notified respondent and blank that she had resigned her position with the law firm and that she would not be able to represent her in the arbitration. Ruh -ruh. Oh, Ms. Client was not informed by any attorney or staff member of the law firm that in order for the scheduled pre-arbitration conference to go forward, a retainer in the amount of 2850 needed to be paid. The September 26th pre-arbitration conference call was canceled because the required retainer was not submitted by the law firm as required by the memo. Ms. Client was not informed by any attorney or staff member of the law firm that the pre-arbitration conference call was canceled because the, the retainer wasn't paid. Thereafter, the conference call was rescheduled for the 12th of February. Okay, so they didn't just say they, re they rescheduled. All right, they didn't In just December. Say um, in December, attorney informed the client for the first time that she was required to pay an additional $2,850. That's a little bit after that September date. In prompt compliance with the request, the client provided responded a check. Oh, no. You see where this is going? Yeah. yeah I'm going to pay that direct. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, which course did it end up on? <laughs> provide the respondent with a check in the amount of $2,850 made out to the law firm on December 12th. The memo line of said check specified that it was for quote arbitration. Oh God. It's I'd be so fucking pissed. You go to trade in your car, you pay your fifteen hundred dollars, they keep your car, they don't give you back your money, you don't get the other car, and then you have to fuck around with all of this. I would be so pissed. Like the amount of time and energy this would all take and money is infuri it's infuriating. Sorry, I'm I'm pissed on Miss Client's behalf. No, I agree. On or about February 9th, you're about to get so much more pissed. <laughs> so <laughs> much angrier. 
Um, on or about February 9th, respondent demanded an additional 1125 be paid for matters associated with preparing for the arbitration proceedings, including the preparation of the, quote, statement of the case. Ms. Take Klein it from again, the lawsuit that you already fucking filed. Wait. wait. Yeah. <laughs> Ms. Client again promptly complied with the request and provided a check in the amount of 1125 made out to the law. The office. client. I was going to say, I, why are my clients not like this? Where it's just like, I need money. And they're like, sure. Okay. It's wait, like, just, oh my gosh. The memo line, the check said it was again for arbitration. Respondent was aware that the 12 February arbitration conference would be canceled and the process could not proceed if the 2850 was not provided to the McKenna group by February 11th. Why would this information be important? They're, no, they're surely know. just going to pass it on. The one that was paid to the law firm in December. Yes. Uh huh. The law firm, surprise, did not pay the 2850 retainer to the McCammon Group. All funds were retained by the law firm to pay for attorney's fees and costs allegedly owned by Ms. Client. In fact, no funds were owed to Ms. Client by Ms. Client to the law firm at the approximate time. Ms. Client's escrow account showed an account balance in excess of $3,000. On February 12th, the pre-arbitration conference call was canceled because a required retainer was not submitted by the law firm as required in the memo. Ms. Client was not informed by any attorney or staff member of the law firm that the scheduled pre-arbitration conference call was canceled because the amount wasn't paid. The law firm never filed a statement of the case with the McCann Group in furtherance of the arbitration proceeding. Ms. Client was not informed by any attorney or staff member of the law firm that the statement of the case was not filed. On February 23rd, just a few Weeks after, Ms. Client personally contacted the McCammon Group and was informed for the first time that the reason the arbitration was not proceeding was because the respondent had not provided the, law, the McCammon Group with the retired 28, 2850 retainer. There is no justice in the world if she doesn't get to like throw a pie at each of these lawyers. Like, I, I honest to God, I would not want to be on that phone call. I mean, what uh, it didn't go through because they didn't get paid. Really? That's so odd because I sent them a check. Yeah. For a lot of money. Yeah, on by April the way, 19th. Also, why all these the numbers are higher than what you're fighting for? Why doesn't the side that put the arbitration clause in the contract have to pay for arbitration? Does that vary by state? Uh, uh, it, it's what the contract says. It's what the contract right? says. Usually you can require them to pay for it. Um, Y'all, if you're looking at contracts and there is an arbitration read clause, it. Read the it. person who's demanding you sign the contract should bear the cost for arbitration. Um. Emily, would you care okay. to read? Would you mind reading from 44 to 47? You want me to read it? Okay. Also, you'd be surprised Please? at how much editing of a contract you can get away with and have the other side agree to it because often the guy who works at the car dealership is not a contract lawyer. And so when you're like, I'm going to cross this out, I want you to initial it on the contract, they'll be like, okay. And that could be fun. Um, Ian is not wrong. <laughs> Not at all. And Ian's like, I'm not giving legal advice. I'm a Canadian lawyer. And Hogue is yeah. like, I hear what Ian's I'm not giving legal I'm advice. I'm giving recreational this advice. Those are different advice. things. Life advice. Um, what are we doing? Lawyer, after... Whether or not this is funny. <laughs> Thereafter, on 19 April 2015, Ms. Klein informed respondent that she was terminating her representation of law firm. It took that checks April. out. Yeah. Ma'am. Ms. Client, she was very patient. Ms. Fi Client further demanded an immediate return of her retainer. Yes, including the arbitration fee and her complete file. At the time, Ms. Client had paid respondent a total of $8,423.70. Remember, for a traded in car and $1,500 paid. Respondent and you know what, provided Ms. Client with certain documents in response to her request for the complete file, but refused to provide the requested refund and stated to Ms. Client that she was not it. entitled to a refund because all the money paid had been expended? Doing, oh. How? Yeah. How was the money expended? It was supposed you know to be what? There's no evidence that any legal services were performed. I, I know. If if I'm this law firm, I am just going, you know what? Um, How about we go to a, a car dealership and we're going to pick you out a car because that's going to be way cheaper than all of the other crap here. And it's like, yeah, we're gonna, you're going to have better. a nightmare by the end of this. Also, like, this is a very yeah, active and responsible client. You don't think they're going to fight you at this point? Like, it would yeah. now become my life's mission to fight. Like, 
And you know, the next lawyer she hires is going to get paid on time and promptly. And it's going to be that lawyer's favoritest client ever. Yep. <laughs> yep. It gets better. As a result of the action described herein, Ms. Client filed a complaint with the Virginia State Bar and an Ooh. investigation was opened. Fucking amazing. Collecting in, complaints. In response to the bar complaint, respondent falsely asserted. So this is to the bar, by the way. Respondent falsely asserted that the scheduled February 12th, 2015 pre-arbitration conference call needed to be rescheduled due to the unavailability of the judge who was to hear the case when, in fact, the conference call was rescheduled due to the response failure to pay the required retainer. They lying to, lie the to the bar. <laughs> lying to the bar. Lying to the bar investigators is a uh, bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how that works out. It works out <laughs> great. In furtherance of his response, the bar complaint respondent provided a, quote, client activity report, end quote, that purported to show attorney's fees and costs charged to Ms. Client in furtherance of the representation oh, against the dealership. a forged report? Or I don't a know. Faked but, report? But... <laughs> It, it, it on its face, if you're one, if you're going to send something to the bar, double check it on its face, the said activity report included numerous instances of attorney's fees in excess of the 200 per hour, despite the fact that the retainer agreement provided. And as confirmed by email from his client, that attorney's fee to be charged at a rate of 200 per hour. This systematic overcharging of Miss blank constitutes a violation, said the magic word of 1.5 B. The beginning of the violations, I imagine, where are the rest? Let them fall like mm -hmm. water. Here we go. And we have another one. You, you, you're so good at this, Emily. It's like you've done this before. I've read um, a number of bar complaints. You know, most of the people in our profession that are, I engage with, we're all on the same page. Like, you spend a lot of money to go to law school. That shit's hard. You take your job seriously. You like the clients that you work with. Even the ones you don't like, you still want them to have a good outcome or you eat them to a lawyer who can get them a good outcome. It blows my mind that people are just wilded out with their law degree. Like, it just, like, what are you doing? It, I know it happens, but again, blows my mind. Blows my mind. Running around like the one you talked about on Twitter who says, yeah, I'm a constitutional law lawyer, but, you know, the Fifth Amendment is kind of bullshit. It means you're guilty. And and the, the intervener dude in Daybell, I, I am so sick of these <laughs> fucking lawyers acting like assholes. Stop it. Yeah. Like, stop it. There is so, definitely uh, a reason people dislike the profession. Mm -hmm. uh, let's let's uh, let's uh, tally up some additional violations. Re right. Response initial failure to inform the client of the need to provide the McKenna group with the retainer and the amount of blank and the further failure to inform her that the, the two pre arbitration conference calls have been canceled due to the failure of the firm to pay that amount constitutes a violation of rule 1.4. Yep. The failure to provide to pay the required retainer provided the law firm with the funds for such payment constitutes a violation of rules 1.3 and 1.15. The failure to provide her with a refund uh, for the express purpose of retainer to be paid to the McCammon Group uh, and taking actions in furtherance and anticipation of arbitration proceedings or any other funds paid by blank in furtherance of the representation by the law firm constitutes a violation of rule 1.15 and 1.16. I think As that's the Yahtzee. Well, we're we're close. <laughs> as an individual, uh, as an individual responsible for approving the funds, uh, refunds of clients, respondent is responsible for the accounting, uh, for the failure of the law firm provider with a refund. As the owner of the law firm and supervising attorney over those under his employ, respondent's refusal to provide Ms. Client with a refund constitutes a ratification of the actions of the attorneys and non-lawyer staff in his employ. Here we go. Rules 5.1 and 5.3 provide that under such circumstances as detailed above, he may be held accountable for the violations of the rules committed by the law firm attorneys and non-attorney staff. In the course of the investigation conducted as a result of the bar complaint, it was determined that whereas funds paid by Ms. Client in furtherance of the representation were initially deposited into respondent attorney's trust account, they were not maintained in the manner provided by the rule 1.15. The where violations so include wrong? where did they go? Where did the funds go? Oh, we're getting yeah, that's at the end. <sighs> you know, um, there's basically two options here. Option number one, because it's always one of two things. Option number one is up somebody's nose, 
and option number two is gambling. And it's like, which which out to the profession did they pick? Sometimes there's the rare option number three of acquired a girlfriend and had no sense of like, maybe should not buy her all the things. Um, what about to, to music videos, to songs called It's Expensive to Be Me? Because that music video cost over a million dollars to produce. So They might have, they might have your, played that song at the place where he spent the money. Could it go Hello. to your trophy <laughs> wife's? Um, oh yeah, is it is it strip clubs? Uh, it, it's uh, yeah, well, Ian's right. Funny, though, you, usually, funny you say that, Rick. It is funny you say that, Rick. <laughs> okay, well we'll get there. I oh. Ian's right though that it, it it's a strange pattern to actually set up the trust account and then dip into it. Mostly, what I see when when lawyers are really doing this wrongly is that the trust account doesn't exist. Right, they put the number in their operating account. And then they say, well, we won't touch that. But money being fungible, it's not the way you're supposed to handle these things. Look, I have a book that promised me that hookers and blow saves the day. I don't know what's happening in this case. <laughs> <laughs> the chat sent it to me. It's a fantastic children's story about Christmas. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yes, I know that I've missed a few redactions. Uh, this is a publicly available document. So I, I'm trying my best. So please just chat behave. On multiple occasions after Ms. Client provided the law firm with the 2850 check for the specified purpose of paying the retainer, the funds in the respondent's trust account dropped below 2850. Oh, really? Similarly, on multiple occasions after the client provided the law firm with 1125 for the specified purpose of preparing arbitration proceeds proceedings, including the preparation of the, of the statement of the case, the funds in the trust account dropped below 1125. Now that should be and impossible multiple, because that number should be on top of the other number. Because that work wasn't well, done and the other money wasn't well, paid. Well, it would make sense if, I mean, it, it would and would not make, let me just read the next paragraph. Mm -hmm. On multiple occasions during the course of the representation, respondent's trust account had a negative balance with funds being <laughs> deposited into the account through an overdraft protection plan maintained for, by the respondent. For the people in the chat, um, there should be no circumstance ever no, where no. your trust account enters into a negative balance. And where I am, at least, <laughs> that in and of itself is a reportable event. Like if that ever happens, whether it's your fault or something else, um, you have to report that to the Law Society, even if it's like 10 cents over. So and even if it's like... I'm writing the last check out of my trust account because I'm closing up my business and I accidentally put an extra dollar on it, on the check. You, you have to report that. Yeah. This Don't is the kind of thing that I am so, so careful about and so worried about uh, even just moving the money when I have the fully invoiced uh, amount uh, and to, to just actually dip into that seemingly automatically, if you don't even know that you're taking it into a negative is crazy. What I don't think you understand is that people aren't ethical. You, like no, 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 it's not that it's when, when you, when you're, you're micro, you're micro viewing this too much. When I say the, the client trust account went to a negative balance and overdraft came in to, to save it. I mean, the whole account for all the clients, for all the clients, not yeah. just this client's account. I mean, all no, the clients right spread across a law firm and it was negative. Yeah, that's what so I So at this point in time, every client that shows a balance in their trust account, like on paper, he has violated all of those, all of it. The money was just gone. Complaint like number three. I thought that overdraft was just kind of part of the money I had available. I, <laughs> it wasn't client money, thankfully. <laughs> it was just ADHD. So now, now we're in July, and now we're going to go ahead and bill some money for the preparation of a PSA, property settlement agreement, in a divorce case. So retainer agreement, one-time flat fee, eight hundred for the PSA, and a thousand for uncontested divorce, and twenty-five for additional administrative fees, eighteen twenty-five total. Sure, no problem. 2014, 2014-15, eh, I can see that. On July 23rd, 2015, she paid the full amount of the retainer by credit card. As part of the transaction, she was assessed an additional $2450. Well, that wasn't in their agreement, was it? 
<laughs> she was charged an additional 56 for the filing fee for the uncontested divorce, which she paid by credit card on August 4th. She was again assessed a credit card fee in the amount of 154. Approximately two I have no idea, the- Rob, whether this is in the retainer agreement or not. I suspect you read ahead and you know that it's not. But I would say that my fee section in my contract is different than my my legal fees section. I would have a cost section in the contract that was different. So I would have a credit cards or filing fees that would be indicated that those will pass through directly separate from the retainer or the hourly. Yeah. Yeah. And usually um, if you're going to bill costs or other stuff, you have to disclose it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. There's like a whole page of here's the costs that you could expect other costs may incur. Yes. Um, this is what you I explain know. to my clients that my engagement letter is seven pages. I jokingly say it's because I'm a lawyer. But yeah, there's whole paragraphs as to here's what happens to your files. Here's what happens to costs that we'll pay for you, right? Well, we will front the amount of a filer or whatever it is that you're doing, and it'll go direct onto your invoice. Uh, and that would be the same with credit card charges. Although those seemed a little bit high for what this is talking about, but I don't know. Yeah, they were a bit. So uh, two weeks after she retains the firm, she receives a phone call from the attorney that she was assigned stating he'd left the firm and that another attorney would be handling her case. I'd also on be September 8th in with a certain lawyer and they're like, I'm leaving. I'm like, well, I just want to go with you then. Cause yeah. Like, yeah. I want to work with you then. This that's also a really common thing when you're leaving a law firm is that law firms tend to not properly advise clients that like the client can go right. or stay. It's up to them. Uh, so, yep. So let's timeline July 23. She hires the firm two weeks later. First lawyer gone. So we're talking early August on September 8th. She gets sent an email from the new attorney advising her that she would no longer be working for the firm. That would start to scare me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of time. At that time, the divorce had not yet been filed. Not filed. Not filed. And uh, there was only an initial draft of the PSA, which, remember, 800 for the PSA. The PSA, not a draft. The PSA. Like, I mean, Once it- I've not been divorced, but I imagine when you are finally to the point of hiring an attorney and getting ready to be done with your marriage, you are ready to move the fuck forward to be done divorces can take time anyway going this yeah. far out and not having it even be filed would be infuriating i was salty today on stream this is not making it better <laughs> still make me laugh emily um mischief no it won't block it so we're gonna i have to start pulling up some <laughs> of the member chats wait i just realized i said that at the wrong time i called in to i <laughs> I brought up I brought up the fiance in the in the context of a discussion regarding you that was not. so stupid. <laughs> it's fine. Well, about timing and context because um I had quite a a lovely timing moment with my teen yesterday. I feel like you're going to have to elaborate on that at some point, Emily. Yeah, I feel like the, you know what? Yeah. Let's do that now. Elaborate now, please. <laughs> Can you? Okay, there's demonstratives on my stream, but I took my teen to an appointment and then we went to Sonic afterwards, as is our habit and practice. We watch YouTube videos on the Tesla screen when we go to Sonic. It's like our own little drive-in movie. And he was telling me about a science channel that he really loves and that science channel had made chocolate out of um, like the full cacao, which I had never seen like the cacao in the whole little pod and then you crack it open. There's other little pods. Anyway. Oh, they're, they're big, by the way, the pods yeah, are a lot bigger than I think. Yeah. Crazy. So yeah. we, um, we're at Sonic and we get a, you know, we get the order and as the order comes, he like swipes down the screen on the YouTube video. And I'm like, buddy, just leave it. I mean, you can, you can pause it, but just leave it. It's fine. And then yes, it's Nile red, Nile blue. <laughs> you can, I'm like, you can pause it. And so, um, she drops off our food and gives us like two napkins. And I'm like, I appreciate this, but um, there's two of us. So the appropriate amount is like 10 to million napkins, yeah. not, yeah. not two. So um, she brings back napkins and he does the same thing. He swipes the video down again. I'm like, buddy, 
we can just watch the video. It's fine. There's no need to be embarrassed. It's not like we're watching porn. Well, then, you said the word, to be fair, you said the word. And then the video resumes with him whacking the cacao and moaning and the cacao <laughs> cracking open with <laughs> all of the white, shiny, glittery cacao juice dripping down the cracked open <laughs> cacao nut. And is, is delivery person still at said window? No, no, no. But oh. I almost died and peed myself laughing. Like I laughed so hard it hurt. My kid was snorting and trying to breathe. It was the most ridiculous. But on the video, he's just like, Ugh. and I'm like, oh my God. What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? And then he turns it around and it's just like, bloop. And I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> And my kid's like, oh, you did that. And I was like, yep, I did do that. I that did is good that. timing. The timing was a fucking <laughs> thing. It was just, it was delightful. Um, but that's before he clocked me on my alternate Audible account later that day. So we had a very long, we had a very long day. And then I got clocked on the, the secret Audible account. So. Are okay. cacao pods considered nuts or are they? I don't know, but it was a busted nut is all I. Is <laughs> there, all I that, was, that, was, that was what I was about to go to. Oh. <laughs> you you saw my brain working and you were like, I'm going to finish the sentence before. Yeah, I, got, I got you. I got you. Stacks this group never you. fails. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's so good. So, anyway. So on September 15th, she finally sends a letter to the law firm, an email to the law firm saying, no, nah, we're a terminating representation. Give me a refund of whatever funds remain in the retainer account, plus the 56 for the filing fee. By the way, a divorce filing fee is 86, not 56. Uh, she further requested a statement detailing what had been charged at that point. That's a pissed off client. In the email exchange between the client and the attorney, dated September 17th, the attorney said, I'm out of the country until Monday. Our firm's policy is two weeks to review the file, do a final invoice, and process a refund. You know what? If that's a policy, fine. But she did not receive the invoice or a refund within two weeks. On at least three separate occasions between October 5th, that's well past three weeks, and October 18th, she called the law firm to inquire about the status of the billing statement and the requested refund. On each occasion, she was advised by various employees that the billing statement and the refund were not ready, but that the attorney would return her call. On October 18th, the client sent a letter to the respondent. Now we're at, we're, now we're sending letters. At this point, warning. Yeah, I want this shit in writing yeah. too. Physical yeah. letters on paper? Wow. Yeah. You know, you're mad. That, really, that should tell you that somebody's papering a file. Uh huh. At your yep. expense. Uh, so, um, but demanding that she be provided with the requested refund. Hang on. Let me fix this. There we go. No, I'm just uh, easy, Rob. Put it back. No, I, I like fun. being down here. I'm, I'm happy. Your channel. Right? We are celebrating you, Rob. Exactly. Yes, Rob. So I'm, I'm celebrating the, the celebr. I'm, I'm celebrating the celebrants. The celebrants <laughs> are being celebrated. Oh boy. You You're the one reading. Face. Just put your face back up. And no, I refuse. This is my channel. These are. You can see my jazz hands. Jazz I hands. was having fun making jazz fingers. Jazz hands. <laughs> jazz hands. Um. <laughs> On October 18th, she sends a letter to respond demanding that she be provided with a requested refund and billing statement prior to October 31st. Mm -hmm. Well, well, that right well, there, my deadlines friends. too. <laughs> yeah, now, now we are. Wait, hang on. If I do that, oh yeah, look at that. Um, she did not receive a refund or a billing statement prior to 31 October, nor did she receive an explanation as to why the requested action continued to be delayed. <laughs> By the on way, November I have also asked Premier to change the bump up, bump down when you pull up um, oh, yeah. Super Chats. It is, they are working on it. So, yeah, this is fine though. Yeah, this works well. Hang on. Here, we can actually, we'll, we, this will make it easier for the chat to read too. They can read right, along. Yeah, and have some fun. yeah. Look at you changing on the fly. I would have broken you know it by now. I, I, yeah. We can still break things. We just, we try not to. 
see if I can't get this number right. There we go. Let's try that. There we go. On November 1st. Oh, now we've escalated November 1st. She oh, contacts credit card company. For fast, I would be like, oh, fuck no. Yep. Charge back. Charge back. And I wonder how he's going to react to that charge back. <laughs> for the non-business owners, chargebacks are also awful because if you get too many of them, eventually you just lose the ability to process credit cards. And for a law firm, that that's real bad. It was a huge part of the process. Well, not a huge part, but it was part of the prosecution of Jen Shaw is how she was jumping around payment processors and jumping around her accounts due to chargebacks. Yeah. It, it was yeah. a whole part of how often... They were getting their processing shut down. Anyway, so we have our first chargeback on November 13th, subsequent to having affected the chargeback. She's provided with the billing statement that provided for a charge in the amount of 800 for the preparation of the PSA and 50 for, quote, <laughs> administrative fees. In an email exchange between the client and the law firm staff members with copies of all communications forwarded to the uh, attorney, the client was advised that she was to be charged for the full amount of the one-time flat fee for the preparation of the PSA, notwithstanding the fact that she was not provided the final PSA and the fact that only two hours of attorney time were spent in preparing the draft document. That hmm. is trouble. You got to get the deliverable. Mm. That's a problem. On November 17th, the respondent sent the client an email that stated the retainer agreement provides that 800 was for a PSA. We drafted the PSA and sent it to you. Thus, the entire 800 is owed to the firm. Please make arrangements so this firm can receive payment of $800. <laughs> Please make arrangements <laughs> to go fuck yourself. <laughs> yep. Client responds to re uh, the attorney's email by again pointing out that she was being charged for uncompleted work and suggested that the parties utilize oh, now this is the magic word the Virginia State Bar's fee dispute resolution process to resolve the matter. Here's a pro tip. The second that a client uses those words, you stop. They have now said fee dispute right. resolution, and you have no more authority to collect anything. And the other thing is you should really consider how much money is at stake and whether or not it might make more sense to just be like, you know what, I'm going to walk away from this. Um well, I think it's clear this firm does not have the cash money to end these things. Do I do I do the narrator voice? Um, little did we know he did not walk away. I mean, it's eight hundred dollars. I know well, that's lots of money for lots of people, but it should not be lots of money for a law firm. But their entire client trust account is in the negative. So yes. yeah, it yeah. might well be. Yeah, so uh, as predicted by our narrator, the respondent replied with an email sent at 6.31 p.m. the same evening stating, please remember that we do have rights too. Therefore, <gasps> if the bill is not settled by tomorrow at 12 p.m., mind you, 6.31 p.m. the day before, we will file a warrant in debt, which is a civil lawsuit, with the Prince William County Courthouse. The fucking audacity. Good yeah. God. Yeah, so uh, client says fee dispute resolution and lawyer is by rule supposed to say, okay, there no, it is. And they said, we will file a warrant in debt, which sounds very serious. That, that, yeah. So in order to avoid litigation, this is what's worse. She paid the 800. Where are they finding these oh. people? Yeah, I was like, I can't find clients who want to pay like full freight right away. Like, so they threatened her into and she, paying the and she, uh, and, and, it, and she paid it under the threat. Yeah, she she did. She 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 did. Yeah, that that to I me sounds like. <laughs> I also get, I also, I also get the, it's going to cost me a lot more to fucking deal with this going forward. Take the 800 and I'm going to respond, you know, report you to the bar and deal with whatever. I also get that too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I get it. But then again, the I bar don't I'll get my money back. <laughs> I, um, what, what's a good, let's see here. What, what can I do to the, the background? Let me, let me try, uh, audacity green green is audacity. I use green for audacity. 
I've got green for something. Let me see. How about a green maze? Oh, that's fun. There's animals. There's animals. You know, it seems like <laughs> Minecraft might be the only place this person gets to be a lawyer anymore. So maybe. <gasps> they can do that. There's a I don't think dinosaur. I don't think I they've actually loved that the commentary is there are animals and now we're getting animated. <laughs> we, we've got like the electric light parade going on. Do you see it the really dinosaur? Is. Can you tell me you can see the dinosaur? Yes. Oh, I, yes. I need it to breathe fire. <laughs> is Wait, there a dragon? Know. There's, there's a dinosaur and then there's a peacock. What's a peacock look like? Ooh. I don't think we can do peacock. We're not mature enough for that word. <laughs> Turtle? <laughs> no, I'm going to go back to dino. Dino. Dino for all Dino is definitely better. Dino. Sea turtle's hard to see on screen. Dino is better. Dino, Dino is the audacious Dino. Dino could have laser eyes and is also green. Let me see. It's the audacious Dino. Let me up. Mm. That makes sense. We got the gaming Dino here. There you go. Dino. Dino for audacity. So, respondent, as the owner of the law firm, is the individual ultimately responsible for the accounting accountable for the fee agreement for billing matters and for the denial of the refer, refund of the client, the actions constitute a violation of Rule 1.5b. The failure to provide her with the final billing statement and refund of unearned fees in a timely manner constitutes a violation of Rule 1.15 and 1.16. On December 7th, several weeks after she paid the law firm, the 800, the attorney sent an email accusing her of filing a review on Yelp. Oh, no! Which she I claimed... She did. <laughs> which she claimed included inaccurate information about the respondent and his law firm. Did the lawyer, lawyer not sue your clients for the reviews they post on Yelp. It does, you know... Uh. Oh, he, 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 we, we got it. We got it. We got it. Um, hang on. Footnote. What's footnote? Yelp is a so yeah, we know that. Okay, that's not <laughs> spicy. Um, respondent <laughs> demanded that she take down the review and further stated, quote, if your post is still on Yelp <laughs> tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., my lawyers who are copied on this email will file a defamation lawsuit against you on tomorrow, Monday, and request one million in monetary damages. <laughs> Even if we oh. lose the defamation action, which we won't, be prepared to spend at least $30,000 in legal fees because it will be a very long legal battle. Oh, don't do that. Don't. More don't. Mm. I don't bet like she was 100%. The threat of litigation as extortion, folks. Yeah, that's, that's the thing is you can say, we think we've got a great case and you'll owe us this much money, but the be prepared either way it's going to suck for you because we're going to litigate this is not a great look yeah the improper purpose um, of even if we lose we win because we made you spend money is uh is not the way to go there did this also yeah. end with so govern yourself accordingly because i bet it did i Come bet it accordingly. I, I think i think this is the end of it but um that's like nine no's in like two sentences including grammar we would have to up that no to like 15 knows yeah i don't know what tomorrow monday is but yeah <laughs> this is a song a rage and alcohol fueled email at uh at midnight on a sunday well well the interesting thing well, about putting all these together is you see also that the million dollar threat is it is their go-to move yep they're yeah. they're kind of just sitting there going one million dollars well he likes that number doesn't he uh-huh and then, I mean, me you too, know, but you know, not in this way. It's it's it, it's the threat of litigation where it's 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 that last sentence is going to get everyone in trouble. That gets every lawyer in trouble. Is this all female I, clients too? No, uh, well, we, we don't know about was, doctors. There's one, there's one male. Just curious. Just all right. Maybe he's a, yeah. It was a good question. Yeah, so she yeah. denied having anything to do with the posting and provided him with a complete copy of her Yelp profile. Well, that's more than helpful. Which included copies of every posting ever made by her on Yelp. That's she didn't make this review. Incredibly. Wow. Notwithstanding the denial, with evidence supporting her denial, he sent her several additional emails in which he continued to accuse her of being responsible for the post and continued to threaten to file the lawsuit. At this point, I would probably also make a report for harassment. They stole her money. 
misread the bad review they had on Yelp and then harassed her about it. What what we yeah. learned here is that they've done this to enough clients that they couldn't tell which one made the Yelp review because it wasn't specific enough to the way that they fucked over the client. That's a little telling. Yeah. Uh, so wow. the spurious threats of legal action against the client constitute violations of rules 3.4 and 8.4 in that it constitutes harassment as well as an uh -huh. improper attempt to infringe on her right of free speech. As a result of actions detailed herein, the client filed a complaint with the Virginia State Bar and an investigation was opened. In the course of the investigation, it was determined that whereas the funds paid by the client in furtherance of the representation were initially deposited into the trust account, they were not maintained as provided. It's a repeat theme. Where did the money in accordance go? with the rule? <clears throat> also, I have uh, a new motion. What can can Runkle be the attorney that picks up all these clients? Like, I want to see what would happen <laughs> if Runkle <laughs> then just starts gathering the clients because I feel like people would end up in jail, and that yeah, would be fun. Yeah, yeah. Just walk uh, in and be like, "So <laughs> I represent all the people oh. you've ever pissed off." <laughs> <laughs> The first so, thing I didn't uh, advise them yeah. to do was to make Yelp reviews. <laughs> and I think is that the first time we've seen eight point four? That's that's one of yeah. my uh, that's, that's, that's a new one. Are you, are you keeping that, that I've been What's trying the... to help fix in Michigan? That's that's the you shall not bring badness upon the legal profession. Mm. You won't look like a bad person. It's too vague. That's we a that's a it's a problem. In everyone's behavior on Twitter. Yeah. Sorry. So uh, your, your coverage of Twitter earlier is what I am referring to. <laughs> that's fair. Eight that's fair. Uh, so before providing a draft copy of the PSA, the funds in the trust account dropped below the amount that was deposited on multiple occasions. Okay. On multiple occasions after of. August 5th, that being the earliest date that respondent could reasonably claim that 800 had been paid. The funds maintained in the response trust account dropped below the 1056 Okay. On multiple occasions during the course of the representation, respondent's trust account had a negative balance with funds being deposited in trust account through overdraft pr protection maintained by the respondent. Uh, allegation, what are we on? Five now? Four now? Four. 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 Ms. Client retained the law firm in December of 2013 to represent her in then pending custody matter and paid $3,000 for prepayment of services and furtherance of representation with legal services to be charged at $225 per hour. Uh, don't in May of 2014. Stuff. Oh, but he does. Rage. Uh, in May of 2014, this is uh, just five months later, she terminated her representation by the law firm and on 14 May, she requested a refund of unspent funds. Shocking. The lawyer did not promptly refund the funds that had been not been earned. Also she engaged shocked. in several telephone and email conversations with employees of the law firm, another theme, in which yeah. she was given various inaccurate representations regarding the status of her requested refund. Eventually, she was advised the check would be ready for pickup on Friday. The check is in the mail, ma'am. Oh, check wait. In the mail. Wait, wait, wait. This one, I think, is my favorite. Oh, dear. Or, oh, yay, but oh, dear. <laughs> um, so she was told the check would be there on May 23rd. When she came to the office to pick the check up on that day, she was informed it was not available. Of course. On June wasn't. 3rd. Sorry, ma'am. We currently have a negative balance and no money. Well, well it's better than good. handing her the check and being like, oops, you no, know, don't cash this. Well, Rick, man, <laughs> you're Rick. Rick, I'm sorry, Rick. Your record right now on pre <laughs> like predicting things out of humor, where you think the most ridiculous thing possible could not possibly be what's happening. I have had <laughs> clients uh, forward date checks before, so I mean, I, I've seen finagling. But the funny, I mean, sometimes I've received checks that are like, here's, you know, a payment plan, and like, here's a stack of. 
you know, whatever. But that's a pain in the butt, and I'd, I'd rather not do that. You're but, a criminal. I mean, for all the checks at once. I've, I've, I've had clients <laughs> essentially negotiate and say, here's here's what we can pay right now, and then we'll do it over X amount of months. And I've told this story. I, I accepted that. I was Adam Sandler in The Wedding Singer when I started Hogla. I was accepting meatballs and baskets of goods. Yeah, I mean, you, you just do. want to try to get things done. I want to do. You want to do good for your client. Now I'm just like, what is the weirdest thing each of us have accepted for legal representation? Mine is just guns. <laughs> Lots of guns. Criminal defense attorney. <laughs> for the record, IRS, uh, I've never food. accepted anything of material value. I've accepted food. Like, I've uh, never been an employee. I wasn't allowed to accept anything, including food. I wasn't allowed to accept anything. So there is a process a for accepting stuff and you got to like report it as taxable income and all of that. So that's fun. But you also have to advise the client to get an indep like independent legal advice because the law society is worried that I'm going to take like their house in exchange for a thousand bucks worth of work. There was um, an attorney in one of the jurisdictions where I practiced that people would sign over their houses to. Um, but there was also I've, I've one that ended up in jail for accepting like narcotics amongst other things. So well, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> no one has ever attorneys. offered me drugs. No, I estate mean, planning attorneys doctors. get in trouble all the time. Estate planning attorneys get in trouble all the time for accepting things out of an estate that they shouldn't. Like, it, it's a rather common mm. thing. Ugh. This, um, is, this okay. is where government work was actually kind of nice because it's like, here's your paycheck in this amount. And then when you move up to this next year, it's this amount. And when you move up to this next year, it's that amount. When you get promoted, it's this amount. It was all very cut and dry. You missed out on the fun conversations like I had with my compensation committee where they said, we don't use math to determine your salaries. It's like what oh, are you talking about? That's yeah. a we what? Have, that's yeah, a way. What they use then? I, I'm they were trying. So I was going and I was saying that I I wanted X percent of the revenues received from clients, and I was I was using comparable math ac across the associates, and I was doing these various things. No, and they no, said no, 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 no. They don't do that. He tried to logic. No. We don't use math. You you can't logic the the partners. You're just. You're just going to get paid on vibes? Vibes. You, you do. You kind of do. If you're a good vibe and you bring in more good vibes and more clients and more money, they pay you more. I mean, you have, I had allowed for the vibes. I had, yeah. I had a whole procedure that I'd put before them that said, okay, if you, you can rate your associates. If you want to A, B, C, D, here are the tranches that you would put the percentages in for gross revenue. But otherwise, you're just taking extra money for the partners who aren't doing anything. Uh, and it's Don't not going to work for these shows. Out loud, Hogue. You're taking yeah. money for the partners that aren't doing Rich. anything. Rich, man, that's that is that is that is a secret we don't talk about. Hey, like, man, partners, I don't <laughs> work there anymore. We don't we don't give guidance. We don't we don't. Now here's the thing. I you have I have this new game. Well, to get higher up on the pay scale. I have this this new opportunity of being a partner with associates under me uh, that report to me, and. So Rob is I now love, the guy doing anything. No, I actually am doing a ton. And honestly, Rob's like, I'm hurting we, cats daily. <laughs> it, it wasn't just that. Yes. Yes. One, I'm hurting cats daily. I love my, all the associates that work with us are amazing, but we had one associate that, on the internet ever. Well, one associate left, which meant the burden on the other associates just like tripled. So for those associates, I told them, I said, Hey, I know we have some pleadings and deadlines that are coming up. I'm taking those back. Like, I don't like, I've got it. Like, let me, let me do that. So I worked until eight o'clock, eight 30 at night, every night this week, because they already are overburdened. And when the associate I've told them emphatically, like, if you need me to jump in, please just tell me. And I've tried to lead by example where I see them busy and I'm like, okay, where are you? Let me take over. I got it. Pass it off. Look at I Rob being it, a I would love any an senior partner that hung out with me at the late night. I, I did. There were not a lot. It's a big thing. And I well, I remember back at the judge that kind of took me under his wing. Like, what's a rule? To, what's a rule for witnesses? I didn't know. How was I going to learn? Who was going to teach me? How do we expect lawyers to be any good if we don't teach them how to be good? Agreed. Well, I straight up had that conversation and it was one of those where I was a squeaky wheel. I knew it. 
I was accepting that I was being put on a longer track towards partnership because of it. Um, but I wanted to at least have the conversation with these folks. And the CEO of the company actually was very amenable to having that conversation and was uh, really kind in essentially telling me that I wasn't going to win this fight. But it was one that I had. He's like, you're rocking the boat and it's going to take on water. You need to stop. Yeah. <laughs> and a little the, bit. Yeah. One of the really cool things I like about the firm I'm with right now that's actually kind of unique to a lot of firms. So we have two managing partners that are the two primary equity partners. And all of the other partners kind of work side by side slash underneath quasi to these other partners. We're independent. We're good. But even every now and then we get clients that are yelling, not just at the associates, but at us. Very rarely do you have a managing partner step into the breach in between a client and their lawyer when the client's yelling at the lawyer. And for that managing partner to not immediately cast blame on the lawyer and side with the client. This partner jumps in. They're not in siding with the client. They're siding with the money. They, well, the but this partner, this partner doesn't. He jumps in. He's like, I trust them. And like, I trust what they say. They're my, they're my uh, partner. That's my associate. I'm sorry. We see a difference. You're gone. Like we'll boot the client immediately. Yep. And, and, and the good partners have a feel for the client management aspect of their jobs and can figure out when it's right to do that but it is a hard thing especially if you've got a a, a, a lot of pressure from the top down at the firm because oh, yeah. those partners are also having to hit their bogeys and getting in trouble at the other meetings that are above them uh so i i feel for all those positions i don't think the structure of a law firm is actually the most conducive to getting good client representation in all cases but mm -hmm. um you know, I, like I said, I left my old law firm because it wasn't working out for me. And because of a number of other reasons that I've told you all, I think, in stories on videos and whatnot, I, I had a conversation with a partner that closed the door uh, and said, at some point, you have to decide whether you're a firm man or a family man, it was like out of a Disney movie, like a, a bad Disney movie. And it's like, yeah. OK, I will. I, fine. And I went I, after that meeting, I went to my mentor partner and said, well, I am going I'm planning on leaving. It's going to take me a while to structure how that looks, but I'm I'm planning on leaving. Uh, and those are conversations that you have. Yeah. 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 Well, on the example of what not to do, let's go back to this. Not this. And to Hoag's point, I think the practice of law is going to have a massive restructuring as things it needs to grow yeah because it, it is too top heavy it is too expensive for most clients and i get it if you want to do like if you know bmw or whatever wants to still work with law the way that they do now but i think the traditional structure of this is the only way to do it is crumbling and it's going to continue to crumble because it's just not good for the client like the the inefficiencies that are built in are good for the money for the firm, but not good for the client. And that's going to shift. And there's well, a lot I, of, I don't, of young I don't lawyers know how many of like, you know, like we counsel and various other of these internet sites that have adapted to the internet age of people wanting to go and find even professional services by essentially mm -hmm. hosting a job request and then seeing who responds to it and what they want to do. And the Michigan ethics board a couple of years ago said that that was illegal because it was too close to solicitation um, in the ways that they don't like for lawyering. And I pitched a hissy fit on Twitter and said, this is, you know, ancient stone age stuff. And you're just protectionist trying to keep the bills up and all these various things. And I got a call the next day from the director of the state bar. And I was terrified. And what they actually said was we need more people like you to come onto a task force to start evaluating some of these rules, because we think the ethics thing is actually holding people back. I went on this task force. Uh, suffice it to say, it didn't work out. It didn't get the <laughs> changes or any even, even reform suggestions that I would have hoped to get about some of these rules in the professional rules of conduct. Uh, and in fact, most of the pushback from this was from what you would expect, big law firm attorneys essentially saying, no, we don't, we don't want those things to be in existence. We don't want clients to be able to go find lawyers through these various platforms, ostensibly because they're too susceptible to trickery and bad behavior. 
uh, and we need all these structures in place, right? And I, I, I fought tooth and nail against this, but like there is a lot of inertia in the legal field about any adoption of technology that we would consider old in like the 90s at this point. Yeah. Right now you have a fight with integrating email yeah. or or electro electronic filing is a huge issue right now. Yeah. Things that that would that reduce costs by the old it, days. It old days 5 years, years ago. ago. Yeah. That and that's what's like old days 5 years yeah. ago. Go ahead Ian, sorry. We had a local lawyer who um, he's retired now, but he was in a big fight with the prosecution because he's like, I don't accept disclosure except as physical paper. I don't know how to check my emails. I don't any of this. And so he was like, I'm not doing it. You got to you got to go along with me. And I'm like, or you could learn something. Yeah, but, that is uh, a, that is arguably an ethics rule. There are ethics rules that require you to be up to current market standard with most technologies. Yeah. And the the bar has finally started pushing that more, where it's basically saying, "I'm sorry, but we have e-filing, and that means that." So in the old days, and by old days I mean five years ago, I would have to prepare a filing, print it out, physically sign it, and then either a drive it to the courthouse myself and bill the client for that time, or b hire a courier to go and deliver the the filing to the courthouse and bill the client for the courier. I am 30 minutes away from the courthouse and that's non rush hour. And you're talking about a whole lot of money for me to print something. And not only that, but the efficiency yeah. is lost. Like I can be at my computer working for that two hours of time or that hour of time on other cases. And now I print a document, sign it, scan it, file electronically, and I'm done in five minutes. Yep. The client is billed 0.1 for that action not 1.1 for the back and forth. And I can go from that point one and immediately go to the next file and do the next thing I need to do. I'm sorry, but these the people that are still doing it that old way, you need to step up. Like you, you have to, you have an obligation to do that to your clients. You cannot just keep inefficiently billing the hell out of every case Get it to conclusion. I, I tell you what, if you get a case from start to finish clean, quickly, and efficiently, you will have more clients coming in the door than you know what to do with. Yep. Well, and I think the billing is part of the story with this uh, case that we're looking at that you're reading through. That attorney churn, the ridiculous one with like the 12 attorneys, that that's pumping a bill because you know that yeah. you're going to have to go through the let's call it orientation process yep. with each transfer you and you're going to run that entire return retainer the whole, without doing a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And when we compete, I compete against law firms right now where they get passed from associate to associate to associate. And at the end of the day, I am talking to the associate having the same conversation I did with their predecessor five attorneys ago. I'm like you wonder why we're not closer to settlement settlement because we're back here. Like, I'm having this discussion I had with your predecessor five months ago. Per Have all they of still my last emails. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Per his last email, which was, uh, I'm going to sue you. <laughs> For a million dollars. A million dollars. So where we left off was she was picking up the check, and the check was not there that day. On June 3rd, she was informed by someone at the... Uh, the law firm who was the assistant to the attorney that the attorney needed to review the file before issuing the refund. She was further advised the process would take approximately two weeks. Well, that seems a little bit later than the two weeks she was originally promised. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, she called the law firm on a weekly basis asking when she'd received a check. I would, <laughs> if not daily. One month later. <clears throat> oh, Oh, she did receive uh, a forward dated check. Wait, one yeah. month later, it's a check. No, it's not forward. That was dated June 19th, not July. On July 2nd, she oh, gets okay. a check June 19th in the amount of 1975.50. This is a trust account check. A trust account check. On three separate occasions, the client attempted 
to cash the check at the bank where the trust account was located. Yeah. And on each occasion, she was advised by bank staff that she could not do so due to insufficient funds. In this should year. happen approximately yeah. never in. <laughs> It's actually oh interesting. God. I I can't write checks. I can't write anything out of my trust account. I have to transfer it over to an operating account. Uh, yeah. Uh, checking account statements for the months of June and July for the checking account um, were provided by the bank pursuant to a subpoena deuces tecum issued by the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Show the following on June thirteenth, the date on which the check was written. That's a violation. Um, the response trust account had a balance of 87 cents <laughs> on, Ju on July 18th. Oh my God. The date on which the check was accepted by the bank for payment, the account balance was negative 171.19. Payment of said check caused an overdraft, which was covered by an overdraft protection transfer. The attorney's overdraft was not reported to the Virginia State Bar by the bank because it wasn't in IOLTA. Oh, right. IOLTA, one of the things you have to inform the bank, and I had this too. Ian and I have talked about this before. I had to teach my bank what an IOLTA was. Like oh, they God. went and they they put interest in the account, and I was like, oh, shit, now you got to report it. Um, And I had to teach them about what their obligations were when they had those funds. Right. The I bank don't care. I have these same conversations with a major national bank. It's pretty wild. My bank was actually a real sweetheart about it. It was like, I need a lawyer's trust account. And they're like, we know what that is and it'll be done. I so, was so surprised because this is national bank that I use. And I'm like, you have to have lawyers and law firms that are banking with you. I just need one of these. Yeah. So uh, the failure to promptly refund the unspent funds was a violation of rules. Violate, remember, violation rules 1.15 and 1.16. The failure to maintain sufficient funds in the trust account to cover the amounts constitutes a further violation of 1.15. The failure to ensure that his trust account was subject to insufficient funds reporting constitutes violation of 1.15. Further violations appear below. Now we're on the next client. The next client. Ms. Blank retained the law firm on December 19th, 2020, or 2013 to represent her for a personal bankruptcy. Uh, yeah. That's funny. Peg leg finance. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, bro. Account. Yeah. That's, that's a, that is a solid, <laughs> that is, that is worth pulling up. Uh, Ms. Client's bankruptcy was com complicated by her ownership of several properties, which she desired to surrender to the mortgage company. Well, if it's a complicated bankruptcy, one would expect a fee commensurate to the complication. Ms. Blank was charged 22. Oh, nope. We do not get what we expect. 2250 for the representation, which she paid in two installments. The final installment being paid on December 30th, 2014. She was first assigned an attorney, uh, Chad, uh, to represent her in preparation of filing for the bankruptcy petition. The client took the required credit counseling course. Uh, yeah, I, they have to take course before filing. Got it. Notwithstanding their clear representation to said attorney that she desired prompt filing of the bankruptcy, the attorney performed no significant work on the case. They don't on seem more like to do legal work. They were like, yeah, 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 we got you. Well, enter the repeating theme. On March 6th, the client was received an email from the lawyer advising her that he was leaving the law firm. <sighs> that her case would be assigned to another lawyer. Oh, God. Not this client one. promptly met with the new lawyer who advised her that he would file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy petition on her behalf. The client promptly completed the bankruptcy questionnaire provided to her by the lawyer and provided copies of all requested documents. On one more occasion, one or more occasions, the client attempted to schedule meetings with the lawyer, but when she arrived at the law firm, she was informed that the lawyer was not present. I feel on like July I need more detail 10, there. When you say attempted to schedule meetings, did you actually schedule meetings? Or did you I just know. It seems kind of odd. On uh, July 7th and again on July 21st, she sent emails addressed to blank and blank who identified herself to the uh, 
client as office manager with a copy to the managing partner, the lawyer, expressing her frustration at the slow pace of the preparation of her bankruptcy petition. On July 22nd, lawyer contacted client by telephone and informed her for the first time that he believed that she would not qualify for Chapter 7 under the means test guidelines. What? Well, that would have been... That would have been something that you kind of should have had in the first meeting and discussed. The very first discussion. Uh-huh. Yeah. So when client learned that the law firm could not file a Chapter 7, she informed the lawyer that she wanted to terminate the representation, refund, and get the file back. Little did Reasonable. she know. Little did she know that was not going to happen. Oh, dear. On July 28th, she spoke to... Uh, again, one of the assistants, and again requested a refund and the return of her file. This part, the return of the file. When a client says, give me my file, you don't have a choice. You give Depends it to them. Depends on jurisdiction, but yeah, generally. Y usually immediately. Immediately. You can write certain uh, things about good standing of their account, but yes. Yeah. It's theirs once they pay for it. Oh, yeah. ooh, Rick, 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 Rick. That that's that's actually something that the Virginia bar is very clear on. Even if they haven't yeah, I was paid for say, it yet, it depends on jurisdiction because some places do allow you to pull to, put a hold on a file. Even if they haven't paid for it in Virginia, you give it to them. Period. Well, I that's, think that's, that's still good business. Yeah, but but in Virginia, it's your ethical responsibility. You collect after you give it to them now. Yeah, you cannot withhold the file based on that. So. uh the law firm informed the client that it would take two weeks to receive the file and the refund because the respondent had to review the file. There's a theme here. Why, the same day, there, she said I feel that. like every time somebody asks for a refund, he's like running around out, you know, trying to collect like, you know, empty cans. And he's like, I got to pick up some cans to make right. some money. Or he's yeah. like, all the, all the refunds are being staggered by the two week deadline. So they don't all. Yeah. It they're just all not at the same time. Yeah. He's like donating or, to make the money. It's like, or there's another explanation entirely. Oh dear. Yeah. Well, what's I held off on reading this this for a while for a reason. Um of it's a lot. Did. Well, what's the important to remember from the client's perspective is they don't have the optics here of seeing that this is happening to everybody all at right. once. No, yeah. they, they only know that this guy is running them around. Right. And and all of these are overlapping. You go 2013, 14, 15. They're all overlapping each other. So the same day she sends an email to law firm with a copy to the attorney confirming the conversation. The client did not receive any response contradicting or contesting the facts of the confirmation email. She called the law firm two weeks later and was at that time informed that the lawyer was out of the country but that her file along with the invoice was on his desk for him to review and that she should call again the following monday no on fuck October you going out of the country give me my shit if you are at the point where you're like i am contemplating having to file for bankruptcy shit is not going well or smoothly and then to get fucked around by your lawyer is infuriating Yep. It's unforgivable on, uh, is what's going on here. Yep. On August 21, 2014, another email to the lawyer with a copy to the assistant checking in on the status of the promised refund, noting that on several occasions in the intervening period, she'd been promised that she would receive the full refund and the file within two weeks. She called and or emailed the law firm on multiple occasions thereafter and was informed that only the lawyer could write the refund check and that he would not be able to address the issue until he returned. <laughs> On whose money is he out of the country? If we get there. September 16th of 2014, client receives an email from the assistant stating that the attorney was still out of town. <laughs> We're just not going back into the jurisdiction at this point. Is he we'll actually like out of the country or is he just like hiding under the bed? I would be <laughs> returning the following Monday and would at that time contact her to advise when she could pick up file and the Are refund check going you know what i'm not back this week like i've never met a lawyer that takes regular vacation one and that just keeps extending vacation like at all yeah it's really hard as a lawyer to extend your vacation because 
You really, you really, you really can't. You can't. Yeah. Well, Why I, is my I, mod? I, is he in jail in another country? I have. Questions. Um, I have. I have a question for all of you. Why do our mods do this? Like they gift us stuff. Like you are moderating people. You are moderating. Excuse you don't, don't yell at your mods. If I'm, not yelling, I'm not yelling. Celebration of I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not yelling at my mods. I'm not yelling at my mods. I'm saying that. I, I, they are donating enough and giving enough as it is. Sandy, Sandra, Sandra gifted 50 memberships and then comes in to say, popping in while on vacation. You are on vacation, my dear. On People vacation. care about you, Rob. Mm -hmm. uh, How dare happy they? anniversary, happy 200K, and happy early birthday. Thank you, Sandy. And thanks to all the mods that keep this channel functioning. The gifted members um, are just like a birthday present. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's amazing. Mods are mods are pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. They're they're Accurate. for those of us that are that live stream. They uh, keep the entire channel kind of moving. Like we might be on screen, they are doing all the other like in the chat stuff to keep the channel going forward. Yeah. If you're in a chat and it's not full of a holes and spammers, it's thank the mods. Yeah, absolutely. It's a big deal. Yeah, mods are invaluable. Um, so as a result of the, uh, so she gets the refund check November 6th. As a result, uh, she files a complaint with the bar in yep. his response to the bar complaint. He provided a copy of the check in the amount of one, two, two, five drawn on the law firm account dated five August payable to the order. Uh, well, you wrote the check on August, 2014. It was not available to be picked up in cash until November 6th. Well, that's. That's a that's a funny lapse in time. The failure just, to provide the just a bad mailing process. <laughs> but it was it was it was a pick it was it was a picking up. There was no there was no mail. We didn't there was no USPS involved. None. Maybe he took it out of the country with him and then sent it back. <laughs> He's like, I actually needed to go to Japan to postmark this. So yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't know. Uh so the failure to, to give the refund was a violation of 1.15 and 1.16. Again, same things. He's responsible for the actions of staff. I so saw the emotional distress up there too. I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh further violations, further violations of 1.15 and 1.16. So two more. Um, the response submitted by the respondent on October 14th contained material representations of fact. Oh, dear. Misrepresentations of fact. That's not good. So this is the first time we see 8.1 and 8.4C. A, respondent falsely represented that a refund check had been sent out to Miss Client. Said the check was not sent out until well after the date of said response and was not received by Miss Client until on or about November 6th. So or sorry, said check. check after they responded to the bar saying we'd already sent it. Yeah. Yeah, lying to the yeah. bar is um it's a choice, but it's not what we call um a good choice. Yeah, and we, we talked about 8.4 being the catch-all umbrella, you shall not do bad things. C is the you don't lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is a big one. Uh, the response further constitutes a material misrepresentation of fact in that it wrongfully asserts that the respondent, the attorney, was not aware of her complaints due to his being out of the country for a period of months. Months? Months? In what world? Well, in fact... The attorney has acknowledged that during that period of time he was out of the country, he was in daily contact with his office by telephone and email and received updates on all pending cases from his associates. Uh -huh. He said that to the bar to bolster his attentiveness, his uh, supervisory yep. capacity. Right. Through the course of the investigation conducted as a result of the bar complaint, it was determined that even if the funds paid by Ms. Blank, client, in furtherance of the representation were initially deposited into the trust account, they were not maintained in a manner provided by the Rule 1.15. The violations include, on multiple occasions, we've done this, it dropped below the 2250. Yeah, okay, it drained it. Mm -hmm. On multiple occasions, the trust account had negative balance with funds being deposited by the overdraft protection. 
Okay. The money was just circulating freely out of the country. Yep. This is like a mystery so, novel where it's not you're trying to solve a murder. You're just trying to solve what the actual fuck. <laughs> well, there, and, and, and the actual fuck at the end is is just no. I can't wait. Yeah. No, um, Rick, Rick, I see you. We're going we're gonna to get to, I'm going to get to the end and we'll get, we'll let you go. Promise. So uh, they say, they issue subpoenas to the respondent saying, give us the documents. Surprise, he does not. He asks for additional time. He gets additional time. He fails to give documents. After he fails to respond to the subpoena, the council writes to him saying, hey, they're going to give me these documents results in you getting noncompliance and request for suspension. And he goes, okay, here are some documents. But he remained in noncompliance, so he didn't give them all the documents. March 19th, 2015, they forwarded to him and to his attorney the notice of noncompliance and request for interim suspension. Thereafter, he did, he did comply substantially with the subpoena and represented through counsel. He provided all documents in his possession, custody, and control. They did not include cash receipts, journals, cash disbursement journals, or any ledgers that you have to maintain for trust accounts. So they convene and they ask for all these other things for all the cases. Additional subpoena, more documents, and he just doesn't comply. Nah, not going to do it. Ask for extension. Cool. Doesn't do it. Keeps on going. Then he requests a hearing on the matter, and the hearing was set for August 28th. Four days before the hearing, he did finally provide the documents in partial compliance. It takes so, a long time to scrub your documents, folks. It, it, it does. Not a um, Yeah. I mean, if you've got a lot to hide, you really got to really dive deep. Use all that detail orientation you weren't using on your client's jobs. So uh, no documentation, and they hit him with a violation of 1.15 again. Then they issue additional subpoenas, um, more overdrafts. So um, Ian, would you mind real quick, read that part? Um, starting at 143, account statements provided by SunTrust Bank pursuant to the subpoena deuces tecum revealed that there were numerous incidences of overdraft on the account identified as censored for being naughty. Client's trust account, checking account number also censored, with said overdrafts having been paid through an overdraft protection. In fact, between the months of July 2013 and February 2015, there were over 75 instances on which the daily trust account collected balance showed a negative balance, meaning that there was an effective overdraft to said trust account on each of those days. Holy crap! He should have um, had the relationship Murdaugh had with his bank because Palmetto State Bank was just like, here's more cash, boo-boo. Like he needed all the money to pay his overdraft fraud. fees. Yeah, he didn't fraud all the way right. 75 I, instances. Wow. Yeah, people sleep. I I don't know because I would be worried that the law society was like physically waiting in my closet to beat me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The 75 part. So 75 is a number. Yes. Um, when How the number is like zero. Period. I feel like Sorry. it's all the Hang numbers. On. It was the days were July 2013 until February 2015. So what is that? Uh, 12. And then are you an additional panel of lawyers to math. Or yeah, I'm going to ask you that's, that's, uh, 19, like 19, like months, 19 months, 19 months, it's 19 months. <laughs> 19 I, months. You know, in fairness, Rob, that's impressive. I would have had to count that out on my fingers. 19 months. I did. I, okay. I gave up. Before. I don't have 19 fingers to count that out on. <laughs> oh, no, you got it. You got to go back to the first one. It's a whole thing. Um, Yeah. So, it, well, it gets worse. The statement it's showed that. Not. Between the occasions the trust account was below zero, or just none of them reported the bar. So another violation. So multiple circumstances where checks and or credit card purchases were made. Oh, and this part. Yeah. To where the money went. I told you we would get here. I told Thank you. you. Thank you. I told you. A yeah. review of the trust account further revealed multiple circumstances where checks and or credit card 
purchases. One, why is a credit card tied to the trust account? Yeah, that's I right. don't even. How does the bank run this trust account? There's there's checks being made. They and didn't. A no, no. Really, no they, they, Rick, they never. It was never told to the bank. The bank had no idea this was an IOLTA. They were treating it like an operating account. So it's an operating account that has uh, that is has the word trust written on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just uh, signs so, it out as like it's a you trust know. account. <laughs> yeah, like 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 uh, as uh, uh, as was said earlier, bro. like yeah. trust trust me, bro account. Trust me, bro account. Solid line from Peg Leg Finance, who has a great channel. This uh -huh. is and uh, John era. Smith. John Smith, <laughs> you John Smith, you did not predict this. Rick, Rick, about an hour ago predicted this. Now it, it, wait a minute. We've got Office Rent, we've got Broadway.com, we've got Miami and a Miami nightclub. I don't see strip club here. It was a liquor store and a nightclub. I mean, come on, man. That's about as close as you get. As they well as hotel and a restaurant purchases. These are purchases from a credit card tied to the trust account. I want to know what show it was. Um, Tom Girardi <laughs> spent $750,000 directly out of a client trust account for earrings. That's true. Well, you see, if this were later on, though, if this were closer to our time frame, there would be Taylor Swift tickets here. Probably. Well, they were so expensive. Yeah. She premiered her music video today on YouTube and got like a custom premiere intro. And I was like, ooh, that's awesome. The custom. You're like, I want this. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, is that being added to your list, Emily? Well, I was like, I want custom intros for premieres. I thought it was amazing. I was like, it's possible. And then had like 500,000 people on the premiere. It was crazy. Anyway. <laughs> I yeah, knew it was big because so, uh, I got told that her albums dropped today. So, yep. You I mean the album out. that that had more downloads in twelve hours than all downloads like throughout the year? Yeah. I may not be a Swifty, but I like Taylor Swift music. So, you're not going to hear me arguing. Yeah. So, um, during the time that all of the checks are bouncing to the various clients, he's using the client trust account to uh, buy tickets. Right. Go to a liquor store in Miami and, and then go to a nightclub in Miami and pay for food and hotels. Um, his failure to attend even the most basic provisions of the rules of professional conduct regarding maintenance trust account demonstrates a reckless attitude regarding the protection of client funds and thereby creates a substantial risk of harm. Kind of a restrained statement. Wait, wait, Ian, can you rephrase that statement so it accurately reflects the needed amount of shade? Here, I'll highlight it for you. Um, let's see. Respondent was given a guide to how to accomplish things and appears to have used it as a guide of for what to avoid on account. And our leading theory on this is that he is a chuckle fuck. That is. <laughs> I can't wait because you haven't read the next paragraph yet, have you? <laughs> nope. Good. The respondent admitted in his testimony that he opened various accounts at various financial institutions, some operating accounts, and some intended to be, but not qualifying as trust accounts, and moved money among the accounts specifically for the purpose of evading overdue tax obligations and potential IRS Oh, he's, he's kiting his, um, Go to he's jail. kiting his tax obligations? Now, Emily, you know that the state bar can't send you to jail. Jail. Um, the they, can, can. they can help. <laughs> let me hang on hang on for those of you that did not hear yeah. that because everyone's mind was exploding <laughs> let me read that again and this was this was this was rob burying the lead this is me burying the lead yes in the testimony in the did testimony. he end up doing jail no um he <sighs> admits in his so he admits in his testimony so he real. testifies to this Bro, that he I opened would plead the fifth on that that's gonna well, come back he, around yeah. He didn't that he opened various accounts at several financial institutions, some operating accounts and some intended to be, but not qualifying as trust accounts and moves money among those accounts specifically for the purpose of evading overdue tax obligations and potential Whoa. IRS liens. Go to jail. Yeah. yeah that, thinking that, about it like I am, which is you can't, you can't actually Take me to jail. This isn't oh, they, they can. Is, well, the, the the bar can't. The bar can't. Uh, just in the document no, that we're but, reading, I'm 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 trying to get in this guy's head, right? Because it's like, why would you 
testify to this and you're trying to explain to the bar it's like you had a quote unquote good reason for doing this i was trying to protect my client money from tax obligations and irs liens by going to see shows on broadway (laughs) and liquor stores in miami Miami was good for the mental health, apparently. But Emily, so, I was taking the IRS agent to the show and to the Miami nightclub. The thing but, that Tom Girardi perfected was you got to bribe him before you get in trouble. So he laid that groundwork ahead of getting in trouble. So for those that were keeping score, let's let's okay. see how he did. So misconduct. We have 1.3, 1. 1. 1.4, 1. 1.5, 1.15. Uh, all the subsections of 1.15, all of 1.15, including the thes. It would have been faster for them to list the things he didn't violate. Yeah. 1.16, all of the sections of 1.16, 3.4, 5.1, 5.3, 8.1, 8.4, and the dispo. The dispo is upon the commencement of the second day of the hearing, the respondent by his counsel conceded that he did not properly maintain his trust account and trust records in conformance with the rules and was in violation of those rules related to his trust accounts. Well, when you put it like that, guys, I guess it looks bad. I mean, it kind (laughs) of, but why'd you testify to the things? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Upon evidence, numerous witnesses presented on behalf of the Virginia State Bar and upon evidence presented by the respondent in the form of his own testimony and witnesses on his behalf, At the conclusion of the evidentiary regarding misconduct, the board recessed to deliberate after due deliberation. (laughs) The deliberation in this case (laughs) was... So, this guy should go fuck himself, right? Yep. Yeah. 20 second deliberation. Yeah, Yeah, that, 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 uh, Murdoch, that Murdoch guilty verdict was... was My fastest guilty verdict, and I've had guilty verdicts in like under 15 minutes. This was just like, so we're done here. Yes. Well, how many, I'm sorry, pause. How many rules are we determining that were violated? It's like, okay, so it's going to take them longer to count up the violations than it will to determine the violations. Anyway. Yeah. One defense lawyer uh, was talking about how badly their trial went because the judge actually had to tell the jury that they at least had to leave the room before they could have <laughs> a verdict. <laughs> <laughs> So, so here's so so the bar fails to prove all of them and they 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 note their displeasure and they say we we failed to prove because here's the standard clear and convincing evidence of violation. So a couple of these things they said the uh modus operandi threatening suit so they were unhappy. Um clear and convincing lack of supervision of the subordinates eh, okay. But they did prove so these are the following violations that they proved safekeeping so this, property this is what i was talking about right so they, they kick the three fours they kick some of the stuff that's like you're going to threaten lawsuits and that's extortative mm-hmm. yeah because, they kick some because of that. disciplinary boards don't like to uh get lawyers on the kind of judgment-based ones right, but stealing money they're going to nail uh-huh. into the wall like this one like 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 the safekeeping property and declining representation yeah um, the diligence, uh-huh. Communication, uh-huh. Safekeeping property, yep. Declining representation, misconduct, 8-4. So they get them on an 8-4 here. Uh, fees, yep. Uh, safekeeping property. So wait, hang on. I have to tally. Hang on. Um, one. Do we count the subsections or just the main? Just the main, right? I mean, each sure. one's a violation, isn't it? That's true. So it, subsections, one, two. So wait, so that's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Can we just say he's collecting the whole set at this point? <laughs> three. They're not catching them all. 25, 26, 27, Thank you, right? Twenty-eight. <laughs> 29, 30. You seem to think that they're Pokemon. <laughs> 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. I mean, if we get to 100. <laughs> Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 43. Oh man, he was just so close to the nice round 50. 
bingo? It, 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 yeah. it, it would have been close. Um, so is that a high score or uh, yeah. no? Do they not have do they not have a leaderboard? <laughs> <laughs> so this this results That's in leaderboard. the the first permanent disbarment since like Bob McDonald that was the uh accepting money and bribes. Hmm. That's oh, your bullet no, there, yeah, Rob. It, it, well, the, the, the chat's going. That's that's wait, hang on. Wait, where was it? Yeah, more violations than I've been alive. More than my age. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that gets appealed to the Supreme Court of Virginia. The Supreme Court of Virginia says no. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we're like in, in a seven in a 17 page opinion, they were like, no, we're good. No, <laughs> we're right. fine. Uh, you're good. Yeah, I, I there's 17 pages for a for a group court like that is nothing. The odd, just the audacity to even be like, and you know what, I'm appealing it. Like, what are after that testimony? What are you doing? I, I, I also do your job. Where are you? And we know uh, we know from the top of that document, right, that he was uh, he was representing himself to start out with, and then went yeah. went back and said, I'm going to need some counsel. Which uh -huh. means he probably thought everything was going to be fine until mm -hmm. he walked into that room and somebody was like, you are not fine, sir. You there's need there's to reassess. There's a line that gets repeated in the Supreme Court decision where it basically says that's what overdraft protection was for. <laughs> like he, he 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 said that, yes, he understood that, but that's why the overdraft protection was there. No, like completely missing the premise of mm. a no b no what the fuck <sighs> so was that worth holding on to i think it was that was good that oh rob i'm sorry you had to deal with that guy as your starting point for everything but you know what that's when i said that like that's what taught me how not to be a lawyer that gave me the example of what not to be yeah that that I is wanted... a good <laughs> yeah it's funny because i have i have talked about my big law experiences but they have so many structures in place that i essentially had to destructure a few things when i started my own firm because they were over the top for what is a, a small flexible practice uh and so i i learned about like the iolta representations and everything else uh to the nth degree like as a nation state yeah i knew in law school that that wasn't going to be for me so um billable hours nope iolta accounts also nope so <laughs> I, I, you know, it was either that or in-house counsel. Like I was, that, that was never going to be my thing. Yeah. I, it Very is the scary. worst thing yeah. or it is one of the worst things about lawyering. Yeah. yeah, no. Um, especially because sometimes you'll see lawyers get into a world of crap when they have been the victim of a crime, but insufficiently careful about not being a victim. So like they hire an assistant and the really big one is they have they have a stamp that is their signature, and the assistant is just like, "I'm going to stamp me some checks." Yeah, and I then the lot. lawyer gets into a world of crap. I had a number of victims who were lawyers um, with the office embezzlement cases uh, at the DA's office. It was a mess, absolute mess. And you never get that money back. Like it's not like they take it and like buy gold and just store it in a safe mark in case I get caught and need to repay this. Oh, no, and they're not planning a retirement account. They're going to Vegas. Well, at least in LA, they were going to Vegas. They were going to Vegas, so yeah. In um, Virginia, apparently, they're going to Miami. Miami. They are. <laughs> I know that that uh, our dear Rick, who is up, it is 1126, sir. I am remarkably proud of you. I know that that, that sounds condescending. You know it's not. I am not taking it as condescending. I am a little bit chagrined that, yeah, I feel like I'm about to pass out, but I really appreciate being here. So thank you for having me and exposing me to the wonderful world of bad legal <laughs> representation. <laughs> I do, as a side note, feel a little bit more positive 
about my legal representation. Uh, as as Rob See? knows, I sat in his house and talked about some of the things I've talked about with folks on my channel, which is that after the stroke, I've had a certain amount of post-stroke anxiety. And one of those things that comes up again and again is I want to do the best for my clients. I want to perform good services. I want to be of value to them. And while I feel badly for everybody involved in everything that we just read on the client side, it does make me feel a little bit better of about the fact that I am paying attention to the right things and doing my damnedest, but I don't want to and, make a mistake. And caring about the right things. Like you, you are putting everything you have in the right boxes. Like, yeah, don't, don't you dare. I know that saying that doesn't mean anything, but don't you dare question yourself as far as what you are giving to that client. Cause I know damn well that you're giving everything you got. And it's a whole lot more than what they can expect from just about any other lawyer they're going to run into. You are a hundred percent right that I'm giving them everything I got. I just, I, the voice in my head that says you're not good enough is stronger than it used to be. Oh, Rick, you're talking to all the yeah. neurospices. We've been dealing with that since we were kids. I get it. Yeah, that's, you're, that's you're for damn sure. Liar, and they're sometimes kind of a dick. It's not real. Yes, um, they are. But it's awful um, when your head decides to be an asshole. Before you jump off, Rick, sure. I'm going to do a plug. And it's for someone that I had the great pleasure of encountering, MLS God of Law. And he says, okay, EDB can come on and do a Lego stream, but only after Ian. David brought me on to do a really cool stream where he interviewed me while I was building a Lego set. And the Lego set I made was the Lego set from the movie Up. Um, probably one of the coolest concepts in the world because the chat is getting you at like a place where your brain, at least for me, was occupied on building Legos. So all of the information was just pouring out. I love the concept the uh, dialogue was phenomenal. And if you guys ever have the opportunity, not a pressure thing, and David's not asking it's a pressure thing, I'm sure that he would be very much appreciative of any of you joining and building some Legos and having a chat with the chat. There's a D&D really cool. Lego set that's hard to acquire. <laughs> uh, D &D? Apparently, Torin yeah. tried to build that. It's a, No, he tried to build a Japanese village Lego set. Uh, I have a, a I have a Pac-Man arcade machine Lego set that has to get built soon. They look Ooh, so yeah. cool. They move. I've seen. I'm them. really excited about it. I have to get it built. It is sitting in my uh, room. They look very cool. My nails make Lego building a little bit challenging. I bet. Although I'd like to have you help me remove Legos from each other. I don't use them as tools. You need the Lego remover. There's like a yoinker tool. This this this. I learned about this thing. I didn't know this was a thing. Oh, they're so good. Oh, it's magnificent. Yes. I didn't know that they now sell Legos in books. Like the, it's like a book. Does that start so with comes now? Like what kind of book is that? If you what ever kind of feel bad about yourself about? as a lawyer, there is this book. Not spicy. Um, Got it. It is Canadian, um, but it's money, sex, and madness in Canada's legal profession. Maybe spicy. Is it, a, is, it, is, it, is it a novel or is it like a, a, a it's book? It's a book? series of basically what, case you? studies fairy tales um one of the people there i heard a little bit of background of additional background on but basically um he was apparently telling an underage client that he might be willing to do things to waive her fees well that's and a, that's a choice the so she let the police yeah. know and the police find him like she goes to meet him at a hotel room and basically says, get yourself ready. I'll be right back, which is, of course, code for <laughs> you're about to get raided. And um, the cops burst in as he's pulling his pants back up. So, um, you know, Ian, I Ian, feel like there's you know, always we, worse to, to be. <laughs> we we reached this fun part of the stream where we're in a very <laughs> positive vibe. Like we, we have we have accomplished something that is so difficult in the world of law, which is to find this this ecosystem of joy and happiness and and you hold Are you up saying a i'm book. wrecking it you hold up a book that <laughs> by its first glance at the top you're going huh that could be a spicy lawyer novel and then I'm ready for that you 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 do the next part you knocked emily out rob <laughs> i i it, it, that's not my fault that was Ian. i need <laughs> another one. Oh no it's fine 
Oh no, Emily's getting a book. Emily's getting a damn book. Oh, she's getting a book. <laughs> I packed my books. I think it's a regular book, this? actually. Rick, you can you can you can jump anytime you want, my friend. I know it's late. Maybe I know we'll I am going to bounce. Though. I don't I just don't wanna I don't want Emily to think I'm just evacuating while she's gone. She'll be, she'll, she'll be back in like two seconds. She's yelling, hang on. There, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> that you know that's it's, delightful it's, it's it's the look of shame on rick's face as he suddenly nods his head with a small smirk i miss <laughs> that so much i miss that it, it's my favorite <laughs> i also have a book i have lots of other books i have a stack of books um but what i've been ranting about all week is mostly you, you have a, you have a stack of books I have you stack. have a stack of paper right now a stack, it's a stack, a stack of criminal procedure wood. evidence and and civil procedure but I also have tag book daddy stack snap self snitching. Oh, book. God. I've got all of my evidence books of the book of don't snitch on yourself. The example <laughs> of how to self snitch. No, how to hit the behind the doors of justice. Courthouse Becky. Did you read it? Wait, I want to see. No, show me. Show me the stem. No, show I haven't read it. Nope. Okay. It, okay. It, it, it's an evidence. Uh, it's CPD. Yep, got How it. How to get arrested for murdering Tupac in a book? What's the stem? What's the stem <laughs> of that one look like? Oh no, I did this one on Audible. It's okay. it's only here for demonstrative purposes. Uh, there's another one. Where's my other one? Oh, I don't know where it is. I don't have Corey Richens' book, but you know. Oh God. So. Yeah. No. No. Oh, so um. Book we have to, we have to, we have to let Rick go. Rick, Sorry, right. it is past your bedtime, my friend. And that that was not condescending. It was just an acknowledgement that you asked me that you had to go about Rick forty has minutes ago. Back there now. I see. Oh, 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 yes. Uh, uh, um, as well as board games. I so see. The don't give me too much credit. <laughs> Ooh, which um, I just got a new board game, uh, Wolves. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a bunch of unmatched game. stats. If you guys don't know, Restoration Games is one of my favorite board gaming companies. Not the least of which because it is a gaming company that was founded by a lawyer that didn't want to practice law anymore. I love that. Um, lawyers are so creative. Rick. We uh, find all on, the ways to not be lawyers anymore. <laughs> on, on, the, uh, on the bookshelf over your right shoulder, every one of those books, the blue, the blue stem and the, the little red highlight and the brown stem, you haven't opened those in about, uh, what is it now, 20 years? Uh, close, getting close. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I've showed you my my microphone stand before, haven't I? No. There are times. No. no. Had, Tell me, it's one else. Yeah, it's law books. It's Black's Law Dictionary because it's a good. <laughs> 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 I wish I had kept my one L books. I got rid of them when I moved, and I regret it now. I've never regretted getting rid of anything, but I regret getting rid of my 1L books. I really oh, do. That, that made my night. It's amazing. Oh, you're muted now. You killed your mic. You killed you, your mic. You might have unplugged your mic. Wait, hang on. I, I might have unplugged my mic. I was just yeah. saying that I still have my little notes in these various books yeah. that say uh, P and Delta and everything else. <laughs> yeah. I wish I'd kept yeah. them. <laughs> That's delightful. <laughs> Fantastic. Rick, thank you so much. I just don't um, want people to think I'm sitting here uh, as a rich lawyer. I got my my constitutional law book is my mic stand. Uh, <laughs> keeping it real, folks. Keeping it real. Keep your <laughs> one books around. Yeah, I should have. I wish I had. I was like, I never am going to want these. And occasionally now I do. I'm like, no. No. I do. I'm so excited. I one of my one, one of my <laughs> members told me the other day that they are going to Michigan Law School. Because uh, they've enjoyed my content and talking to law tubers all over. And they are going to my alma mater because Michigan law is great. Go blue, national champions. And on that, I'm going to say good night. Congratulations, Rob. You deserve every bit of it. Thank you, Rick. Thanks for being here, bud. Good Love chatting you, with Emily you. And good to see you, Rick. You. Always a pleasure. I always feel bad when somebody's like, you, ins <laughs> weird. you inspired yeah. me to go to law school because I'm like, 
I'm sorry. Oh, I I <laughs> hope that's not a bad choice. Like, I hope you don't have some feelings about that later. Well, that's the next, like, favorite part about making this channel. The favorite thing I have drawn from this channel, like, personal, like, uh, satisfaction, has been the people that are like, I have ADHD. Or my yes. son or my daughter has ADHD. And yeah. they have teachers that come up to them and say, you'd never do this or blah, 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 or you should think of an alternate career path or how are you going to do this? One, two, three, right there. One, two, three, you got three lawyers on the screen that all have different career paths. You have a prosecutor, retired prosecutor, you have a public def or a defense attorney, and you have a civil litigator or a divorce lawyer. So you have three people that had massive neurodivergency like the ADHD levels on this screen right now are, we are, <laughs> know, we are, we are clinical. I think we're clinical by now. I am medicated um, and I've had whiskey. We're good at the moment. <laughs> uh, but you have to agree, Emily, like the favorite, my favorite thing in the world yep, is when people say, I now feel like I can do this. Or yep. I was worried because the teachers at my son's school we're saying they couldn't do this and you gave me the courage to push back or you taught me new tricks on how to help my son understand these things or daughter or, or yeah. Yeah. Guys, I it, it somebody should not and cannot hold you back. I had somebody who said that their high school kid was doing much better because they showed them like us and that their kid was like, Oh, I guess there is something after this that isn't like prison. Yeah. So <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's finding the thing that you enjoy. Like it's, it's finding the thing that you enjoy and that you want to do. And there's no one way to do it. And there's no, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, but there's no limitations on it. And, and even now, like assistive technology is so much better than it was. Awareness is so much better than it was. My kids, yeah. teachers, especially, um, his younger teachers are so accommodating and they're, they're oh not, gosh, it's amazing. Technology. It's amazing. They're just like, Oh, you do better when you listen to music? Fine. Oh, you do better when you um, speech to text? Fine. Oh, you need to read your math problems out loud while you do your test? Fine. You can take your test alone so you can read stuff out loud and process it through speaking. It's it's getting and, and better. Emily, I caught your stream a little bit earlier today where you're talking about uh, white pages, black text. Mm-hmm. I am a kinetic learner. I learned that in law school where I actually have to perform a function in order to learn. I cannot simply read and learn. I cannot simply hear and learn. Right. I have to actually do something kinetically with my body to ingrain that. But um, reading, I can't learn. So what I would do was I would take um, highlighters or colored pens and I would turn my homework into an art project. Mm-hmm. Where I bet was that was popular. But it was it was highlighting or it was writing code sections or things that I had to memorize in different colors based on what the word was. So a statute's elements, right? When I would when I would get to the the precursor of the statute, what it was about, right? It would be in one color. Then we get to the elements, and I would write the elements in a different color. And then I would get to the conjuncture, the the and or the or, and I would write that in a different color. When I turned it into an art project and wrote it out. Yeah, that action, that was how it stuck up here. How far we have come in our understanding of how the brain works in neurodivergency mm -hmm. is remarkable. We now are approaching kids at a level and we have technology that can back it up where the tech can help the kids perform these functions at a rate that is 20 times faster than we could. Yep. And they know what the issue is. Do not ever let anyone say that you have ADHD or some form of neurodivergency and it, it, it holds you back or precludes you from a position or a job. Don't. You can do that. Absolutely. Yep. It's just find it. It's finding the thing. And there's so many more. The awareness of what the thing is has gotten so much better. So you're getting solutions offered at younger and younger ages for kids. And that's been absolutely fantastic um, because my mom would be like, stop studying with the TV on. And I would be like, I like what? 
because it's necessary. <laughs> I, there has to be something on. So yeah, always. I'm going to burn through a few super chats. I'm sure there'll be questions. I have read that 39. How do you guys do that? Like I talk all day for work. And by the end of the day, after reading pleadings like that, like I am dying and not to mention the pollen right now, mm -hmm. anyone else dying? Pollen doesn't kill me, but, but I also, I mean, we're just <laughs> going to do a rundown of my desk. Water number one, water number two, water number three, water number four for the colder water. And then I have two different throat sprays in my office to make sure my throat doesn't get dry. I also have two different, I have a vocal mist that I use. And then there's another like breather that singers use that I use because I was in better shape vocally when I was doing trials all the time. And then when I took a break from that streaming all day long, um, I was noticing my voice was getting kind of dry and tired. And I was like, we're not doing this going into eight weeks of trial. So I have all of them. The, the worst is like trial and then coming back from trial and then streaming and trying to talk. I bought that because you recommended it. I have it's it somewhere in your, it needs to be on your desk and use it. Yes. You got to stay hydrated. Yeah. You know, you got to keep the throat lubed. Well, that uh, sounds like an entirely different product. <laughs> it goes back to the bad lawyers books becoming a spicy. <laughs> Kathy Chow, Fantastic. I believe this lawyer was watching a racket stream and drinking with him. Well, we've all been there at some point or not. Uh, Julie wasn't prior looking for help a few months ago. He was, and that was a whole ass thing. Prior in the uh, prior in the um, Daybell. Oh, the defense attorney. Defense attorney. Yep. Uh, yeah, Alex and Wilson. that's that's one of the things I'm wondering about because the uh, the lawyer says like they reached out to me, and both sides wanted it sealed. At first, I thought they wanted it sealed because it might be like Sovsit stuff. Now I I'm wondering if they wanted it sealed there. because it might. They say that they want it sealed through the entirety of the trial. I'm wondering if it has um, something like privilege issues with it. It might. So oh. I don't know. Like, what kind of crazy is this? Tell us. We, <laughs> we really want to know. We really want to know. I told you, Emily. It's there. Like the yeah. There's a, the spray thing. Yeah. So chat um, is the one. I like Entertainer's Secret, which is what it's called. You get it on. Um, on Amazon, it's a horse throat spray. I also have Clear Voice, which is a little bit more of a spray. Those are yeah. two that I like. <laughs> Hogue is in the chat saying, <laughs> making jokes about my throat lube. You read that situation correctly, Hogue. <laughs> uh, Alex Wilson, my Adobe oh, is a bed. chatty too. Any chirps? Yeah, seriously. Um, however, it was really awesome. Like, I know that he has been. Like mm -hmm. live streams are something he's he's getting back into, and honestly, the hesitation shouldn't be there, man. I watched his F, his uh, hangouts and headlines the other day. He's firing on all the cylinders. I get the self conscious thing, I do, but for all the support you guys can give him in the chat, please go do it because he's gonna have that self doubt for a while. Like, go reinforce it. He's, it's amazing. You can't. You mean the other way? <laughs> what? You, you don't want reinforce to reinforce the self-doubt. <laughs> no, not the self-doubt. Reinforce him. Like, yeah. no, no, not the self-doubt. Reinforce positivity. Like, go encourage. Yes. Thank you, Ian and Emily. <laughs> no, Rick. Um, I get that. Rick's like, I don't want to miss the fun. I get it. it. Rick just makes the rest of us self-conscious that we're not as smart as he is. So <laughs> it's fair. Legit. Rick, both ways. <laughs> he, he approached that disbarment like way more logical. Like he was, he was looking at the rules and I was like, oh, no, buddy, we're going to go off the rails real quick. <laughs> no, I have commentary. Here's here's my logical approach. Fuck this guy. Can he go to jail? <laughs> and Hoag's like, actually, yeah. this rule needs to be refined because <laughs> it's a little it's a little too vague and it is a problem. And I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's so, it's so, it's this so guy. <laughs> wonderfully analytical. And I was like, oh no, Rick, this is going so like, sideways so fast. Like <laughs> we're gonna lose analytical in like two seconds. No, it's um, perfect it was, because it's like the the two baseball commentators. You've got the one who's like, this is this person's 9,000th out of bat, and they're yeah, running a yeah. 
stats of this and this and that. And, you, and then you have the color commentator being like, but I think he's got new shoes today. That's <laughs> It was great. Uh, John Common, and you were skinnier, skinnier in that video too. Yes, that is absolutely true. In what video? That is what, uh, in my very first video. Oh, the breaking the bed video. The video that one. started it all. <laughs> yep, I was skinnier in that video. Yeah, that's what stress, relationships, and more stress does to you. Uh, but also, I'm happier now than I was in that video. So it's fair the trade. The number of lawyers who um, are end up like either getting fatter or skinnier, but just like some sort of stress motivated change is mm -hmm. like lots. Um, yeah. So yeah, one lawyer, um, like she just shrank down and it was like, oh, people are like, you're doing great. She's like, I yeah. am too stressed to eat. And like, this is a problem. Uh, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's me like mid trial. Like I will eat a granola bar a, like a day. Cause I will not think to eat. Yeah. Yeah. This um, is not uncommon at the DA's office where we, um, one of the first DA's I worked with was like, look, just keep your suits in different sizes because it's going to fluctuate. And depending on how long you're in trial, you will drop sizes and your suits will not fit. It was fantastic advice. It's not healthy. It's not good for you. In fact, it is very, very bad, but it was actually very true depending on how long the trial was. So, and we, we try, but we we're bad at, <laughs> at that. We're sort of bad thing. at, uh, at self-regulation. Yeah, yeah. 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 Trial diet should not be Cheetos and a Coca-Cola, but sometimes that's what's for life. And kind of is, is the only meal of the day. So you're just yeah. like, is what I, I mean, mean. One of the lawyers that I worked with when I was, you know, a junior lawyer, I had a like three day trial and he showed up like on day two of that and was like, I know you're stressed, but we are going for lunch right now because I don't think you've been eating. And I was like, accurate. Trying to like, eat. Yep. So he's just like, yeah, you can you can bring your stuff. You can read it. But we are doing this at a restaurant and like that's happening right now because it's it's necessary. And I still appreciate that because it was a big help. The ADHD aggravates that, too, because there's definitely times where you're just like, I just need to get this done and I cannot stop until it's done. And if that takes five hours then it takes five hours, if it takes 10, it takes 10. But I am not moving until this is done. Like oh, yeah. whatever the thing is. Uh -huh. I get there all the time. Um, Elena uh, Bussamas, a look at January 12th court hearing concerning John Pryor. I will have to look into that. I can't do that now, though. It's a celebratory late night stream. Yeah, it's it's kind of late. I can't I can't do it now. Uh, Leandra, this is what is said before every bad decision. Um, I think <laughs> Ian has a short, short story to share. Those are good decisions. <laughs> they they are. They very much are. Um, oh, Jason Heath, I wish I could. Have, I wish I could pull this up. Uh, happy birthday, Rob Hogue. Is Lawyers and Dragons coming back? I hope oh, it does. I really do. Yeah, it, it was so much fun. Uh, Vez, law is a late career. I was a jazz player, jazz bass player before. Oh wow, oh, that's awesome. I freaking love that. Mm -hmm. musicians make good lawyers i have found in my experience a lot Brianna of lawyers Pinkman. are very musical like i know a yes. lot of lawyers that have lawyer bands that play guitar that uh, most of the lawyers i know have hobbies or hobbies they wish they had more time for because lawyers yes. i have found are tremendously creative people um and then they went into law and then they use law as a way to be creative with their arguments but they are innately creative the Part other thing is if you're applying for law jobs, a lot of the time they'll use like the initial grades as the filter. But after that, they're looking at your interest to be like, is this somebody I'm going to want to stab myself in the eyeball with a chopstick if I have to hang out with this person? Yep. And if all of your interests are law, it's like, oh, right. This person is going to suck to talk, of, talk to. Mm -hmm. um, the person who does who has a band, you could talk to them about how their band is doing like. You want to hire someone you'd actually like to spend a little time with because you're going to spend a lot of time with them. A lot. Athletes, too. Lots of athletes in law. Um, Brianna Pinckney, a few minutes behind because toddler, but wanted to share how important it is to advocate for your health. Absolutely. 
dealt with migraines for over a decade and finally saw a doctor and my MRI came back abnormal. I knew I wasn't crazy. Brianna, you're not crazy the, and it's not yeah. hormones. See women, the doctor. Like, oh, it's probably hormones. And you're like, um. See the said. doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Key Sunset for Life, NSU alum and former employer when you went there. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for chiming in. I liked the education I got in my law school. It was uh, not what you would get at the big ones, but it was more important and impactful because of that. I had actual practicing lawyers teaching classes, which is huge. Yeah, sure. yeah. Especially uh, for Alan. certain classes like criminal procedure, because it's one thing to hear that from a guy who's been an academic for the last 30 years, and then you get a very yeah. different class from the person who's like, yeah, actually the way it works is this. Oh, yeah. No. Um, give me any of those law professors, put them in a courtroom, and I'll whoop their ass. Like, I, it's not even a question. Like, there's no debate. There's no any anyone who's just a professor and just a professor who has not been inside a courtroom seeing how that law is practiced, demolished. Alan Muller, I've been hearing LawTube talking about poking the Baldwin bear. This is problematic. Many people think he is unbearable. <laughs> I was wondering where that was going. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, Trace Bagan, happy birthday and channel anniversary. Found you watching Debt V Heard as MND PLC. Morton Edrington PLC. Rob, congrats. Thank you, Tracy Fagan. Uh, people were asking if I could possibly share um, this one because it kept getting talked about. They wanted you to share what your, your sun sign was, and I didn't see an answer to that either. What's the sun sign? What's a sun sign? What is your astrological sign? This one. This is the video that started the channel. That's not your astrological sign. No, it's not. It was that part. It was it was this video where it was like, oh, we're gonna break the bed. There, there, then now the bed's broken. Yep, that that's the video. And what does that look like? That looks exactly well, like the, the picture. It looks exactly like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the, this part, like the, what is that on the knife, on the bed? Uh, oh, that looks kind of like a pocket knife. I really love the Mythbusters approach to it. It was fun. That was, that was uh, filmed at 2 a.m. So. <laughs> oh, chat says you're a Taurus. Good, good. I am a Taurus. Yeah. Uh, Azam, the first law tuber I found during Johnny Depp, the bed thingy. After that, YouTube recommended Lawyer You Know, and here I am now. I really appreciate your views, Rob. Congrats and happy birthday. Curious, are you Aries or Taurus? I, I am a Taurus. What they were asking. I'm a Taurus. Do you know what your other signs are? No, I don't know what the other signs are. I don't know what they mean. I don't know any of it. We'll talk when you come to Nashville. <laughs> um, I talk about Bruno. I talk about Bruno is the name of the uh, this person. Need you to know my 17-year-old. Got the Go V curtain for Christmas because I saw it on your channel. It is amazing. Best Christmas gift, Christmas gift last year. That's awesome. It's fun. How do you, you can't hate it. It's great. Uh, Joey Jones Donnelly, congrats on 200K to your anniversary and big 4-0. Thank you very much. Benjamin Gray, congrats on 40 and your ethical fortitude. I try to maintain the second. The first, um, I'm happy to live that life. Devin, thank you for the 50 gifted memberships. Thank you, Devin, for all that you've done throughout the years. Fender, sometimes the worst things leading to the best ones. Here's to all the happy things, Rob, with more to come. Would Daddy Stack? I had to. <laughs> Purple Heart for EDB. Yeah, that uh, that stream is the most famous of all streams. <laughs> it's It should be. It was. Because Hogue was just like, oh, God, what's happening? <laughs> And I'm like, we, housewives, sir. Do you, do you remember the, early in the stream where we had the giant stuffed unicorns like on the same stream? Mm -hmm. It's back. It's still back here somewhere. God. But now I've also got the bear gift from YouTube kind of bumped it because I was thrilled to make the Christmas list this year. So, you know. Uh, Steve A, no real hero believes they deserve the title. Rick is the most humble of humble individuals and... My gosh, the man is absolutely incredible what he's been through and what he's done and what he has done with what that experience was. Using that to educate people is 
It takes a lot of courage to also talk about what you're insecure about after an injury. It takes, you know, be it a, a yeah. brain injury, be it a, a stroke, be it a physical injury, be it an accident. It takes a lot of courage to talk about those things because they're so deeply rooted and it's so, it can make you feel very, very insecure. Um, so I get it when he talks about like the voices in my head are like, it's not the way that it was. Um, that's really hard. What's really cool is that Rick wasn't live streaming a lot during the aftermath of that, but we were. So we saw people in chat that would chime in and make comments like I, three people, like I know of three people for a fact who life was either saved or like life altering circumstances were diverted because of what he had been through and shared. That's massive. We learn, I say it all the time on my channel, we learn through talking. We learn through talking. People learn about their own neurospiciness through hearing our conversations. We, you know, when you look at human history, it was like, eat that and die, buddy. Um, or you just <laughs> get that information from the one that you didn't want to tell. So we learn through communicating with each other and communicating things that we're vulnerable about, I think can be tremendously impactful. It's easy to communicate about the stuff that's not vulnerable, but that stuff's already everywhere. It's the vulnerable stuff that we really yeah. learn from. And Hoke sharing his experiences, I'm not surprised it had that amount of impact. Just like both of you sharing your experiences has tremendous impact. I've seen it on your channel. When you say, go make something, you'll feel better. How many people say, you know what? I tried it and I do. I tried it, it and I do. It is so cool. And when I went through packing up a lot of the stuff in the background and seeing the things that people made and the notes that I kept, I keep a lot of the notes taped to the back of whatever's made. Mm -hmm. And when I packed that up and I look back at it and look back two years and realizing it's been two years and looking back and having people say, I did what you said and it made me feel better. And here I'm giving this to you because it made me feel better. All right. It's a lot. It's really freaking cool. It's really cool. It's incredibly special. It's incredibly special. Yeah. Um, Carson Pratt, Rick, movies and TV get everything wrong. This too. Fair. Uh, Andy, the game maker. No, Rob. No, Rob is not adopting me. Andy, <laughs> the one thing I did not pack was this pea-scented candle, which is on my desk. I'm sorry, what? It, it was a thing. A, it is a urine-scented candle. You have a puppy. He, you definitely he, don't need a candle. No. He, <laughs> he, 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 put, he put duct tape over top of it. And he sent it to me. And he told me I had to light it on stream. Well, one, I opened it. That was a mistake. And two, I lit it. <laughs> Is it yellow? Does it melt into like a little yellow puddle? I have learned my lesson. I am not opening this thing again, Emily. I am not. I you am know what waiting. the best thing to do with those things is? Wait, I'm waiting for um, a friend of me. I'm waiting for a friend of me. I need a friend of me. No, Rob, I will I will find better revenge if you try that. Um, <laughs> um, You're not a friend of me. Thing, You're a friend. They, they leak the smell, not just when they uh, burn, but just when they melt. And so candles like that um, have a wonderful use if you have access to like a heating duct. Especially if you drop it in there like in You're the summer. Because they're not going to find it until the winter when the heat kicks in. <laughs> and by that point, you are long, you are far, far away and also probably outfitted with an alibi. Yes. Or, so <laughs> or, or when I'm outside in their backyard, I put it in their shed, like just put it in the shed, like, and just wait till the summer heat, like bakes the shed. Like, yeah. And they go to like open the shed. <laughs> oh, baby. I am, I am waiting for the person to bestow this upon Andy, you son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> awesome person, great person, but also terrible prankster. K Rab Hogue, as another stroke survivor using your YouTube platform to teach others, the signs of a stroke is monumental. I agree. I knew the signs, so got treatment immediately, but many don't, and treatment is delayed. Yes, that's the point. Yeah, thank you, K Rab. Which is why treatment costs you function. Uh, LJ Peach, congrats, Rob, and happy birthday. And Rob, how is Judge A doing? She is doing swimmingly. Um, very well. Court's when turning she's along. She's going to retire, and that's sad. No, uh, she's got a couple more years. 
I uh, wonder how much uh, therapy Elaine Bredehoff has cost her. I don't know. Elaine, it, it, I actually, there's a, one of my partners in the firm has practiced against Elaine and was like, I don't know what I saw in that courtroom, but that's not Elaine Bredehoff. I don't know. Maybe it is the problem. I think that's I, trial I, Elaine Bredehoff. I don't think that's deposition Elaine Bredehoff. No, 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 I, no. I, the person, the person that I, the person I spoke to saw her in trial. And oh, his, their their speculation was that was an impossible client. That, that was the speculation. That was, that was Ian's speculation from the beginning when I was like, am I being too harsh? And Ian's like, yep. And I was like, yeah, but nah. So the problem is seen she her practice and been like. She yeah. lost a lot of sympathy for me with some of the moves she pulled. And I think that she should have said no to her client more than she did. Yeah, you're um, the lawyer. And you're being paid by insurance. It's not like your client's going to fire you. You're the lawyer. An insurance and insurance hired you. And if the client does fire you, it's like, okay, um, insurance probably won't give you another lawyer. So that was your call. Um, Good luck, dude. Yep. Best of luck with that. <laughs> but who decided to hire Spiegel? I need to oh, know. That, you I, I don't know. There, like there's, there's, there's no recovery there. No, that was, that was. I like the mystery. I like the theory that there's an entirely different Spiegel because people identified there's another Spiegel in the similar area. Can you not like say the Spiegel that, the same way you do? You, 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 you make it sound like Spiegel. Yeah, thank you, Emily. Thank which is you. appropriate. I'm not the only one. Which is appropriate because that's kind of his vibe. Um, but I like the theory that they meant to hire a different one and they just got this one and he nobody did a deposition knew. with them because. Dennison was cross examining him on his deposition. They deposed yeah, him and still called him. him. Witness. Yeah, they did. Yeah, so they, they, it's unforgivable. It was a, that was a choice. Was a Maybe he was the only expert who would have said the things they wanted him to say. Because sometimes you're stuck with just who's going to be helpful versus like you bring oh. in an expert and they're like, yeah, um, your client totally sucks. It's like, oh, that's oh, not that's... what I want you to say. Yeah, no. yeah, and he looks like Doofenshmirtz. He sounded like Doofenshmirtz. He made the yeah, bizarre was, faces. Was, was, and was, and he's looking at the judge, and he's like, "I'm not going to answer that." It, nothing it was, will ever was, be quite like that trial. It was so wild. Yeah, uh, Ocean Soul, thank you very much. Uh, ESB forty. I learned about all of you through the Depth v. Heard trial. I loved all three of you and your commentary. It was super amazing to see Hogue change towards <laughs> the end. Rob, congrats on your channel. Thank you, ESB. 40 uh tgq where's the stuffy robot things they are being sequestered they are packed and ready to go to the new location which is the new house kristen m96 how excited are you all on becoming youtube uncles later this year <laughs> very yes oh yeah oh that was a connection that took me a minute to make yes <laughs> we will be oh yes Yes, Emily got there. The second my brain dinged, she was like, oh, ding. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, we're all excited. Very, very excited because um, uh, a Law 2 baby is in the works. Uh, bun is in the oven. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be really cool. Uh, Miss Christy B, happy 40th birthday, second anniversary, and congrats on 200K. So deserved. Thank you for every contribution that you've given to this community. You're awesome, Rob. I learn from those who helped lift me up and teach me how to do what I'm doing now. So I thank the people on the screen with me as well. <clears throat> but thank you very much for the very kind sentiments. Canonical Heat. And appreciate the mods who keep this place fun and tidy. They do, and they're pulling overtime tonight. So thank the mods indeed. Thank the mods. Sarah New. Just got back from Craft It Night Gowns at the bar what i miss well by the fact that your chat was sent at 9 31 p.m not a lot because you probably caught up by now <laughs> yeah happy two-year channel anniversary and 200k happy birthday whipper mm -hmm. snapper jonathan duger part one rick the term hero isn't for you it's for the people looking at your situation that's awesome a great way of looking at it hero is not for you to designate yourself it's for us to designate upon you Exhibit A, only every single Medal of Honor recipient. Really good point. Mm -hmm. John the Duger again, part two. Medal of Honor recipients will almost always say they aren't heroes. They usually say they're just a guy doing a job. But in fact, all of them were heroes. A true hero doesn't call himself that and believes he does, doesn't deserve the title. 
Uh huh. That's Rick. Yeah. Yep. Stroke hero indeed. Rosebud 26, happy birthday anniversary. I stumbled across Nick Ricada's channel right before Depth V Heard, which led me to EDB, and it led me to all of you. So glad it did. I'm glad it did too. And I'm glad that people bounce around to all the creators that they like. Yep. If you like a channel, if you like the vibe, stick around. If you don't, you have plenty of, to choose from. So you've got yep. a whole it's world. You to a whole world of, of lawyers, and we all have... <laughs> You know, there's a lot of times we agree, but have different ways of getting there or don't agree. And that's okay. Lawyers are meant to have conversation and see things differently. And we always learn from each other, or at least I always learn from, from watching everybody. Um, and often I'm like, God, I wish I could remember things like they do. <laughs> it's, it, well, it, it's this part. So it was on pilots too. Also love the collaboration with Peter reacting to Camille cross-examination of AH. The fire recap. That's the first vid I watched of you and Peter on screen together. The dynamic when you get a bunch of lawyers that are commenting on one particular issue and the opinions you get that encompass all the various things you can feel about that moment are really cool. Um uh, text mama, happy birthday, Robin. Congrats on 200K. On my 40th birthday, I delivered my only son. Best gift ever. Do something big to celebrate your milestone. Well, I don't know that I can do Maybe that. Not that. <laughs> that's not physically <that's> <laughs> possible, but that is awesome. And thank you for sharing that story. I mean, not with that attitude, Rob. Rob, do you have plans for what you're doing for 4 0? I mean, I know you've got a lot of like major life changes. That are exciting. I'm, I'm, I am doing I am doing dinner with uh mischief, the kiddos, and my mom. Awesome. Um, that is that evening, and then later in the year, I'm gonna do a golf trip with some friends. Um it's it there has been so much that's happened in the last year and a half, slash two years, mm -hmm. where honestly, I feel like like the life I'm living right now is about as big a gift as I can get. I don't need anything else. I really don't. I just want to spend time with the people that are around me. And that's, like I said, the life I'm living right now is about the best gift I could ever get for my 40th birthday. Uh, Vez from Quebec, I got back to school all the way to the PhD and became a law teacher to get out of the toxic situation like at that firm. Never regret it. Yep. Awesome. Great move. Good move for you. And House Bath Company, congrats and happy birthday, Rob. Congrats to Mama Morton. Sent you something at the P.O. box to celebrate. Thank you, and House Bath Company. I will, I'll check that out. I will do, I, y'all are really amazing people. Arlene Navo, aw, snap, dream team, time for the daddy stacks. <laughs> well, you got leather daddy, book daddy, law book daddy, I, gamer daddy, law mommy. This is getting law, weird. <laughs> the, no, the law mommy comments. The law mommy comments were some of the funniest. They were my favorite. They were hilarious. Things got un uncorked quickly. I I can't say I haven't done anything to encourage that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw you during the Baldwin or, or the uh, Hannah trial commentary. With Look, the man, you cannot <laughs> you cannot talk about the FBI beating off the cock knot the, the, okay, without okay, okay. dying. Okay. Hang on. I will context, lie. context before you go into beating off a cock notch. We already I gave the context. It was the Hannah trial. <laughs> Agreed with Runkle. <laughs> <laughs> Our spiciness was moving faster than yours, Rob. I'm sorry. It was. It was. It, I, yeah, I, I caught up in like a sentence. Uh, so <laughs> one of the experts in Hannah Gutierrez Reed was talking about the. Uh, <laughs> God, they, the, the hammer on the gun and the certain knows. notches. It was no, so you would you would the chat's aware. Oh God, <laughs> when you cock a hammer and you go off half cocked, and sometimes you have to go full cocked. And in order to break the gun or to demonstrate that it couldn't function the way that it was said by Alec Baldwin, you have to break the cock. And you had you just you beat the cock off with the the you just pass all the now you're the doing it on cocks. purpose. <laughs> just trying to get all the cocks out of the way. <laughs> Fair. That was a that was a sentence that I didn't. Wait, no, I take that back. I just said that out loud. I take that back. Now it's all your right. fault, Rob. I hate all of you. I love all of you. You're amazing. I was going to say no, you don't. Um, <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, Aurora no, W. Cheers. All those, all those experts. It was on them. It's going to be very interesting when we get to Baldwin. It's just. It's going to be a lot. So. 
Now, I wonder if Baldwin gets convicted, will the judge do the same thing that she did with Hannah and direct her or direct Baldwin immediately into custody? Well, that would be a thing. But I have a question, and and I'm, I'm going to pull up some of the other um, member chats while we're answering the question, because I know that there was a new special prosecutor appointed, and I have a theory, and I want to get your thoughts on the theory and kind of your impressions. They saw everything Carrie Morrissey had as far as trial tactics, all of it. Mm-hmm. And we pointed out a lot of flaws that Bowles missed. Mm -hmm. Big problems. Special special prosecutor gets brought on in addition to, in supplementation of, Carrie Morrissey. How are you using this new special prosecutor? Because I have a thought, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts first. You mean the new special prosecutor who's a formal state and federal prosecutor? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Um... I'm using them for more of the witnesses than Morrissey because again, Baldwin's team's already seen the whole playbook. So I would absolutely use them for that. I would also use them to help balance the weight of all the paper that the legal team's going to be buried under because Baldwin's That's team is just going to continue to bury them in paper. And they just finished the Gutierrez trial. I'm sure they're exhausted and they have to start prepping for trial. I think you also need new eyes on those witnesses to help do the witness examinations better. Yeah. Um, reframe yeah, your questioning, make it new. Yeah, I like that. And, and then she also has work as a, a personal injury attorney who deals with wrongful death, also to deal with oh. the um, the interceding factor aspect of the medical intervention and stuff. Because Bowles couldn't hit that out of the park and didn't even explain it well in closing. Baldwin's lawyers are already arguing it uh, midway through the filings. So. I, I figured it was probably just a lot of workload issues because there are real indications that Baldwin's like, we got an unlimited amount of money to throw at this, so we can just run you down. And so they're like, ah, eh, no, we're going to bring on more people. And their people aren't from New York City. <laughs> New York City! <laughs> how how many times are we going to hear that? During oh, the trial, I want to I I, I plus I them downloaded up. a clip. Yeah. I, I made a clip for that. No, I want to know. I, I want your guess for the whole trial. I want the guess. Give me the number. I don't have enough fingers and toes for that. And I'm a lawyer, so I need the fingers and toes. Wait, what's the question? How many times are you going to hear it in New York City during the trial? I bet they do I a motion think... limine about it. I really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would if I was them. I would. I was going to grant it? I yeah, would if I was the relevant. judge. How's it relevant where the lawyers are from? You're just trying to taint the jury. Mm-hmm. Not the lawyers, but what about Baldwin himself? I mean, what's it matter? Everybody kind of knows where he's from. He's a celebrity. He was in New Mexico. No, but the, 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 the character of the individual, the person who believes that they are above anything that's country bumpkin. Yeah, but they the can't that... throw New York City at him over that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not relevant there. They'll, they'll have to throw so like... so bad, though. Oh, I know they're going to try, but th- they... It's I don't think they're going to get it in. I don't think he, I don't think they're going to have to say it either. Yeah, it's going to come in in all the motion hearings, but I don't think it'll come in at trial. Um, yeah, and if I think pull the trial. It, I think it's inappropriate. You stand up and object. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a couple of chats that I've starred because I know Emily has to bounce, but I have a couple that I want to read while she's still on the stream. Sure. Um, K. Rab, as a parent of two adults with ADHD who have been through the system, advocate for your kids. No one else will. Don't let teachers or admins bully you or them. You are an equal member of the team. If you ask for accommodations, they must provide them. As a mom with kids, I imagine that hits home with you. And you my mom fought go. for me on a, a number of occasions. Um, so yeah, that was that was a thing. Um, one of the accommodations I got was having a laptop because I also have dysgraphia. So my handwriting is slow and painful. Um, and the computer or the, the school didn't want to let me have a laptop because they were like, you're going to lose it or someone's going to steal it. And it's like, A, no, I'm not. And B, that's kind of your job to make sure that like the school isn't a den of crime and iniquity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she had to fight with them on it and it helped like my grades went up. So 
And then this one I saved for you, Emily, and, and I promise I'll let you bounce after this one. Yellow Pill NP. I was told I was going to fail my master's program because I was too yeah. R word. Almost hard to believe it until I started watching y'all. I've now graduated, licensed, and certified. So FB haters. Yellow wow. Pill, that's amazing. And it is, um, it is frustrating that even in higher education, you are meeting that level of ignorance. It's really frustrating um, and you shouldn't. But I sometimes, I'm not saying this is a personality trait I am proud of, but I learned early on that I can fuel a lot of accomplishments based on spite. And um, sometimes it is okay to tap into the, oh yeah, you say I can't? Fuck you, well of spite. So, um, Sometimes it can be immensely motivating. Like this one, Kate may be always loved the ADHD chats was recently diagnosed at 26 and everything makes so much more sense. It was actually hearing EDB about her experience that made me, uh, made everything click for me. Thank you all. Oh, Kate, you're welcome. And this happens, um, to women in particular, it happens to men as well, but it happens uh, to a lot of women that they don't present the way that doctors think think about presentation especially of adhd that's changing but a lot of women get the um you know oh it's just this or it's just that or they don't people don't see the ways that they're struggling because they don't present the same way that is a you know more common presentation and while that's changing for women especially in that like gap between 25 and like 45 a lot of us weren't diagnosed as kids because we didn't present the way that they were looking for which was really like you know, these unruly boys might be breaking shit and we just can't handle them. Where girls, yeah. they might see them sitting quietly, but their brains are going like this. And so they don't equate the two. So they just try to get the people they see as like disruptive to them taken care of to make them be quiet. And then even when people are struggling, they're like, oh, well, you just, this is the best that you can do, which is what I got told my whole life. They're like, oh, well, that's, I mean, maybe just the most you can accomplish. Like it's, it's not oh. that you you're just like it's just that's where you're at so it's not that anything else is going on with you you're just not really able to accomplish anymore um and that's very very common but learning how your brain work help brain works helps knowing how your body operates helps the more you know knowledge we have the better and i again i said it on stream and i say it on stream a lot i think we all have different operating systems and our world doesn't yet acknowledge that and it's getting better towards acknowledging some of us operate on different operating systems and we we have all different ones they're not just the one it's not like n n typical and not typical i think it's like a b c d e f g and then we figure out where we fall into the buckets and there is really no typical <clears throat> yeah. some might just be more popular at the moment sorry i had to dip out for a second i was fiddling around with this you said dip out <laughs> I, Canadian Tom Sandoval. Jesus. Um, that looks like death in a jar. It is. Yeah. And the jar was not that? super, like I was just fiddling with it as a thing to fiddle with. The lid was not on super tight. And I'm like, oh no. Oh no. I have really bad, <laughs> I have really bad stuff on my hands right now. <laughs> um, <Get a> wash. <laughs> I, I, I got to deal with that before, before that turns awful. Cause later I'm going to rub my eye or something and it's, um, and then yeah. you'll just watch me like, you know. so I've chatted about playing on a, a men's water polo team in high school. Cause they didn't have a women's water polo team. And I was really stubborn. So when the coach was like, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm here to play water polo. And they're like, um, really? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, um, this is men's water polo season. I'm like, when's women's water polo season and just blank stares and blinking. I was like, okay, then. So I'm here. One of the guys on my team had taken Flexol because again, it was the nineties for shoulders um, yeah. before readjusting his speedo. <laughs> 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 it was a very interesting practice. <laughs> <laughs> don't get flex on and uh, which is basically an icy hot. Don't get icy. No, hot your, your no. Every athlete has made that decision or made that mistake once and one time only. I have not gotten flex all on my bits and pieces. <laughs> not flex all, but I've done icy hot and I've not gotten icy hot on my bits and pieces. This is just why I've avoided time. athletics because like if that's the well, price of entry, I'm not in. <laughs> they had Tiger Bomb. Ti remember Tiger Bomb? Like the I love ultra Tiger Bomb. Yep. Oh my God. I, I did that one. Oh no. 
Because that they that does not them. wash off. Because you would go Tiger Balm and you go to wash your hands, mm -hmm. and it's, you, it's still on the hands, and you go right. and rub something, and or you're go to like, pee, oh. right? Yep, not a, not a problem for me. The indoor plumbing um, yeah. uh, that from being a problem. I had other problems like they wouldn't always open my locker room, or the guys on my team would be like, "It's not fair," because the year before I played, they would use both locker rooms at the pool because there weren't enough showers for everybody on the team. So they were used to being able to use both locker rooms until I joined the team. And they're like, well, this is bullshit that it takes longer to shower. You've got like 10 showers in there and it's just you. I was like, but okay. You're like, and I turned them all on and I jumped from one to the other. Oh, no, I just, <laughs> like it's a Disney movie. I just ended up with a red <laughs> locker room most of the time. And my coach was like, what do you want me to do? I'm like, um, okay. <laughs> you're, just, you're just like, all right, I'm gonna go shit anymore. Yeah, yeah and then I started just dating um, my teammates, and then my coach was like, "This is going to get out of hand very quickly." I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> "There's always a solve." <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. Novel uh, problems need novel solutions. <laughs> so, Emily, you got you just have to let me know when you want to bounce. Um, I want to read this last right. one though. Uh, Kelly Tolls. Would were would would Wardy? I mentioned this supposed to say would Daddy Stacks happen a few weeks after my mom passed, and it was the first time I laughed after seeing y'all together on my birthday eve makes me smile. Oh, Kelly, I'm so glad. That is, cheers, happy birthday, Kelly. Happy birthday. I hope you have found many opportunities to laugh in the time since, and that you have gone through a remarkable amount of healing. Yep. And that you and your uh, you and your mom have a chuckle together from time to time, um, whether she's there physically or there. Um, well, she's there, so that's really thank you for sharing that. Very kind of you, Chad. So, me, <laughs> what? What is Chad doing right now? Reading Chad. You're all. Uh, none of you are incorrect, and I I promise you. One of these days when I'm writing under a pen name, there will be spicy books based on some of these experiences, both in law and in life. Oh, no, we've talked about it before. Like the the novels that could be written. Oh, and... I'm naming it. I, I'm naming it Beaver Moon Publishing. It's happening. Uh, the EDB <laughs> significance behind Beaver Moon. But there's a whole plan. And there's a bunch of my friends that are judges that are on board. They're like, oh. <gasps> We're going to write smut under pen name. You mean you mean we get a pen name and we don't have to be our person and we can exactly. publish it under the yeah uh huh. Um, here's the problem: lawyers have some of the craziest stories that you would absolutely one hundred percent believe to be fiction, but are actually tied <laughs> to reality. Some of the best novels that you will ever read or uh -huh. stories you ever read are founded in some actual truth because that's what makes good stories it, yeah, well, it's yeah. a <laughs> yeah uh let's there's a whole it's a thing oh okay we're gonna we're gonna let you rock with that well, rachel duick thank you for the very generous super chat i was diagnosed with adhd within the last year woman yeah fortunately i was homeschooled because my brother was diagnosed when we were kids my mom didn't want him to fall through the cracks. I got to figure out how I learned that way. Yeah. That's a really cool experience. That's a very unique experience that a lot of people don't have. Thank you for sharing that. That's actually really cool. Like the idea that homeschool helps you navigate neurodivergency because, well, you're being more attended to. Mm hmm That's really neat. It is. Okay. Uh, Sibby, thank you for the very generous super, super chat. Super chat. Congrats, Rob. Law talk with Mike. Uh, and your first video came to see and haven't left. Love your channel. And I oh, follow most talk of your with guests. Mike too. Your first video came to see and haven't left. Love your channel. YouTube is having an issue, especially on mobile, with the super uh, chats. Yeah, yeah, I know it. Yeah they know like the auto filling and it's it's a nightmare i've sent super uh, chats like uh -huh. when you guys have been streaming it drives me nuts it's yeah it's a known it is a known issue i'm told they're working on it but it, uh, it's a good issue aurora w cheers the channel milestones thank you all for inspiring me y'all make it look easy and it's not also here for all the billing well we're not billing right now we are just chatting mm -hmm. and having fun 
it's a lot more difficult than it looks. We'd be expensive if we were billing. It is expensive to be me. <laughs> the way you went there. Boys and Elf, I appreciate how the creators here are proud of their profession and just want colleagues to do their best and try to do the profession proud and be ethical. We very much do. All of us it's do. It's not we hard to not steal money from your clients. Like, it's, it's not hard. Yeah, it's not even, like, the best. It's just less bad. Not the worst. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, like, can you just, like, follow the law? Like, let's just... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Could mm -hmm. you not do a crime, please? Uh, please don't crime. That part. Like uh, ten to minutes? <laughs> don't crime at your clients. Uh to sign a birth, but happy uh also happy birthday, Rob. I'll be joining you on that hill in five months. Happy birthday in the future to you. Enjoy the next five months. Cindy Wilkins finally found where I can text and send money. Well, okay. Thank Bye. you, Cindy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Olivia C. Just getting home from work and happy to see the Fab Four together. Cheers and happy all the milestones, Rob. Thank you very much. Oh, um, and I love, yes. I love the emojis, the purple heart, the elf, the, mm -hmm. uh, the game um, controller, and the the, the log a stack of wood. <laughs> the log. <laughs> Hank Panetta, no. Hank Panetta, no. Hear me out. Mock trial, invisible bridge versus googly maps presided over by Honorable EDB, but plot twist. <laughs> Ian reps plaintiffs suing Google. Rob <laughs> reps defense. Other law tubers guests as witnesses and experts. Please, you guys like I have told the story about the Google Maps thing. I thought that case was like 50 50 until Ian joined that chat <laughs> hot and angry in one direction. And I was like, nope, we're not doing this. I'm going to pay the other side. And How it was a back and forth. Problem if you drive into a hole. Well, but it's a back and forth that shows people that you can fight both sides and you have to realize that people can have different opinions. Follow up. And one of them is correct. <laughs> and it's mine always. <laughs> uh, oh, no, <laughs> Emily's like, I have been, I have not been around you guys live in a while and you're too much like brothers right now. No, I love it. It's the best. I'm just, I just have plans because I know what we're, what we're doing or some of what we're doing in Nashville. So I'm just. I don't know any of no. what we're doing in that. No, so. wait, what? Wait, no, what? It sounds like Emily's got plans and we don't, don't know what the plans it. are. Mm -hmm. Fine. <laughs> Should I just like assume that you've got like everything, mm -hmm. you know, okay. <laughs> oh, shit. Worry. I'll let you know dates and places. Okay, I was going to say, I'll just not book anything then. <laughs> you know who's great at dates and places? Ian, who wants to be there five hours early for every fucking appointment, no matter what, and drives 20 miles an hour to get there <laughs> while following Google maps. Oh, you're, you're not going to love the way I drive. Ian. No, he's going to he, I, I get go plenty on. of speeding tickets here. I just don't want to do that in another country. Oh, don't worry. Because I'll there's a, there's a whole different, set of principles that applies when you're not you know. no, no this 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 false statement cannot stand i was in the fucking car with you when you were driving in california on the i5 it ian which is again not my home country yeah yeah i understand that but oh, the, the speed the, the five the, the no, five the speed limit the speed limit is the limit it is not 10 miles below said limit. I was drop. never going 10 exactly miles. 10 miles above. That, is, that is incorrect. Okay. It's just the five. You also on yourself. the five, you might not be able to go the speed limit most of the time. So it's. Uh, we, we were okay on that, on that moment, but there was traffic. Now there are crazy to Ian's defense. There are crazy drivers that do the whole cutting things off and all the craziness. And I think it was right, like a, people are going under the fucking speed limit and it takes you four hours to get anywhere. The other thing to consider is that there are issues like I have read of cases where like Canadian goes to U.S. state, yeah. gets speeding ticket, gets denied bail, like gets held on speeding ticket because you are a foreigner and there's no way you're coming back for a speeding ticket. That's not happening so in having, California. I'm just going to tell you right now, that's not happening in California. That's not happening in California. It's not happening in California. But, but the thing is, you're, you're talking you're talking to a criminal defense attorney. 
So there's some I'm, places that do like to hold people on tickets and like no, to arrest Ian's them like, on them. Ian's and, like I can see the plot of my cousin Vinny, and I'm not joining that plot. That <laughs> and the thing was is, is in his I head. I don't have time to research what California is going to do or not do. So I'm just like, I'm just not going to have the problem. Fair. See, and the also thing is, it's funny Ian, when Rob is going insane. So that that's a well, side. Well, that was a benefit. <laughs> uh, Ian is the person on this stream among all of us who's like, I'm going to be rule follower. Emily and I are like, huh, those are guidelines. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> Really? You think I'm normally a rule follower? <laughs> Well, I'm a, yeah. It drives my husband nuts because he can't always discern which context I am very strictly a rule follower and which context I'm like, Meh, they, that's a suggestion. And so he's just like, wait a second, because sometimes I'm very much a rule follower. And sometimes I'm like, just call me out directly to my face. I, I mean, don't like that. That hurt my soul. Why? It really, <laughs> really depends never, on the context. Like, ever tell mischief that. Ever, ever, ever tell mischief matters. <laughs> If you're visiting like a maximum security prison, which I've had the cause to do, let me tell you, every rule they give you is ironclad law. Ian, you just said maximum security prison. You were going five miles an hour over, like arguably over the speed limit. Yeah. Oh, and you, you I do not. There, but from there. I, I don't fuck with breaking the law in foreign countries because you that, don't know what the rules are. Right. That part is fair. fair. I will give like you that. Costa Rica. Yes. Some guy comes up and he's like, hey, do you want to buy some weed? And it's like, get the fuck away from me, sir, because I don't know if the punishment here is like, here's a small fine or if it's like, here's like five years, in, years jail. in jail. Like I and I don't want to mess with that. So, you know, much as because it's legal here, I might have an edible later to, you know, try to help me sleep. I'm not going to mess with that in Costa Rica or Utah. So, um, per yeah, Ian, or anywhere. pack your own like, weed and bring it with you. No, no, no. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not what he said at all. Oh, wait, know. Wait, you know what I didn't get to ask you guys about? Yeah. So in the, in the sentencing, we learned more about Hannah Gutierrez's other case. Yes. Did she really smuggle a gun into a bar in her ass? That's what she claims. Wait, I didn't I don't know think she in the actually I thought it's not in her ass. Actually, I think it was probably in her pants. No, I don't she, think she actually smuggled it in her butt. I suspect that she tucked it like into her in jacket or something and then made a joke. She said um, they didn't check my butt. My ass cheeks. Yeah. They yeah. didn't check my butt cheeks. Wah wah wah. Wait. I realized that that probably was this. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Also, the chat has told me that I need to show you something, Emily. Sure. Oh, no. oh my what? God. That does not need to be seen. That is, that is, that Four is. liters of valued vodka. Oh, that looks like death. It's like a gallon of vodka. Good God. In a plastic it jug. Like, it looks like it's just ready to be <laughs> in a bathtub to make. It makes me remember like burn nets or whatever the shit. We, oh. It's just going to make everybody barf. It's actually oh. kind of drinkable. Like I had it with Ian, ice. It no. wasn't Ian, terrible. I am not. Please, your taste buds are not allowed to go up against any other normal fucking human. It's just <laughs> not. It doesn't <laughs> no. You've burned it's a good thing I don't know any normal humans. I. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you cannot tell the chat. It's not that bad. No, that's not. You guys don't listen to that advice. That's Why bad advice. Why does it look like a gallon of water? Like I, because it's vodka. What vodka looks like. Yeah, I, I mean, I know I've never. I don't think I've ever seen a gallon of vodka like that. Because the, the um, fucking reason. <laughs> I actually bought it because one of the local politicians went on a rager against this product. Because he he's like, it? this is not responsible. This is whatever. And it's like, nah, eh, whatever. I think he went. Speaking of which, I will be bringing some hot sauce with me to. Uh, oh, good. Nashville, and I'll drink more. By the way, <laughs> all dress um, chips. Yeah, all dress chips. I, I can bring some all dress chips. Yes, good I ones. will. I will make sure to plan that. I don't know how they'll do. Like, will the chip bags burst in the lower pressure? I don't know. They shouldn't. No, they shouldn't. But we'll find out. You'll if find they do, out. then you're going to get a bunch of like, you know, powdery chips or whatever. I still good. I don't care. It's still good. Uh, XCDA, uh, gratitude for everything you all of you do, both on and off stream. Thank you very much, XCDA. Elizabeth Chetwood, love seeing the Fabulous Four back together. 
Um, Beverly VT, happy 200K anniversary and birthday law and lumber. You're the best and need your own talk show. Well, that's what Fridays that are. Talk show. <laughs> that's what, that, yeah, yeah. Thanks for making me a law nerd. Well, Emily made you a law nerd. She coined the phrase. I just I, helped get you there. I didn't coin the phrase. The law nerd chat coined the phrase, but yes, well, our chat coined the phrase. Um, there you go. Yes. So I just it, helped get you there. It fits. The fans of law. Oh, God. Lady Drake, son of a bitch. Now that EDB is here, we need that Rocky Horror Picture Show Law Tube cast after this reading, of course. Happy early birthday and 200K. Don't worry, I'm right behind you. Um, apparently, we're supposed to cast the members of Law Tube in Rocky Horror Picture Show. I feel like that's a longer conversation. It's late. Yeah. It's late. It's a lot of thinking. It's that late. is a lot of thinking. Mm -hmm. Um Braden Culver, at what point does this firm's actions begin to approach criminality? Well, we were kind of um, there. The point where you steal from your clients, the point where you um, engage in kiting, the point, the part where you, all of this, like there were several parts. Fraud, under, uh, perjury. There's definitely perjury in there as well. Yep. Mm. Uh, Time Lords, thanks for a fantastic two years of Law and Lumber shenanigans. Thank you, Time Lords, and thank you for being a mod and helping out with the channel along the way. Lori Liani, who's also helped with the channel, celebrations are the best. Glad you broke the bed. Well, that's a phrase I didn't <laughs> think I'd read out loud. LJ Peach, thanks for the gifted memberships. Uh, Melanie Pare, uh, my ex-boyfriend was screwed by his immigration lawyer by tens of thousands of dollars. That money was supposed to pay for his college. That's yeah, cool. bad lawyers. Yeah, we had a That's lawyer who got in some trouble here because um, there were settlements to be paid to indigenous people for like abuses and it would be like 50 grand, but he'd go up to them at like age 18 and just be like, hey, you're going to get this in a few years. How about I loan you 10,000 now and you just sign um, it over to me? No. And yeah, the, uh, the law society had some thoughts on that. Yeah. Uh, as well they they appropriately should uh you don't mess with client money like that's like the one huge rule like one communication communicate with your client like that takes a while for lawyers to learn so they give some grace there because human in, human like feeling is i don't want to share things that are going to embarrass me it takes some oh, learning well, that's to do. when you get on the phone right away and but that takes some learning so the bar is going to give you grace there where the bar is not going to give you grace is where you mess with the client money you are supposed to protect that a hundred percent so um jillian smani uh smanioto Sm Sman help me smanioto smanioto uh rob has started late and just caught up I immediately recognized that revocation order from seeing it on appeal as a 3L. No. <laughs> oh, no. <wow. laughs> They're teaching him in law they school? They taught him in law school? I was going to say, there's only two ways to be taught in law school. One of them is good. <laughs> the fall. The one is That's not. Fall. <laughs> you don't want to be taught in the ethics course. Nope. This case never left my brain crazy to see it here. Well, Jillian, I am the I person that is... <laughs> is the sad individual to tell you that that was my first job out of law school. And I promptly left there and formed my own firm. But wow. All right. Didn't see that one. But I think that's why they teach it because it will never I leave your brain. Gotta be. be like, well, we're not going to do any of that. And it, I think you get all the major ethical rules in one case. Like all of them are in there. Everything. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that there isn't is don't bonk the client. Well, in some jurisdictions, that's okay. We There's a case they teach in ethics where a guy avoided getting disbarred because he showed up at the client's house with a, like, discharge letter before what he, she got her to sign before ew, the discharge. Ew, 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 is ew, surprisingly ew, flexible. ew, You just used discharge in two ways that were not <laughs> intended to be two ways. <laughs> <laughs> California is surprisingly flexible about climate. That doesn't surprise me. California. If anyone was going to be flexible about that, it would be California. In fact, I would suspect that California's rules would would like 
forgive more if there was more flexibility. No, there, uh, I, I I've just got the visual. I'm sorry, no, I, I can't get past I can't get past the discharge before the discharge, and then you're adding flexibility on top. I'm you can't pay for legal services in exchange for relations with the client. Yeah. Um so that's a hard one. Some jurisdictions also have restrictions that are like you can't at all, even if they're your spouse. So that's that's, that's interesting odd. too. It's kind of dramatic. Um, pro topics vote for Ian to be a dramatic reading of that book. Well, he dramatically reads a lot of stuff. John Common book mama <laughs> stacks. This Jones JJ stole my first amendment. Um, you would laugh if I saw how I read my you would laugh. If you saw how I read my books, I do everything in the sun not to break the spine. LMFAO. Well, okay, that's fair. Uh, AG, y'all helped inspire me to be a legal transcriptionist. Yes. Very cool. Uh, recovery addict fell asleep listening, woke up to EDB book club. Well, hi, not, recovery addict. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but not sorry. Nicole O, Crime Con Festivities Fund. Thank you. <laughs> I think right now I get a, that's going to come in handy quite a bit. I mean, I think there may be some bad decisions that get made. <laughs> All. Uh, Amanda Lang, ADHD tattoos corner, watching you for two years. Though. Vegas tattoos are easier, so at least there might not be evidence. Uh, yeah, I probably am going to dibs out if it's like tattoo time, but. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> I generally only, that's a, that's a Vegas thing. So Nashville, it's like, you know, good to see right. <laughs> I've been in Nashville. I've made this. I've made decisions in Nashville. I've fallen asleep in a bar in Nashville. Um, yeah. Amethyst Jones, J Day stole my first moment. Fun to buy Emily a new constitutional law book. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. Uh, Amy T, my favorite trio. I watch each stream. Thank you, Amy T. Uh, M two H M G H B. You three give me neurodivergent people hope. I hope we do. Thank you, Sue Diaz. Lindsay, speaking of the ADHD, Ian, how are the new meds? Um, mixed. Um, some days they've been really helpful. Other days it just feels like they help me um, be distracted faster. So I'm still figuring it out. Um, but yeah, I got, um, I'm trying Vyvanse. So um, I went I've through a long run. Things. Yeah, I went through a long run of psychs who are like, Hey, so you don't like Ritalin. Um, we'll prescribe you Concerta, which is also Ritalin. And I'm like, um, why? When I just told you I don't like the thing, are you telling me that I should get more of exactly the same thing? They're like, well, it's pretty much what we've got in our toolkit. I'm like, oh, um, no. great. <laughs> um, so finally, they're trying me on something else. Um, the other thing that worked really well for me, but they will not prescribe again, um, is a little known substance called disoxin, um, which is meth. Sounds <laughs> well, it's, it's literally just meth. So, okay. um, yeah, they, they don't allow them to prescribe that anymore. But um, I was on that for about four months and it was pretty good. I'm not recommending it, like, unless you're prescribed by a doctor or whatever. You're like, but, it, uh, you know, I mean, it's really, isn't that the derivative of Ritalin anyway? Pretty much. I mean, it kind of is. It's an amphetamine. Like, uh, amphetamine salts is what the, the Adderall is. Uh, yeah. Baby Gator leaves one for you. Emily changed my name to Elizabeth, if you know, you know. <laughs> um, Ari coming in here. Ari, good to see Ari. you. Emily, did you see the tweet about the purple hair? It was so mm -hmm. funny. She tweeted out and basically someone said made a comment of like, um, I've never known a purple haired person that had their shit together. And Ari was like, ha, huh, have you met this person? And it was a picture of you, like you guys standing together. <laughs> it was pretty good. It was solid. I don't know. I I feel like none of us always have our shit together. And the people who want to no. judge people by the color of their hair also don't have their shit together. But um if my poop is in a group, it's largely just by accident. I don't spend. Um, wait, 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 wait. What the fuck did you say? He says if my poop is in a group. You're shipping together. <laughs> I can't. 
I can't. Oh my god. Crumb <laughs> squeaking. <laughs> I just never heard it. My is in a group. <laughs> <laughs> I think we may have broken Rob. <laughs> I heard you snort. There is no getting from that. There is no recovery. Oh my god. If my poop is in a groove. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. I, no, my brain just went to like how I would argue that in front of a judge. I just, why? I need to go <laughs> argue it. No, but I'm like the, I've heard people say my shit's not together, judge. Like, and now my head just replaced that with it. My, my poop is on the group. <laughs> my poop is ungrouped, Your Honor. My poop is <laughs> oh my god. Is that a tongue in cheek phrase or not a tongue in cheek? Oh phrase? no, stop. <laughs> oh <laughs> that hurt. Okay. Um Brianna Pinkney random, but did you know that the Yodel Pickle is a sound bite from Snow White. I did not. I did, I did not. not. No, no, that 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 is news to me. Yep. Uh, Elaine Johnson is his pledge versus donate checks. No, he just didn't. He just cut them against the account. Didn't have money. Mike Laba. Next time I need a lawyer, the first question I'm asking is how much vacation are you planning on taking? Well, <laughs> I would say like second or third question, but it's a good one. Um, Alan Fortenberry. He was one of or one off of the answer to life. The universe and everything with that violation list. Yeah, close yeah. to it. Elf Liggins, here's to profiting of your near misses and many more. Okay. It. Yeah. Tash Beads, uh, question. Can you guys clip this down to share with those that still believe in limitations? And congrats, Rob. I'm really glad. Gra I'm greatly. You're all here. I'm imagining this and glad. Yeah. I will clip that down. Um, people probably already have, but yeah, that that little discussion about ADHD and not being a limitation is pretty important. And I, my mom compromised with me on listening while doing homework. Her rule was it had to be something without lyrics. Yeah. 15 years later, I, I still can't hear the soundtrack of Lord of the Rings without <laughs> thinking about math. That's so my great mom, had, mom. Good my mom move. My mom's compromise was just so long as you're getting stuff done, listen to whatever you want. And so sometimes when I'm in like a particular thing, I'll listen to something like on repeat for like hours. So um, there's a song out there called Split Level Head. And I may have listened to it for about 48 hours straight without sleeping to get an assignment done. Um so if you're wondering what my brain is like, sometimes it does that. And um, my mom, when I was done, was like, okay, so the paper's done? I'm like, yes. She's like, you are never playing that song again. <laughs> she could hear it. <laughs> it's like when when uh, when kids will not go to sleep or will when they're sick. It's when they're sick. When kids are sick, they have that one thing that you have to put on the, the TV or the sound. And it's only that one fucking thing. When I was sick, apparently it was like a Care Bears movie. Like it was always put on. Or Alvin the Chipmunks. There were two of them. Alvin the Chipmunks when they escaped with the jewels, the diamonds one. I remember that still. <laughs> but kids are weird about that stuff. Like they. Yeah, we had neat. the VHS tape. I would watch Animal I, Olympics. I think I was like 19 though at the time. So I still do that though. And there is still stuff that I just listen i listen on calm to sleep stories quite a lot there's one i still don't know what happens in the story because i get like two minutes in and that's all i've got so it's that's that's a great story shit. though then it's shit, just yeah. out every night i have no idea what happens um love it yeah. apple jam pb i'm here late and i'll drop back in as replay crew another time but i just want to say this trio makes my adhd ring my ADHD brain go, I'm home and gives me incredible hope and for the future of my two ADHD babies. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. And you should have hope. Don't give up that hope. Keep sticking with it. Cindy, when will Lily Blonde be on the docket? The question that we shall someday answer. Uh, We're just way too busy as humans. It's so calendars. It's really a bummer. And then logistics with copyright. So 
We'll figure yeah, that, that one is a tough one to figure out. Now, they, my they idea hunt us for sport. My idea was to basically put it on in the background while we're in a certain location altogether, not record audio, but just get facial expressions of the two of you sitting on a couch together <laughs> watching and said movie. I had a similar thought and just be like, here is the start. We're starting now. And then anyone uh -huh. who wants to watch it can put on their own copy at the same time. And I've, Amazon used to do like a watch party thing where you could watch. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they still do that. And I don't know if Legally Blonde is available on that and if it's available in Canada on that or if they let... Um, for a while, they wouldn't allow uh, Canadians to join in watch parties by Americans. So I don't know if they fixed that ever. That's frustrating. So, Gentlemen, um, I cannot stop yawning. And yep, I, have to, I have to bounce. I have to get to bed. It is past my bedtime. Chat, it is lovely to see you. Rob, happy early birthday. Ian, always a pleasure. Good to see you. I will see both of you. Wait, don't make me all big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> both of you, you know, in like a month and a little bit. Yeah. I'm super excited. <laughs> I'm super excited too. It's going to be really yeah. fun. All right, gentlemen, have a great rest of your night. How long have you guys been streaming? Oh, four hours and 35 minutes. Not the um, worst. You've still got, you've still got a bit to go. You got a long way to go. <laughs> Thank Good, you. Night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> okay. Speed round, Ian. AG. I will happy try not to long. interrupt. <laughs> How do you say interrupting? You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> AG, happy birthday. Rob, y'all inspired me to pursue a career I love. I'm now working my butt off at the top, at my top choice company, learning all the crazy behind the scenes stuff from the court reporters as I transcribe. Stay creative. That is awesome. Love, AG. By the way, AG, your story and what you've done with like taking this field and learning how to be a court reporter and applying that in the field, like you started studying this like after we started our channels. I have loved seeing everything that you've been commenting on. So I, I, it's one of the coolest things I've had the opportunity to see. Thank you for sharing it too along the way. Sharon Le Breton uh, found this channel because EDB is live today. Thank you. And thanks to EDB who just jumped off. Maggie May, congrats, Robin. Thanks to each of you discovered um, I'm NeuroSpicy in my 60s because of you and it's made me better. I will never get tired of all of these comments. Ever. Absolutely. And for the person who discovered this, uh, also check me out on Monday. <laughs> oh, Uncle yeah. Uncle Bailey is the channel. Yep. Uh, LG Peach, Rick was questioning linear thought. He always is when he has the three of us to battle with. Uh, Light Queen, I have resin D&D &D dice for Ian, but I haven't yet decided what to make for Rob and Emily. Here's the thing. Make what you would think of. Keep it for yourself. Put it on a shelf. And every time you look at it, just remember why you made it for you. That's what I want you to do. And Rob also seems to like D&D, &D, believe it or not. Oh, it's so much fun. So much fun. Absolutely love it. Uh, JT, how difficult were your state bars to work with in requesting neurospicy accommodations for the exam? I couldn't. We don't have uh, um, bar exams where I am, so um, that wasn't a thing. Um, uh, I had the option to get accommodations for the LSAT, but I didn't take it. Um, here's yeah. here was my thing and JT the best advice I can give you I put in my own mental accommodations like I knew what the exam was going to do to me I knew the stress of having a lot of people taking things like taking the test around me mm. so I gave myself different experiences when I was practicing to try and figure out what was going to be the best method for me to get through that test. The person that was sitting diagonal to me started crying in the middle of their test, shut their computer and walked out of the exam. Oh, it, it, but it was, it was trying to, and when that happened, what I did was I had a program thing where I thought about it. I got up, went to the bathroom, rinsed my face, tried to pee, came back and sat back down the reset moment, like doing that and sitting back down, the sitting back down and refocusing allowed me to take that distraction, which would have otherwise taken my brain and sent it 9 million ways and refocus it in the moment. So um, I created my own accommodations. 
for the LSAT, there was a guy who walked in wearing a shirt that literally, I shit you not, said, smarter than you. And at the break, he looked like he was going to cry. And I was just like, huh. That was a shirt choice. And it was an asshole shirt choice. So my yeah. sympathy for you is now diminished. Um, but, oh, yeah. So, JT, work on the accommodations, but start planning for them not being there. That's the plan for them not to be there. That's the best, yeah. best thing you can do. Uh, Alan Muller, y'all keep saying things that explain how I adapted over the course of my career. I learned in my 80, in the 80s to keep the solitaire up during phone conversation, uh, conferences. Too old to bother with diagram now. But yeah, I get it. Like the distraction, keeping the distraction going. Yeah, that was a routine practice. Azam, you're one year younger than me. My birthday is April 11th. Happy belated birthday, Azam. Just nine days late. Hope you have a wonderful birthday and, and you are enjoying your 41st year of life. Lindsay, the parcel I sent for mischief, care of you, might also help celebrating with the family. We got that. She opened it. I haven't looked at it yet. Tessie with a T. My favorite thing about NeuroSpicy lawyers is watching them mix words like expert bartenders mix drinks. It's a thing of beauty. Yeah, <laughs> we like we like going back and forth and having some fun. LJ Peach, 18th century reenactor here going half cocked has real meaning. Brown Bess up. We've talked about going off half cocked on Ian's stream when we were talking about the actual firearm. Maria Alucino. Alucino. We don't recommend it. No. Congrats on 200K. Hogue is a hero spreading awareness. My 19 year old suffered a um, uh, hemorrhagic, hemorrhagic stroke. Not even the hospital 19, identified it because wow. of her age. Yeah, because 19, they're not going to see it. It can happen to anyone at any age. Yeah, that's... I'm glad that there was recovery there and that it was identified eventually. Uh, K-Rab, Ian, my son also has a motor dysgraphia. Used a keyboard fourth grade and on. Biggest fight I had with teachers in higher grades. K-Rab, you've yeah, talked they... about this before. Yeah. Um, sadly, there's a lot of teachers who just don't get that this should be a thing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Jonathan Duger, for the migraine person, look into getting your dath, dieth, D-A-I-T-H pierced. It's an acupuncture site. My mom swears by it. She would suffer for like four to five a month, and now she doesn't. Well, something to look into. I'm not giving medical advice on this stream, but... If it works, it works. Red Rogue, this is the best you can do. It's commentary everyone should ignore. Unfortunately, this commentary most mostly directed at kids. Yep. Mm-hmm. It is. John Common, in Air Force basic military training, we did Icy Hot Contest. We rubbed it on directly and then stood at attention. Oh, my God. See who broke bearing first. Well, that's one. That's something. Uh, that's Lady a Drake, choice. R RHPS. Um, Amethyst Jones, JJ stole my first amendment. Social workers have crazy stories as well. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. Emily, I love your idea. LOL, the things I could write. Well, a lot of lawyers could write a whole lot. I guys, Lawyers have some of the best stories you will ever run across. Fair. Correct or not correct? Correct. Um, yeah. yeah. How many times have I been in the middle of some crazy story and Ian's like, I have a story for that. Um, it happens. Just a bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, K-Rab, are you three going to crime, crime con? Yes. And it's going to be uh, the best. It's going to be fun. Patty Hoffman, Ian, um, how can I get a ticket for driving too slow? Uh, Ian, you can get a ticket for driving too slow. I was driving exactly I'm, the speed limit at all God, times. I am teasing him. I am allowed to tease him. He is allowed to tease me. Like, that is that is how this rule works. It was, he, it, yeah, it was like always the speed limit. That was what was I, annoying, Rob. I, I, I will remind you that Ian played a damn thirst trap video <laughs> <laughs> on my stream. I am and allowed to tease him about his driving. 
Yeah. Uh, poison elf. So my friend has shingles in the pelvic. Oh my gosh. In the pelvic area. Would, you, would it be bad to call and sing tainted love? I think you will regret it for the rest of your life if you don't. Yeah, but also just be ready for the punch to the face. Um, Amy Griff, Tennessee drivers are crazy, and I've driven through some places due to moving with the military. Well, I'll keep an eye out. Jillian Smenioto, uh, I DM'd you about on Twitter, not from a class, from externship at VAOAG. <laughs> That's even better. Oh, Jillian, thank you for DMing that to me. Um, Amelia, hey, Rob, Ian, and Emily, I'm a silent fan of all three channels. Thank you for keeping me company during my ADHD work days. P.S. Ian, keep it up. As a fellow Canadian, I love your coverage. That's fair. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. Elise, uh, Charlene Fine Art, when I was young, I overheard a conversation between my mother and a grandmother that my teacher stated that I was low IQ. My sister had Turner syndrome, so MIT studied, uh, MIT studied us. My IQ was 115, and I had dyslexia. <laughs> that part, that part, my, that was what told my psychiatrist that I had ADHD and not depression. Mm. My it's IQ like, you score. You are too damn smart. It was my <laughs> IQ score. And he was yeah. like, no, you're not depressed. You're upset because you can't figure out why. Like you can't figure out why you can't do the things everyone else is doing, but you know, you, you can. Yeah. At least that's an awesome story. Bop it. Crime con debauchery fun. Congrats on the anniversary. Thank you. Bop it. And thank you for being here along the way. Luna do drops. Ian, have you had trouble with filing in or filling the prescription for Vivance? I haven't. Um, I know a lot of people have, um, have had issues um in my case it like literally just went into the pharmacy and the uh i guess the only trouble is they're like this is gonna take us 20 minutes but that's not really big trouble because it's just like okay i'm gonna go shopping um yeah yeah um Lindsay, breaking rob is ian's favorite hobby generally yes <laughs> yeah Peggy Reardon, I was an investigator who knew an attorney who traded activities for representation. He was later murdered, and oh my God, during the investigation, I was interviewed. They wanted to know why I didn't have sex with him, because everyone else did. That's well, a good reason not to have sex with him. That's that's a that's a thing. Okay. I take it back. I think chat has better stories than lawyers does. Lawyers do. And also, like, if you have to ask, why didn't you have sex with somebody? It's like, um, isn't that the default state? Yeah. Like, I, like, I am not I, having sex with anybody right now. And I have not had sex with the vast majority of people on the planet. Yeah, that's appropriate. <laughs> um, Azam, uh, almost five hours. You guys are wild. Nearly 1 a.m. for you, Rob. Yep, it's 1 a.m. now. Uh, Apple Jam PB host a movie night on cast k-a-s-t i will have to look into that because i don't i'll look into that because that's one of the challenges of finding some place that we can do it amy griff it's officially your birthday happy birthday it's not quite a couple more days but i did this one early because i know i have a trial docket towards the end of the month it's crazy bears life congrats rob for 200k and making the last two years of enjoyment happy birthday thank you for being here and thank you for the lovely sentiment Rosie, the rose with a thorn. I just started Concerta, and it's your guys' fault. I wouldn't blame us for that. I'll take the blame. Okay. Fair. Slash credit. <laughs> English Rosie, congrats on 200K. Thank you, English Rosie. Alita Lee. Lee, thank you for 11 months of a wonderful Law Nerds fun. Thank you. Celine, thank you. Happy early birthday and 200K. Thank you, Celine. And thanks for keeping uh, track of the bar violations. Marissa just woke up. We'll be replay crew. Happy birthday. Thank you. And thank you all for being here. So um, we're going to land just shy of five hours. Ian, you have some videos that you have been discussing and putting out. I think one of them was involving the lawyer in the Daybell proceedings. Is that right? It was. Yep. That just went up uh, today. Um, I guess I'm kind of getting a theme of like crappy lawyers because I've got a couple of videos that are 
not made yet. I'm probably not going to get to them this weekend because I've got some writing I've got to do, but um, they'll be coming out when I can. And they're also about lawyers who engaged in some stuff like, um, so yeah, um, one lawyer just had his lawsuit thrown out for basically being completely unintelligible. But amongst the unintelligible things, he was uh, suing a articling student. So a, a junior who was training with him for allegedly um, causing him to think she wanted to sleep with him. And I think it's more of a him thing, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll go over that one because um, chat might have uh, different decisions on that one, but um, I think it's a him thing. I don't think it was a her thing, but um, yeah, we can go over that one. Talk about it. So Lady Drake is saying, please like and subscribe before disembarking Air Lumberlaw Flight 419-24. We hope you enjoyed your in-flight entertainment and look forward <laughs> to seeing you on the next Friday Night Frenzy. Uh, yeah, so that's that's a that's a that's a mod thing. It's a it's a uh, it's a uh, we are mid-flight and we need to land the plane because that's the part that I have the problem with the most. Cat W, thanks for the late chat there. Congrats, Robin. Happy early birthday. Thank you very much. All right, so Ian will be live on Monday, Monday night fun day. Um, please go check that out. Please go check Emily out. I don't have to tell you that more than once. Uh, she was here spending some time. Please go check out Rick Hogue. Um, honestly, what the guy's done has been amazing. If you can go back and rewatch that stream that he did, the series he did on the stroke, uh, please do that, honestly. And when you do, drop a comment. It would mean the world to me and to him and to all of us. Um, thank you guys for being here. Very much appreciate it. Ian, any parting words? Um, no, I think I'm just tired. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for sticking it out with me, buddy. And oh, I was chat, happy to. It's always, uh, always a good time here. It's a lot of fun. And to the chat, and to my friend who has spent too much time outside of the leather shop. What am I going to say? Yeah. Uh, go make something. <laughs> go make something. You'll feel better. Enjoy yeah, your weekend. I got to get back into the leather shop in like the worst way. Get in the shop. Get in the art studio. Go make something. Um, whether it's writing, drawing, spending some time creating a puzzle, building something, just go do something creative. Uh, you will feel better. I promise you. So with that, um, I bid you all adieu, and I will see you on the next episode of Friday Night Frenzy. Have a wonderful weekend, and cheers until the next time. Good night.